The following program is a collection of students talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pig! Stop! Stop! Damn it! Your friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Overreaction Monday, October 23rd, 2023. This sports program starts now! Happened in a glorious way this weekend. Yesterday, the dogs were barking across the NFL Week 7 Sunday slate. Hey. Upsets happening in abundance. Some crazy outcomes that we could have never expected. And the refs have finally showcased how terrible they can be on a full NFL Sunday and also a little bit on college football mm -hmm. Saturday. We'll be talking about everything that has taken place around the football world, and we are so incredibly lucky that you have joined us. Joining me is the Toxic Table at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. I see a little bit of a snake there on your right pectoral there. Is that all right? Yeah, there's a snake. There's a tiger, you know, taking a drink of water, you know, so it's almost as if the snake and the tiger are simpatico in this uh, T-shirt. In, in particular. Well, they love ball for sure. Ty mm -hmm. Schmidt, can't wait to talk about your teams and everything going on around weekend. Iowa Hawkeyes and Green Bay Packers. Have they gotten worse? Oh, no. I'm not going to talk about it. How many days did they have before the uh, Raiders game? Uh, I believe 13. So, and that's what we came out with. Wow. I don't know if that's good news. Learning year, though, transition year. Mm -hmm. We're obviously looking ahead. Is LaFleur the right uh, guy no, no, to no, build no. a Super Bowl no. champion? Jeez. No. No. Whoa! No, he's not. <laughs> Early giveaway. That conversation will happen <laughs> later. One half of the hammer. Don. Cowboys, Tone Diggs is here. Tone, you said the public got beat over the head with a hammer yesterday by the sports books. Absolutely destroyed. I think any, uh, six games, teams were over 70% of tickets, and they all didn't cover. Mm. So. so this is different than how the season has gone, by the way. The season has been a very public winning season thus far. There would be 58%, 60% of the people on one uh -huh. side, and normally that would mean they're going to lose. That has not happened this year. Normally that team has won, and the books have been taking a little bit of a beating. But yesterday, water found its level is what Tone did. Yeah, I think uh, on here, I, through week five, it was the best the public had done. Sorry, seven games over 70% yesterday. They all lost. Okay, so sports books are starting to find their rhythm. The AI is starting to figure it out. I think there's a new number one sports book. I oh, think. yeah. Really? I, I think that. from what I, I don't know, one particular stat, I think there's a lot of different stats in that particular oh. world. There's never been one that said anything other than no. FanDuel was number one, but now I think there is. I think DraftKings is new kings out there. Oh, really? Wow. Wow. I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe there's one stat That's that says that. But look out, there's one on the way mm. that's about to take <laughs> over the entire game and joining us live in the Thunderdome. On this glorious overreaction Monday is a nine-year NFL vet. Somebody that's dressed incredibly fresh. Ladies and gentlemen, Darius J. Butler. D. Butler, let's dive right in. Obviously, the Eagles crowned themselves as king after beating the Dolphins last night. Congrats to them. We'll yeah. dive in there. Yeah, congrats. Big storyline, though, that we need to keep our eyes on in the AFC, more specifically the AFC North. This Baltimore Ravens team is yeah. playing incredible football right Ooh. now. More specifically, Lamar Jackson yep. is playing incredible football right now. They took the brand new Lions into the deep end, beat the hell out of them, and said, you're the same old Lions yeah. to me. What do we know about this Baltimore Ravens team now that says, wait a minute, wait a minute. The Lamar Jackson-led Ravens might be the team in the end that's standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Kansas City Chiefs. And I don't even think we've seen the best of them yet. You know, he is in midseason for Lamar Jackson, new OC, Todd Monk. It was a lot of talk about that coming into the year. But he's top of the league, top three in the league, completion percentage, big plays. Just was in full control yesterday against a good Lions team. Uh, most of us probably expected this to be one of the best 
best games mm-hmm. uh, on that early slate yesterday. And he just dominated from uh, beginning to end. And that defense, that defense is one of the best defenses in the league, has been all year long. Pass catchers getting healthy. Uh, I don't think we've seen the best of this Ravens team yet. Ravens beat the Lions yesterday, 38-6. to six. Jeez. 38-6. Friend of the program, Kyle Van Noy, two sacks, five tackles. Woo. Absolute dog. dog off the couch, and he's back. Lamar Jackson throws to 357 and three touchdowns. Now, the check to Gus Edwards was like an 80-yard yeah. thing, mm-hmm. but it don't matter when he throw for 357. Who cares? They were protecting him against that Detroit Lions defensive line, and he's been hitting his targets. Not only Zay, Odell Beckham Jr. got into the yep. action yep. yesterday a little bit. Patrick Ricard had a big-time reception. Mm-hmm. And Lamar Jackson's always going to be able to do this, even though old Cus Staley takes Bud into the front row. You let Lamar run. You let Lamar throw. You let Lamar dance around for 10 seconds for a play. <laughs> There's a good chance something <laughs> great is coming from it. Yeah. another touchdown. Lamar Jackson was at his peak yesterday. And during the conversations of negotiations, he wanted to showcase that he's also a pocket passer. Their previous OC was running the same plays, and everybody knew exactly what they were going to do. Now it's kind of expanding the playbook a little bit. Mm-hmm. Lamar's getting through his reads. He's a little bit more accurate on those 15 to 25-yard balls. He's able to check it down when he has to to big dogs like Mark Andrews, who's always open, it feels like, for him. This offense in this Lamar Jackson is a horse that's ready to ride for a long time. Gus Edwards would pull this one away and take off for a nice 80-yard scamper for a massive gain. Is, is that a D lineman yeah, running? Kaminsky, yeah, Kaminsky. Kaminsky. Hey, Kaminsky, way to go there. Oh, honestly, way to chase that, that thing Frank down. Brother? But everything that Lamar Jackson did yesterday seemed to be perfect. And is this what you guys are expecting in the AFC North for the rest of the way? Because, Tone Diggs, I got some bad news for you. Even though you go beat the Rams yeah. and the Steelers are currently 4-2, yeah, right. after a bye, they're obviously flawless. And Matt Canada was celebrating touchdowns. Oh, yeah. And uh, Kenny, Pickens, uh, uh, Kenny Pickett went for 200 and some yards. Yeah. Pickett went, or Pickens went for over 100. 300 total yards in the offense. Najee Harris wow. had two. And Ooh. Warren yeah. had one. I mean, it was an offensive juggernaut that can. A quarterback didn't throw for one. Wide receivers didn't score a touchdown, but still scored a bunch of points. you got to be worried about this Baltimore Ravens team playing their best football right now. Yeah, they are the team in the AFC North. If When you beat the Lions by five, five, man, five it's touchdowns, five, man. man. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what it was. That's pretty impressive. Um, yeah, because they they don't – like the Steelers, they wait to the fourth quarter. Kenny's awesome in the fourth quarter. They beat the Ravens, but, I mean, that was – there was like eight drop balls for Lamar in that. He probably could have passed for 350 in that one. The Ravens are the worry in the AFC North right now. I can promise you that. Okay, so let's talk about Lamar. Not only is his past game great yesterday, you get back a couple weeks now. Yeah. He's starting to really start to sling it. This is the evolution of Lamar. And Lamar's probably saying, this has been here the whole time. We mm-hmm. just haven't used it. Yep. This offense is seemingly setting him up to ball out perfectly. And they're saying I'm in the run game. Like, I feel like sometimes with the runs in the previous regime, that's when Lamar was saying they know what we're doing. These runs are, you know, different. But in that fourth and one little QB keeper over there. Yeah. That was perfect. And then you even talk about if some people think the Lions defense is a little banged up. They put 28 on the Cleveland Browns, too, in Cleveland. So this really yeah. might be one of the better Baltimore teams we've seen. I know a team to put up 38 against Browns. We'll talk about that <laughs> in a little yeah. bit. But the brand new Lions have their worst outing in mm-hmm. multiple years, it feels like. Yep. We have a Lions fan yeah. in the office. He's also a Michigan State fan. So right. oh, boy. on right. Saturday, Michigan State puts Adolf Hitler up on the Jumbotron. I remember that. Okay. I don't – yes, I did not – that is not a stutter right there. Michigan State, the team that is known for everything that you are thinking of that's <laughs> terrible right now, had this on their actual Jumbotron this weekend pregame. Now, they put out a, a statement, Michigan State did, said – yeah, it's third party team that's oh, okay. running a little trivia before. Oh. Yeah, the game. YouTube video. Yeah, we're gonna smack them on on the wrists and, and let them know that they can't do that or whatever. Nonetheless, Adolf Hitler on Michigan State's stadium on Saturday after they just get and then they would go on to just get murdered by the University of Michigan, mm-hmm. which might be and is odds on the favorite to go win the uh, college football national championship right now. But, Foxy, for you, Adolf Hitler on Saturday yeah. on your school's uh, Jumbotron. Yep. And then on Sunday, you guys look like the same old oh, line. I'm not worried, though. You can run into a buzzsaw that is a perfect game for Lamar Jackson yes. and move on. What was the messaging from your side from the Lions fans? Aside from the Adolf Hitler stuff on Michigan State's Jumbotron just on Saturday in 2023, we've all agreed, right? right. We've yeah. all, yeah. the mustache, can't nobody can do it. do it. Can't name a kid Adolf. Oh, no. You know, like this has been decided for a long time. Also, don't need to glorify, no. you know. <laughs> so, Foxy, let's just keep off. The Adolf Hitler was on Michigan State's Jumbotron this on Saturday. Right. Right. 
Excited to see how they No, he Hitler did not go to Michigan State University. Well, I mean, okay. We're not, oh, I think the remote, ca- White, remote that campus. No, he saying. did not. We're, we're going to have to okay. do more research, yeah. honestly. No. I, I'm yeah, on her How are they going to blame you for that one? Well, I'm sure. Yeah. Cancel me for you guys putting Adolf <laughs> Hitler on. Nonetheless, anyways. Probably for his. Uh, yeah, hey, I have no words for Michigan State University. We are an absolute dumpster fire. Now, when it comes to the Lions, okay. I do believe that this was more about the Ravens than it was the Detroit Lions. It felt like, as a fan, the Lions were kind of do for a clunker here, and let's keep in mind, one year ago from this day, the Lions were 1-6. and six. We're sitting at 5-2 and two now. Goff's playing well. MCDC's the guy, so we're in a good space. I'm not worried one bit about the brand-new Lions. Okay, well, I'm worried about MSU. Yeah, yeah okay. big Well, time. I'm, I'm definitely worried about them. What is – what is that? How? Never mind. Let's move along. That's How's bad. That That's what it is. That's bad. How? Like and, how? and listen, alumni, I understand that it's not you guys mm-hmm. making these decisions. Right. Somebody is. Somebody. 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 Is. Is. A I, third party. Point. I love and the these decisions just keep stacking. Well, that's what I'm saying. A lot of this going. It mm-hmm. was uh, third. <laughs> uh, what was the name of the? They did a. Uh, Relationship we, uh, with the did you press play on it? No, somebody actually came oh, in oh. and pressed play. Did you preview what was going on there? Oh, uh, we were we, we were told. Did. It was, they told someone else that third party. Okay, so we use the third party to look over what the third party made, and the nice. third party has no bias. So they told me that it was good what this third party was saying. So it wasn't us, really. It was, anyways. The Lions, though, let's bounce back. <laughs> They'll bounce. Back. Hopefully, bounce Monday night football against the Raiders. It's a good one to bounce back. Yeah, it is. Let's move on to a big Sunday night football matchup last night, where it was the two kings, pretty Love much, yeah. of the NFL. The NFC kings taking on the AFC kings, and although neither of them were perfect, they were certainly closest to it in the entire NFL in our eyes. The Miami Dolphins traveling to Philadelphia to take on Coach Sirianni, Jalen Hurts, in the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, obviously, what we got a chance to watch was the Philadelphia Eagles do their thing, and in the fourth quarter, when they needed it in their own end, up a touchdown fourth and one what do they do they say we live by the shove mm-hmm. we die by the shove yeah. and they ram it right down at dolphins throats to win mm-hmm. that game and get another touchdown and do their thing they out the dolphins in the end whenever they needed it but with that being said great football game I yeah. both these teams i don't think either fan base is necessarily upset dolphins fans at gumpy at bubba gumpino i'll ask you because you're a part of the fin fam uh-oh uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> We're starting here with Gumpy, who's an actual member yes, of actual, the actual Dolphin member. community. Yep. The, the, wow. yeah. the oh, Finn fam back there, yeah, Gumpy. Somebody that might have been kicked up. So you guys had a chance to tie that up. Yep. Tua throws the pick to Darius Slay. Then Philadelphia goes on to do what Philadelphia does. It ends up being a two-score win over your team. You saw a good team last night, though. You feel good about the temperature check that was almost for the Miami Dolphins last night? Yeah, had a chance to tie it late. Had some guys banged up. So did Philly. But I think as we get healthier, I think we'll be better. And I think I think that's a loss. Tua said it. Mike McDaniel said it. They can learn a lot from that loss. Like, the run game wasn't going at the start. Started again in the third. Like, Philly's a very, very good football team. Well, especially when the refs are on their side. Yeah. Whoa. I'm not I'm, I'm, Philly beat us. I'm not blaming the refs, but yeah. I don't know how a team wow. goes a full game without one penalty. I do not. Well, especially with the amount of speed that the Miami Dolphins yeah. have, you would assume that somebody at some point's hand would just, just accidentally one. get trapped into a jersey, and it's like, oh, that's a holding. They didn't yep. call a single penalty against the Philadelphia Eagles last night. Obviously, that's a big storyline, especially with the screenshots that are kind of going around the internet where there's like a face mask, two holds, three holds. Yeah. Remember, every play can have a situation like this that gets broken down and says that's holding or that's a face mask but to go through an entire game and not get penalized one time is certainly fascinating especially when you're throwing it on the other team you know it makes you have to wonder about what was going on up there let's talk about the philadelphia eagles though jalen hurts bounces back Mm -hmm. has bad game bounces back does his thing aj brown all the way back to what aj brown was unbelievable last year Devontae smith now i know last week he had a couple drops and early in that game he had a couple drops but then he gets back into it he's going to be an incredible swift yeah. is an added weapon. That defense. Goddard. Goddard that ri- Goddard. That, yeah, Goddard on National Tight End Day had a big one. That defense, though, with the Rhino that is Jalen Carter, and congrats on National Tight End Day getting in. Woo! First touchdown of the night, second quarter, went to a tight end. That's a beautiful thing out of Goddard. But that defense is built for championship Ooh. form. D-Butt, when you watch the Philadelphia Eagles, your team, Beat against, yes. beat up the Miami Dolphins in a physical fashion. My team. Your other team. Nah, you got well, Gumpy. That's my, that's my team. 
power rankings, they're up there. You can't, nah, if, nah, if, nah, if, nah, you you can't do it, d but You retweeted a bunch of Eagles stuff after the game. You I can't retweeted do it. Dolphin stuff, too. Nah, 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 You can't do it. Fins are supposed to be number one, d but Come they on. Are. The Dolphins community... I, I guess they had a survivor thing. They voted you out of the tribe. <laughs> yeah, so quick. That's what I heard last night. Gumpy I told me. I woke up this morning to a text from Gumpy. He says, oh, no. <laughs> D-Butt's been voted out of the Dolphins community. And I said, damn, I must have missed it. And I went on the internet. They did. They uh -huh. said, get this guy out of yeah, here. Yep. Yeah. Because you were talking about the Eagles, which is another one of your six teams that you pull for around the entire NFL. And your teams are starting to get bad. Yeah, you know, very a couple bad. of them are starting yeah. to get bad. So I assume you'll pick up others. But that Philadelphia Eagles team, yeah. built to win a championship, it does feel like they're all the way back. At the beginning of the season, they were just kind of getting by. You know, and uh, Nick Sirianni actually in the tunnel after the game was screaming, keep doubting us. You know, Sirianni was mm -hmm. doing, keep doubting us. Mm -hmm. And he has some press conference clips that we're going to run here in a second. He's obviously still very entertaining. But they were a team that was being doubted because they weren't the team that we saw at the end of the year last year. It was kind of a much different style. Yep. Last night looked like the team that they were last year. Yep. Dominant, explosive. Everybody's buying in on all three phases. Yep. What did you see from them? Do you think this is a turning point for the Philadelphia Kind of similar to the Chiefs. You just kind of get bored with them winning and how they win. Obviously, they have a different style, but physical. Lane Johnson being back is obviously huge for that team. Dallas Goddard, like you said, stepping up in his production. But they're just a physical bunch. It hurts. We can tell. You you tweeted last night when he scrambled. Everyone in the stadium could tell he was hurt. That left leg was yeah. lame. It was yeah. a limp. Yeah, Weird. he was you know, one of the most dynamic runners at the quarterback position in the league. You can see he was hurt, but still just gutting it out. That's just who this team is defensively. They're stout on all three levels. We'll have to figure some things out um, in that secondary as some other guys get healthy. But they're absolutely uh, dogs. What's that? Did you hear him say it? We? Did you hear we. the we, Gumpy? Yeah. We'll have to figure some things out in the secondary, which I think is just adding more <laughs> onto yeah. the – Hey, those jerseys, though. Those jerseys last night. Phenomenal. Sick. Yeah. Kelly Green jerseys. But, um, yeah, they're the dogs, man. They'll be right in it at the end. Um, and so will the Dolphins. I think the Dolphins will bounce back. Like uh, Gump really? said, you can't blame it on the refs. Uh, it was a poorly ref game, in my opinion. But at the end of the day, the Dolphins will go back to the tape and say, hey, we could have done these things better. And they were down some guys. Xavier Howard didn't uh, make mm -hmm. the trip, didn't play. Obviously, Ramsey's not out there. Um, so we, we got uh, some things to clean up as well. I got some interesting stats from Hembo about the Philadelphia Eagles. And... You know, they, the New Heights podcast fans are called 92 percenters. That's right. Because that was the success rate of the Tush Push Brotherly Shove yeah. uh, last year. Now it is 93%. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, so they are now Bump it. 93. Yeah, they are 41 of 44 on the push sneak in the last two seasons. No other team has more than 11, obviously. They are at 93%. For context, Steph Curry is a 91% career free throw shooter, oh. says <laughs> yeah. Hembo. Incredible stat there. And then you remember this play was supposed to get banned this mm -hmm. past offseason because yep. it's easy, it's rugby, it's this, it's that. Listen to Coach Sirianni chit-chat about the tush push and the brotherly shove in which they are 41 of 44 on in the last two seasons, wow. and no other team has more than 11. It's first and nine every down. You know, every first down is first and nine. Um, knowing that if you get the fourth, the fourth and one, um, shoot, a lot of faith in that play. Um, just be, you know, yeah. So um, it, it was awesome. Again, just Jason Kelsey starts it off. Jalen Hurts, uh, you know, is right there. You know, haven't been able to drive because you've seen it. Right, you've seen it across the league that people can't do it like we can do it. Okay. They can't do it like we can do it, and uh, and so I'm making my plug right there. Like, <laughs> don't don't ban this play. Like, if everyone could do it. Everybody would. Where's the camera? If everybody, could do it, everybody would do it. I love that he's sticking up for his team, but it is a real talent. Oh, yeah. It's like yeah. a skill that they have. Dude. And every time I watch it, I just think of Jason Kelsey's old ass. Okay, laying down there at the bottom of the pile. I know. Slowly getting up from like watching his documentary. Now it's like his entire body hurts, and it's like, hey, bub. You need to get underneath this 900 pounds. <laughs> yeah. And then when everybody else is on top of you, just lay there and take it. Everybody's happy. We scored a touchdown. You'll be happy in a minute. Try to gather your breath, hold your breath, mm -hmm. and then just take it. He's down there at the bottom with his head side. Yeah, right there. That's, him at the, that's <laughs> New Heights host Jason Kelsey <laughs> down there at the bottom of that thing with everybody just diving at his knees whenever it starts and we're diving directly at the back of his skull as he's trying to get in there. It's a tough play. It showcases, though, what this Eagles team is, which is, hey, we are physical. And in the First fourth man. quarter, on their own 25, fourth and one, you're up a touchdown mm -hmm. against Miami Dolphins that could score at any moment. Mm -hmm. Five minutes left or something like that. Are you going to do it or not? It's like Sirianni. I could hear him going, you know what we're doing. What are we even talking about? Come on. Send it out. 
push, mm -hmm. shove, whatever you want to call it. We're doing it right now. And they pick up four. And there was one last night they picked up like seven oh, yards yeah. Yeah. on it. And there's one where it looked like they were stopped. And then all of a sudden, we are gone yeah. with it. It's an incredible feat. I love watching them do it. Old school football. And I appreciate the fact that they recognize that it's an advantage. It's first and nine every mm -hmm. time we get That's the great. ball. That's a real thought. You get a three-foot advantage over everybody else whenever you have those dogs doing that thing. And it's no, and usually, you know, you have something on tape, you know, for what's just going on for damn near two years now. Some some defensive mind, somebody figures something out to stop it, but it's just, it's the personnel. Like yeah. you mentioned yeah. Kelsey, and then they bump in Lane Johnson, you know, from his usual right tackle spot and kind of put him at their left guard. And he gets behind and push. A.J. Brown, big ass, is behind Hurts as well, who squats 600. So it's the personnel. We saw Steelers sneak away with one. Uh, oh, it's the Rams. Man. Which, we'll dive you know, into that. Yeah. We'll, we'll dive into uh, that. It's tough. You can't, okay. you can't copy it. And let's not even – I don't want to, like, just kind of dismiss the defense, you know, because Darius Slade gets that big-time pick in the fourth Sweet as well mm -hmm. to kind of set that entire thing up. He's a great player. Had a tough matchup with Tyreek through it all. But, I mean, you're up one tud. They're in the red zone. Ooh. Boom, give me that. Let me get out of here and let me go eat a little bit. Like, their defense has been dominant. We yeah. talk about the Rhino, Jalen Carter, and Cox and everybody in the middle there. Here's some interesting stats from Hembo that really showcase this Philadelphia Eagles defense and what it was able to do to the greatest show on turf, 2.0. That is what the Miami Dolphins offense is being called. Miami averaged third and eleven last night. Philly's the only team to stop them on early downs this season. So Philly got them off schedule, got a third and 11 average. That's going to be tough for any team, even if you have Tyreek Hill as a wide receiver. Run the ball early on them. Dolphins didn't have a single 30-yard play in the game. Whoa. That's not normal. Why? That is not. Dolphins, if you just close your eyes and think of this year's Dolphins team, all you see is the ball flying really far and then somebody running faster than everybody and then there's a full dance in the end zone. Mm -hmm. Like last night was the... Yep, the fish. The fish. Fish, yeah. the fish celebration. No 30-yard play in the game. Miami had 11-plus possessions in every game this season. Only had eight last night. That's tough. Okay, only yeah. any, which goes to the point of like the best defense might be just keeping them off the field. Yeah. Right? Yep. And they were able to do that Philadelphia because of how dominant the run game is. Dolphins had 53 yards after catch yesterday. They've had 120 in every other game plus. Damn. Okay, so this Philadelphia Eagles defense, too, deserves, like, massive praise for what they were able to do for all these Ferraris and Bugattis that are flying around in McDaniel's offense. Well, and Tyreek Hill still, you know, 11 catches, 88 yards in the touchdown, sure, but it feels like they kind of admitted the fact that Tyreek Hill is going to do his thing, but if we just kind of can shut down the rest of their offense, because like D-Bud said, Mostert had 50 yards. That's got to yeah. be his season low. And Waddle, he got hurt during the game and came back, but he probably was low on yards and catches. That's a win. Eight, Eight yards. Catches catches. Yeah. For 88 yards, yeah. that's, if we if you tell me that's what we're doing to Tyree Hill right. before the game, a touchdown, okay, whatever. Like, that's a win. He had that drop, too, which would have been yeah, for a lot more. Uh, Dolphins run game, weeks one through six, they averaged 28 for 181. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty Real good game. run game. Last night, 12 for 45. Yeah. So this Philadelphia Eagles defense. That D-line is. Hey, yeah. championship Unrobable. quality right now because that's the best offense we're talking like historic, yeah. You know how great this offense is, and they have a bad game. Now I know the Beals did their thing, but like they have a bad game like that. Prime time Sunday Night Football, two kings. It's like maybe they didn't have a bad game. Maybe that Eagles defense we're, you know, is who we thought they were. Yeah. We're the Dolphins. Still uh, look, are uh, still uh, looking don't for that, that don't signature. Do that. We don't have, don't have that signature that. win yet this this season. You know we've obviously beat up on some. You know, some subpar teams, but, you know, obviously the Eagles, the Bills, and who knows where the Bills are right now, but you go up against these teams with better defenses, wow. better players, better schemes. A front wreck can get you behind the sticks early. You got to show that we can do We still have to show that we can do it, and I think they will. And with the Bills being said, congrats on the big win, New England. Yeah. Patriots yeah. beat longtime yeah. rival, Bill Buffalo Brad. Bills. Mm -hmm. Don't love it because we love Jordan Poyer and Vaughn Miller and mm -hmm. McDermott, Josh Allen, That's Dawson Knox, Gabe Dalton Davis. Kincaid got in there. Yeah. Gabe Davis is a guy. Love Micah Hyde. Love that team somehow they lose to the Patriots. You know why? Why is that? It's Hall of Fame weekend. There it is. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. You know the greats were back. Yep. Vrabes goes into the New England Patriots Hall of Fame. Yeah. Did we have any idea that was happening? <laughs> nope. Well, if he would answer his phone, we'll yeah. yeah. Is that why he thought I was calling, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Not probably. because the fair catch on a kickoff. The Colts did it this week. Yeah. yeah, they did. We don't do that. Okay, can't happen. Damn shame. I actually started yelling, hey, uh-uh, <laughs> from the suite as they were, as his hand was going in the air like this to fair catch uh -huh. a kickoff <laughs> at the two. Hey, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> and I saw it. Then I puked. Mm -hmm. And I came back and said, all right, Gardner, let's do this thing. You know, I got after. But when Vrabel did it is what we wanted to uh, call him to, tell him like, hey, you're from Ohio, okay? 
You're Mike Vrabel. Correct. Can't be doing Your that. team is tough. We can't be fair catching kickoffs. That looks like it's Mickey Mouse. Come on. What he might have thought we were calling about was maybe to ask him, like, hey, anything special going on this weekend? Yeah. He went into the Hall of Fame for the Patriots. Congrats to him. Yeah, congrats, Paul. Hell yeah, Vrabel's well earned, by the way. Well yeah. deserved. Absolutely. I think every human respects and appreciates him. And then also Skarnakia yeah. goes oh. in. So two greats okay. in the history of the New England Patriots going to the Patriots Hall of Fame. Huge. That's like a homecoming weekend. There's no way the Patriots are going to lose. And I know. You're thinking the same thing I'm thinking. Yeah, I think so. With the way Mac Jones, huh? Yeah. Oh, huh? yeah. Mac Jones is Watch all the way out. back with Gasicki. Mm-hmm. Huh? They're grittying all over the place on a homecoming Hall of Fame weekend. <laughs> There's a lot of games. How we doing? Gritty, gritty. There's a lot of games. Rattle off nine, nine in a row. Who says no? Find yourself in the playoffs. It's going to happen. With the way Steve Belichick runs that defense, with yeah. how Mac Jones showcased why? himself yesterday. Yeah. Huh? Why not the Patriots go? Let's go. Uh, let's go. go Patriots right. make the playoffs. Ain't that right? That's how you're feeling. No, that's not how I'm feeling. Uh, What's your problem? Uh, this dude was miserable in the suite yesterday mm-hmm. watching the Patriots play well. <laughs> miserable about it. Yeah. I don't love that about you. They can, we still got hope for the Come Patriots on, yeah. this year. Yeah. I mean, look, we some of us do. Uh, I think the people who are kind of looking forward to you know what the next 10 years looks like for the Patriots, I, I don't think they were too happy. Now, I find solace in the fact that Bill Belichick gets his 300th win. Pumped to be Congrats, alive. Bill. Congrats, Bill. Unbelievable. Bill. He didn't want you to win. Very happy about that. Yeah, he happening. wanted you to be a 299 yeah. forever. Yeah. This no, guy right here. No, no, because Mr. 299, they make a movie about it. Two and mm-hmm. 15. A Bernie Mac. Yeah. 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 That was a great movie. Thank you. Yeah, it was. Glad Stan you. Ross. Hell yeah. Mr. 3000? Yeah. Well, yeah. Had to get out yep. there. Uh huh. You know, he had to put his ego aside. Though, he did. Which he did. Yeah. Yes. That was incredible, man. Made that a bunt. Exactly. Shout out, Bernie. Shout out, Bernie. And RIP, Bernie. Yeah. Go. Yes. Great. Yeah. There was a. We don't need to dive into why Bernie Mac's awesome. <laughs> to your point. But anyways, you want him to be Mr. 299 yeah. forever. Well, to, to your point, uh, taking a page out of the Bernie Mac book, you know, ego aside, look, I, I don't want to come in here and talk about how the Pats sink every week. I don't want that. But I also want a, a team that can maybe go and win a Super Bowl. And now, yes, they can rattle off 10 straight. They can finish. Twelve and five. That, wow, that that'd be play. great. That, that would be, in the AFC. Yeah, that that would be something. That really would be something. Now, we killed the Bills. I mean, we know now for a fact the Bills aren't yep. doing shit for the rest of the year. <laughs> they lost to the Patriots in New England. That's that team stinks. I, I, that's the story here. The story isn't Patriots winning. The story is the Bills, who once again come into the season as a top five favorite to win the Super Bowl, Two. top five quarterback to win MVP, and they're four and three. So I, I get we can talk about the Patriots. We need to talk about why the Bills are terrible and that their windows closed because that Patriots team isn't good. We he, we all know that. Okay, he just batted a pen off the yeah, desk. Yeah, I'm oh, I keep yeah. Yeah. Here, yeah. He's going crazy. I'm jacked there. up about it. It's sweet. We we just ruined an entire city that prides themselves on being a football town. We once again showed the world why they are not a legitimate threat to the Chiefs and those teams. The Bills want to be the Eagles. That's what the Bills want to be. The Bills want to be the Eagles, who everyone doesn't talk about, and now they. Don't don't win, but then the Eagles actually go out and win and beat the teams they're supposed to. The Bills don't. They, they they haven't. It feels like they never really have, and it feels like that's a massive reason why we haven't seen them in an AFC title game in four years. Long season left for the Bills. Absolutely. Yeah. Just yeah. like it's a long yeah, season left long. for the Patriots. True. You know what I mean? You guys will all figure it out over there. Oh, yeah. But in the AFC, I got a problem. Uh, not only because the Colts look like they're just not going to have the football gods. Uh, the Chiefs is the Chiefs again. Yeah. Okay. It did look and like And it did that. take a division rival to come in and maybe wake him up. If you recall, there was a time where Patrick Mahomes was golfing in Lake Tahoe, and somebody said, Justin Herbert's coming to take your spot or something. And he said, you're going to have to show me for me to believe that. Mm-hmm. And he just walked off. Yep. Talking shit with this person. Yeah. That's all. Just just talking shit. I think he probably had a few Coors Lights. Why? And was having a good time out there. And it was just a friendly divisional uh, banter. And everybody obviously took what he said and like, oh, he's dry. Yeah, he's don't talking. respect her. Yeah, this guy, he's like going all in. That's how people do it. But I do appreciate the fact that in that moment, Mahomes is like, feels like that's said all the time. Like the Chargers are going to be the Chargers. The Chargers are going to be the Chargers. I do feel like they get up for those divisional games. I do feel like the Chargers normally play them really well. But whenever Travis Kelsey has like, what, 190 some yards or something like that, just goes absolutely bonkers and is always open. And Patrick Mahomes is making every single throw to everybody. And MVS is skirting. And then McCole Hardman, fresh off a trade, is back there returning punts for them and Mm -hmm. getting nasty. And their defense is hunting Herbert, making him look bad. It's like, 
oh yeah, this is the Chiefs team that we all get used to betting on at the end of the season. We always expect it for the first four or five weeks. For whatever reason, they rarely look like that. But then when Patrick Mahomes and his wife are hanging out with Travis and Taylor Swift, mm -hmm. and they're getting a full motivational speech about how you got to show up every single time. They got into a rhythm. They got hot. They got rolling, and there were secret handshakes. Oh yeah, huh? Cool. Huh? Oh, yeah. That was Love sick. It. The Chiefs is the Chiefs again, and the Chargers is the Chargers. Uh -huh. And I don't want to kind of be the bearer of bad news, but it's like they're going to have to potentially. And I know we're only seven weeks into this thing, so there's a lot of season left. They could turn around. They got talent all over the yard over there. But they just got absolutely smacked in the mouth by a division rival. And you're going to have to get past them at some point if you're going to want to go to where you're going to want to go. I don't know if the Chargers are ever going to be able to do that. I just had a quick stat for that. Chargers are giving up 310 passing yards uh, a game, which is worse than the NFL. Next closest is Jacksonville giving up 273 and then Denver 257. So Damn. they're giving up 50, 60 more yards in the, the second and third worst passing defense. And I think Staley was is he defensive coordinator. Well, he's yeah. quarterback, remember who is a defense coordinator. Oh, so right. he sees the defense through the eyes of a quarterback. That's yep. right. And he's also very good at relationships, and he likes an explosive style of play. Yep. So he's the perfect guy for a new team in Los Angeles. I will say, I assume Staley's a great guy to hang out with. Great. I assume he's a blast. I assume he's got football stores. His dad, a football coach. Mm -hmm. I think his mom also a coach or something, if I do mm -hmm. recall. Linda. So he is a coach. Like, that is who he is. But for whatever reason, this team has just been a disappointment. Oh. And on the flip side, the Chiefs are all the way back. And if we find out, yep. and we're not going to run through all the stats. Everybody else is doing that, okay? If we find out that Swifties are watching... Yeah. Let's remember, Travis is going to go ape shit. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay? He's going to break records. Tries a little harder. This is what Andy Reid had to say immediately after the game about Travis Kelsey being like a fine wine out there. Kelsey keeps getting better with time. Um, um, Taylor can stay around all she wants. <laughs> um, Andy Reid gives the approval, it appears there. Uh, but it is fascinating to me that they're in real love. Absolutely. Everybody needs to understand this. Yeah. And I don't know if you saw Taylor Swift with the camera with Brittany Mahomes and the baby. Mm -hmm. She was like, let's get the baby. Are we talking? Huh? Feels huh? Like huh? Are we talking? I'm happy they're in love. I'm happy they're balling. He goes from Saturday Night Live, walking out of a mansion, getting every single step that he has kind of documented to going on the field having his best game. Mm -hmm. Travis is built for this moment. Yeah. The Chiefs are built for this entire situation. What a perfect thing for the NFL for this to continue to happen. And also, we need to bet on the Chiefs as if they are the Chiefs again because I think they are. Absolutely. I mean, it was perfect for the NFL too off the field. Obviously, you had Taylor here. You had, uh, I think, Marianne made the trip as well. He did. Uh, so, let's not, there's no reason for you to but do what you just did. Wow. I know what you did. No, I mean, I mean, but look, Ty told us from the beginning with Taylor and Travis, look, they're in love. And he was pretty convinced, and he convinced me. Marianne, we knew we knew it was a work from the beginning. Whoa! No, we didn't. She signed you a deal. Said, no, so we good for didn't. her. But on the field. She signed a deal with Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, well. she's one of the biggest faces in all of sport. She signs a deal with Buffalo Wild Wings. Buffalo Wild Wings guy, I think, next to her, getting in front of every shot. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. So I don't know if that's good marketing or Idiot. what you're expecting to do there. But her signing a deal with B-dubs, putting it right there on her hat, doing her thing. I mean, I know there was a little bit of a star battle here. Taylor Swift's here. Marianne Doe's here. She's running. She's doing her thing. She is all the way in. She's putting a hex out on the team. People are going to say it was a work, and that's what Darius just did. Did not expect that. Wow. I mean, come on. Out of Darius? Yeah. Was. Because we talked to Marianne Doe. Yeah, we, we did. did. Do you remember Tom, how nice she was? Charmed She us. was. She did. And now you're like, plant, fake, work, conspiracy, but, nailed it. That's what you just said about yeah. Marianne Doe. Yeah, but I'm I'm glad she brought brought her family. They had a good time. But uh, on the field, What's your problem? Uh, the Chiefs, <laughs> the Chiefs, man, like they started off slow. Everybody was talking about you know the Eric being and me and the offense and it looks different. And you guys mentioned you know they had similar yardage and things like that. But now Travis Kelsey going for 180, Mahomes going through reads. Other guys, I think Rice is just going to continue to oh. get better and be more of a factor. Move. Uh, it, it, it's just a world of a machine at this point. Andy Reid, Mahomes, Kelsey, don't bet against them. And then when they have a defense like they've had. All all season long that can adjust. You saw it was a 17-17 game there uh, second quarter, but as it got uh, down the stretch, you knew Spags and that defense was going to adjust and uh, eliminate it. CBS brought us uh, some stats last night about Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes' winning percentage is over 80%. Wow. Okay? What? It is so hard to win in the NFL. I, I think whenever we – like, for instance, Bill Belichick, 
That's the greatest dynasty in the history of the NFL. They were at 77%. That's absurd, okay? For 20 years to win 77% of the time is just bananas. Bart Starr in Lombo there at the Packers back in the day. Congrats another 77% Green Bay. That's what we're trying to get back to. Yeah. That's what we're trying to get back. Matt LaFleur, look at that. You can even see it. LaFleur, Jordan Love. It'll yeah. be on there next, right? Yeah. That's never going to happen. Yeah, that, that has a shot. But whenever you're talking about Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, mm -hmm. An 80% win rate, like, Yikes. congrats to the Chiefs fans, dude. You deserve this. We were there playing against you guys yep. when the only reason why the fans were there is because they were waiting to boo the shit out of the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, quarterback threw pick six. I don't know to who, maybe yep. Darius. They go crazy, and the place was like, yes, this is what we're here for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like go. almost mocking what the Chiefs were and what they had become. And every time we played the Chiefs, we were told stories of how great they used to be. And wait till you get into Arrowhead. This fan base has been great for a long time. Yeah. And we know they're trash right now, but these fans are going to show up at the Home of the Chiefs. And now they're winning 80% of the time. Congrats to them. That bank robber's never going to get to see it. No, he's nope. not. 100% chance he's doing at least 10 years, 80% chance of winning. I yeah. think he would say those bank robberies were worth it, but nonetheless joining us there. He'll be out. He'll make his way out for sure. You think he's going to do that oh, yeah. wall walk like that Philadelphia murderer guy did? Yep. That's what he should do. A he's a wolf. guys making escapes. I don't know what's going on. Maybe the tech people got too many phones or something. I don't know, but he, he, he'll be out. I was in a holding cell for 13 hours, and I was trying to figure out how to do Frayne out of there. I couldn't even imagine if they had me 10 <laughs> years and I'm known to be a wolf bank robbing person. A yeah. werewolf. He could just jump out. Yeah, wait for a full moon. Yeah. I don't think he got his costume in. No. I think he's just merely a man. I think you're probably oh. right. Joining us now might have more information on that. Ladies and gentlemen, senior insider for the NFL for ESPN, friend of the program, Adam Schefter. Hey, hey. Oh, we're already suited and booted. Big oh. game tonight, huh? <laughs> Hey, big game, Monday night, 49ers, Vikings. We ain't messing around here, Pat. Well, you look fantastic. We hope the hotel room is phenomenal. Uh, do you know if that bank robbing wolf for the Chiefs is going to get out early so he can enjoy this 80% win rate between Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes for the next 10 years, Shefty? He's missing out on a lot of fun between Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, Taylor Swift, Brittany Mahomes. There's all kinds of celebrating, producing. I mean, this is outstanding by them. And I hope he gets out for his sake, Pat, because yeah, he's missing out on a lot of fun. And at this stage of the game, I think we can all understand why maybe a psycho fan would go Rob Banks, go watch them. They're electrifying. And like Andy Reid said, Travis Kelsey is seemingly only getting better and will continue to do that, which is good news for Patrick Mahomes with all their weapons. Let's bounce through a couple other teams with some injuries. Deshaun Watson, we were watching as the Cleveland Browns and the Indianapolis Colts had the greatest game in four years, stats are saying. There was eight lead changes, which is the most in four years. It was electrifying in Lucas Oil Stadium. Deshaun Watson had given us his second interception of the day and at the same time appeared as if his head hit the ground, but then they were looking at his shoulder as well. Then he was standing on the sideline. It was a little chilly in there. Yeah, they had the roof open. It was a little chilly. He was just standing there the whole time while P.J. Walker was playing. What's the update on Deshaun Watson and how have we got to this point where Stefanski's like choosing for the $230 million guaranteed quarterback not to play football? Well, I think what he was doing is he was trying to be protective of him. And he cleared the concussion test during the course of the game. But he obviously banged his shoulder there. And even Deshaun, after the game yesterday, you could hear it in his voice. You know, he sounds like he wants to make sure that it's right. He didn't know that it would be. Stefanski fully supported him after the game. He felt like he was keeping him out of harm's way by not putting him back in the game. And so they went and uh, went with P.J. Walker. He Led them to the victory. Miles Garrett really is the guy that led him to the victory. Miles Garrett put on a uh, performance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, and also oh the refs. God. But yeah. Miles Garrett. Four, uh, he, four point stance, Schefter. Four point stance to a leap over two professional athletes to a blocked field goal. It was one of the most phenomenal physical doings I've ever seen in my life. Just so quick. Well, up and down. Give me that. I'm out of here. Yeah. You, you look at the numbers, right? And uh, I put up something last night where basically he's got right now 82 career sacks at the age of 28. Reggie White. Reggie White had 80. <laughs> so he's doing okay for himself right now, Miles Garrett. Yeah, and there was four or five Miles Garrett chants in Lucas Oil Stadium. Yep. So it's like, you know, uh, they're looking for him to maybe win the MVP of the entire league this year, and it's because the Browns have a good team. If they had a quarterback, what is the story of Deshaun Watson? I know Stefanski said he's the starter, but, like, what's actual projections of how this season's going to go for Deshaun? Because the Browns might have a team. You yeah. know? Like, if they have a quarterback, they, they have, like, a team that could go on a run. 
Well, first of all, Stepanski is talking, I think, as we speak. At least he was scheduled to be talking right about now. So I'm sure there'll be some sort of update from the Browns head coach. But, again, I think it'll be touch and go with Deshaun this week about whether or not he can go. They'll see how that shoulder's feeling. It's going to be all about the shoulder, right? If you remember a couple of weeks ago, everybody's saying, well, he might be out multiple weeks here. He came back, pushed through, through last week, felt okay enough to go out there on Sunday and play, start, didn't last very long. So, again, I think we're going to be right back to where we were, where they want to see how the shoulder is feeling, responding during the week. They want to see whether he can drive the football. They want to make sure he's okay. And if he's okay, he starts next Sunday at Seattle. If he's not, time for P.J. Walker again. I mean, it'll be dependent on how the week goes here. Yeah, congrats to P.J. Walker playing great football, and congrats to that Browns team getting handed a win by the refs in Indianapolis yesterday. Let's uh, let's go down to Atlanta. Go ahead, Ty. Yeah, Shifty, a lot of people have questions about Bijan's usage yesterday for whatever reason. He just kind of yeah. wasn't playing, and then he had some, some comments after uh, the game that I think we had that still kind of leave a lot of questions lingering. Head was hurting. And, you know, I was just trying to like, see how I was going to feel on the field. And, I mean, I was just going down. So, talked to Will Smith, and, you know, he was like, I, I don't want to – we don't want to risk anything. Um, you know, we have Tyler and CP, and, and they did really well today. Those are my, those are my brothers. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was really tough uh, this morning. Uh, but hey, God is good for getting us this win. Though. It was more, it was more. Okay, so that's what he's saying, Ty. Yeah. So Shefty, like, did he get hurt during the game? Was this something leading up uh, to like when kickoff happened, and how was he able to actually speak with reporters post game? Because usually, you know, typically if guys are hurt, I don't think they're required to speak with the media, right? So what what's going on with Bijan? Well, I can tell you, everybody was freaking out about it during the course of the game because I'm getting texts from all sorts of people that have him on their fancy. What's going on with Bijan? You know, he didn't get into the game until there were two minutes left in the first quarter. Arthur Smith told Christina Pink at halftime he wasn't feeling well. That's what he said. And I think when you have somebody like Bijan, he's not getting in there. I'm going to take Arthur Smith at his word that he just wasn't feeling well. Yeah, I was texting with somebody with the Falcons during the course of the game because so many people were flipping out about the whole thing. And I just feel like what it sounds like is he wasn't physically feeling well enough to be out there. And so they have all these other weapons. So they were leaning on Tyler Algier and Corderell Patterson and the other backs that they have just wasn't feeling right. And I would imagine once he's feeling better this week, which I would expect, we will be back to seeing Bijan. But, you know, that's the thing with Arthur Smith. He always has so many guys. If you look back at his offenses, there are always a multitude of players who are scoring touchdowns. He, his guys, there are more players scoring from his team than anybody else. He spreads it around. He doesn't care who you have on your fantasy team. He doesn't care that B. John Robinson's your starting running back. He doesn't care about your prop bet for B. John Robinson going over certain. He cares about making sure that everybody's producing here, no. that the offense is performing to its maximum. Oh, really? And he didn't feel like yesterday that B. John was up to it. Hey, did you tell Field Yates that, yeah, Arthur Smith is trying to win games too, you know, because it's not fantasy <laughs> football. It's real life football yeah. for him, and he could potentially get fired. We know he probably has a good backup plan. Yeah. We yeah. very much understand that, but I think, yeah, the the amount of people just being like, oh, Arthur Smith just doesn't like B. John Robinson. It was, uh, no. that was a wild theory, but for me, the interview afterwards, and I'm not somebody who suffers from migraines, thank God, by the way. Ooh. That that sounds yep. like the absolute worst. But I think he alluded to, like, headaches, and he wasn't feeling good. And then after the game, there's a lot of lights, and he's talking. And in there, he's talking. Do they Did it settle during the game? Is that what happened? Did they find a good treatment? Or? You know, I, I don't know. If, you know, listen, uh, I get migraines. So they have medicines yeah. that they can give you. And I'm sure by that point, if he weren't feeling better, he wouldn't be in a locker room that's well lit with reporters around talking to them, mm. right? So whether he took Nurtec or, or Ubrelvi or whatever it is, oh. right? I know my migraine medicines here, Pat, okay. uh, having been through them. And and I always remember, you know, the first team that I ever covered was Terrell Davis, the Broncos, and Ooh. he used to get migraines. And I remember he was in the Super Bowl, and there's the great sound clip, the sound bite of all time, where he comes to the sideline, he says to Mike Shanahan, you know, I, I can't see. And he goes, don't worry. You don't have to see on this play. Just run into the line of scrimmage. That's all you have to do. And he ran into the line of scrimmage, and LA bootlegged around for a touchdown, and they scored, and they won the Super Bowl. And But I know that migraines can be very debilitating. I've seen happen with players. I've experienced it myself. If he had a migraine yesterday, then Arthur Smith was obviously doing the smart, wise, careful, considerate 
thing by not playing him, despite the fact that it caused a meltdown among all the people that roster him in fancy football. Yeah, Percy Harvin, too. You think back to yeah, what yeah. could have been with what migraines did to him. I'm very thankful that my brain did not choose to have that something that happens to him. And if that's what Bijan's going through or going to continue to go through, hey, God bless you, buddy. Mm. Godspeed. That is no fun at all. Hopefully, Nerd Tech, what'd you say? Nerd Tech and who? Nurtech, you Brelvi. Yeah, you want to get me out for a spokesman for one of these things? I'm happy to do that. Uh, we're a big pharma show. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're a big pharma show. Yeah, you've heard. You've heard, Jeffy. Uh, Darius has a question for you. <laughs> yeah, I want to ask you about some injuries with uh, my Miami Dolphins. Uh, Jalen Ramsey, well, obviously, he's been trending reportedly to, in the right direction. But um, Xavier Howard, somebody I thought would uh, make this game, make the trip. Yep. He didn't make the trip, obviously, with the groin injury. That's been bothering him for a while now. And then um, Jalen Waddle in the back popped up, and he got in there and tried to play through any updates for those injuries from those guys okay Xavier, uh, Xavier Howard was there just didn't play yep. so that tells me that they just didn't feel well enough which I, I was surprised I didn't realize that he was in danger of missing that game but he did um they they played fairly well without him I mean AJ Brown popped off a little bit there um but I would think that it won't be long for him Jalen Lotto was obviously back spasms because he went out of the game he could barely walk and they came back in and finished the game and usually, as you know, if you finish the game, then you know you're typically all right. But that's not a simple thing to get through. And Jalen Ramsey is just—he's just tracking to play. It wouldn't shock me if we saw him this or next week. Like, well, first of all, the window opened, so it has to be within the next couple of weeks. Uh, it's way sooner than everybody expected. Yep. Again, initially, the people thinking it'd be December. If he plays next week, it's October. Uh, the guy is way ahead of schedule. He's been pushing to come back. You're going to see him sooner rather than later, whether that's this week or next week. We can't wait to see you, Jalen. Yep. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see you back in football, honestly. He's been listening to everybody. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've seen a couple tweets on X that he's put out there about, you know, everybody's talking like they know. Kind of sounds like Aaron. Well, well, he, 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 likes, he likes to control his narrative, and he likes to put out little messages. So I'm sure he'd like to report when he's coming back. And I'm sure it'll be soon. And I'm sure you're going to try to cuck him out of that? Is no, that no, Pat. You know, people want to do what they want to do. They, I always say people can do whatever they want with their information. That's not a not an issue. Jalen wants to announce he's coming. It's all him. All him. Baby. But also, if you get the information from somebody else, Jalen. Well, yeah, right. what do you want me to do? That's well, my job. Man. Sorry, it came in another way. That's why you insiders, different level of committed. Oh, yeah. You know? Because mm -hmm. that text might come 2.45 a.m. This guy already told us he's got migraines. He's already got the solutions. Can't see his phone. Gotta get <laughs> the post out. It's amazing. Connor has a question for you, Shefty. Yeah, Shefty, we yeah. are wrapping up week seven tonight, and it feels like this is about the time where some teams are thinking about, you know, moving in a different direction with, you know, coaches or certain members of the team. Team, whether that be the deadline or not. One team in particular that feels like every single year we go into the season expecting big things out of them is the Chargers. Is there any chance Staley's seat is hot? Or are they one of those teams that will probably finish out the year before making a move that is as drastic as firing a head coach? Yeah, uh, it, it, it's, it wouldn't be like them to make a change in season. Uh, I don't think that people have seen the level of improvement that we thought we would from them. So the questions are going to come up with that team the way they are with any other team that's not producing up to its expectations. And I think there were people who thought at the end of last year, I know they like to move on from it and not bring it up, that the Chargers would consider making a change after they blew the lead against Jacksonville in the historic postseason loss. And they didn't. And they stood by their staff. But I think when you go through a year like this and don't show the improvement that everybody hoped, those questions are going to come right back up again. And here they are. You know what's amazing is, we're finishing up, wrapping up week seven, going into week eight, so we're halfway through the year, and we haven't seen a single team make a head coaching change yet, which usually there's one that pops off early in the year. Like last year, we had Carolina with Matt Rule. Mm -hmm. We had the Colts oh. uh, with Frank Reich yeah. going to Jeff Saturday. Thank God. Two last year, relatively early in the This year, none, which we applaud the owners for being stable. Yeah, and, look at and their patience. Stable. Yeah. I don't know, Magic what, Johnson did something. What about LaFleur, Shefty? Well, Ma Magic, jo Magic Johnson, that's, well, those are some powerful tweets that he's putting out there. Like, every time, yeah. anything yeah. yet. He knows ball. But he's hinting <laughs> at something. He's hinting at something yeah. there. Every tweet Magic puts out is powerful. Mm -hmm. Ty, though, brought yeah. up a solid point there. Yeah, what about LaFleur, Shefty? I mean, I know a lot of people think that, like, he was going to get – quite the rope because it's the first year with Jordan Love and everything, but the Packers have looked absolutely dreadful so far. Like, Is there any chance that 
you know, if, if they kind of trend the way they have been, that maybe they reconsider him? Well, first of all, I didn't realize he was firing Monday that we're getting rid of all these. Yeah, bases, you, know, <laughs> you said it. You yeah. said week seven. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> this is about the time. That, okay, you know, I t- Lafleur just signed an extension not long ago, so and that is so an organization that's yeah. very patient. So that would surprise me. I never rule out anything in the NFL, but I would think that they've committed to him. They're going to continue to commit to him, but that team does have some questions to answer because it's been a disappointing run here the last few weeks where. They've regressed, and Jordan, yeah, it's it's been bad. Yeah, uh, and Jordan, Jordan Love hasn't developed, and it almost seemed like as soon as Bakhtiari went out with that injury, and he wasn't there, and the offensive line wasn't holding up, and there was more pressure on Jordan Love, all of a sudden he doesn't feel or look comfortable or confident in the pocket. The offense isn't producing. Aaron Jones was out. Like, there's a whole host of things, and they have the next eight, nine, ten weeks to get it figured out here, but... They've been a disappointment the last few weeks. I think it would be unfair to bring up how Jordan Love has regressed the last couple of weeks without bringing up how good Jordan Love has gotten with the same coaching staff, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like behind the scenes, now Aaron's not there, obviously. Who knows how much Aaron helped with his development and growth. But from that first training camp after he got drafted and started a little bit of a, mm-hmm. you know, not his fault, not his fault, but no. that whole thing kind of started to where he got, he seemingly got much, much better at football. So he should get that credit. But how long? Will it be just a year where LaFleur and Jordan Love will get a chance to experience it and then they get moving forward? Interested to see. Let's talk about another extension that happened. News kind of dropped out of nowhere that Bill Belichick signed an extension this past offseason, multi-year lucrative. What does that mean? Was that for a coach for, as GM? Was it just more money? How long is it? Is this what, what does this mean, you think? And how do we not find out about this until now, you think? Because he always keeps details of his deals very private. And details of his deal never get out. And I don't believe a deal now has any bearing on his future going forward. I really don't. I think him and Robert Kraft will sit down at the end of the year and they'll make a decision mutually about what they each want to do, whether he has an extension or not. And they can figure out the best way to handle the situation, what they believe each side is better off doing, whether that's staying together, whether that's going their own ways. And I don't oh. care whether Bill oh. Belichick has a year left, three years left, five years left. It doesn't matter. To me, they're going to assess that situation on a year-to-year basis and figure out what's best for the both of them. Yeah, you're starting to give a little bit more about that situation. A couple weeks ago, yeah. yep. a couple weeks ago, the answer was, we're even mentioning this. Mm-hmm. This is a big deal. Then it was the same thing. Now it's like, you know, year to year, they'll figure out what they're doing. Jeez. They get a big win over the Bills, though. They might rattle off nine straight. Yeah. And let me tell you, Shefty, <laughs> I don't know about the Patriots fans that you know. This particular guy, not happy. He wants nope. Bill Belichick to lose every game the rest of the year yeah. so they can move on. No, no, not, not so that they can move on from Bill, so that they can move on from Mac and get a different quarterback. Mac I, looked wow. good I've last all, night. I've stayed steady. Uh, last question here from Tone Diggs, Shefty. Yeah, Shefty, we are a week away from the trade deadline, and I feel like the biggest name that keeps popping up potentially is Devontae Adams. Have you heard? anything around that or any other names in this week that we have left before the trade deadline? I, well, I'd be floored if they traded Devontae Adams. His contract isn't geared up for that. Uh, they're trying to win. They, they, they've played terrible the last couple of weeks. There's a uh, Brian Hoyer did not get the job done yesterday, unfortunately for them. They're on Monday Night Football next week against Detroit. I don't expect Devontae Adams to be dealt here from the Las Vegas Raiders. I think when you look at the deadline, which is a week from tomorrow, first of all, you have to keep in mind the fact that we've already seen a handful of deals here. Now, last year was crazy, crazy at the deadline because we saw deals for Bradley Chubb and Calvin Ridley and Roquan Smith and Kadarius Tony and TJ Hawkinson. But like I, it was, damn. it was wild was crazy. right before the deadline. And the league is trended to getting more and more things done by the deadline, which we love. Like we love the activity, outstanding. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't awesome. know. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't see the big names this year that we got last year, which doesn't mean it won't happen because I think what will happen is this last Sunday here, if all of a sudden another, does Denver lose? Does Carolina lose? Does do the Raiders lose? How does that impact teams right before deadline? Is there an injury on Sunday to a team that's won that all of a sudden, hey, we need to go get a, a reinforcement at this position. But going in, We've already seen a few trades here. Randy Gregory, J.C. Jackson, McCole Hardman. We've seen the flip of the late picks, which has become the trend this year. The player in a seven for a six. 
basically just giving the guy away. And there are some guys to watch here coming up. Uh, we've heard a lot of talk in Denver about Jerry Judy and Justin Simmons. We've heard about Carolina. You know, Carolina had a chance last year to move on from Brian Burns for multiple ones and didn't do it. Is there going to be another team out there that makes a run at Brian Burns? I don't think they're going to get the same offer this year, but how do they decide they want to handle that? Uh, you know, the Raiders, Hunter Renfro has been out there for a while. Do they make a decision, hey, we're not trading Devontae Adams, but do we look to move Hunter Renfro? A lot of names like that, but I don't know that we're going to get anything overly significant, though that could change this Sunday. Hunter Renfro would be a great call. Yeah, what's that, Debo? Yeah. Yeah. No, what is you your guys, problem? You guys found your wide out. You got Josh Downs. Yeah, Michael baby. Pittman Jr. is a dog. Well, and Downs. And, Josh Downs. and Downs is always open. Couldn't catch the ball in preseason. And then he said, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So then he gets in regular season, he catches everything. Mm -hmm. I'm excited yeah, to but hear. Yeah, one other thing on that. Let me just say on the trade deadline. What's interesting is the winning teams are out there right now plotting and conniving and just kind of scoping out every roster. Like, is mm -hmm. there a guy we can kind of spring loose at the last moment. Like, that's what these good, winning, successful organizations do. And that's going on. Now, whether they actually do something, we'll see. Okay, so let's talk about the final piece this evening. Niners-Vikings. Spread's only six and a half. I think a lot of us would have expected more, but the Browns and the Colts was three, and that was electrifying, and they were spot on, by yeah. the way. It's weird how sports books were able to do that. Is tonight for Kirk Cousins a game where some people are going to get a little look and maybe they'll move on from him? Or oh. what do you expect from this evening? Is there anything we should know injury-wise before we make our proper bets? Well, uh, first of all, Christian McCaffrey, you know, questionable. That guy is unbelievable. Had like a team of people working on him all week long, like therapists, like working on him around the clock. And he's going to be out there tonight. He's playing. Uh, the, the interesting part will be that he didn't take a hit in practice all week long. So is he going to play the whole game and be Christian McCaffrey, cyborg, cyborg warrior and unaffected? Could be. Uh, does he get hit right away and feel it? Maybe. We'll see. But he's he's definitely playing. He'll be out there tonight. Trent Williams, their left tackle, not going to play for the 49ers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Doubtful that that's a big that's a big blow. And what, where that becomes more of a problem is you're playing in this loud, hostile environment. They were working with loud noise in practice this week, turning up the music, trying to make it such that Jalen Moore, who steps in a left tackle, uh, would be unaffected. But it's, yeah, it's going to be a problem. Skull, 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 skull. Let's go. Here we go. Right? Get ready for tonight. Yeah, we are. We can't wait to watch it. We appreciate the hell out of you, Shefty. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Look forward to next Monday. Enjoy the game tonight. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Schefter. Hey, 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 hey. 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 As we all know, Verizon has the most reliable 5G network that keeps getting better. Oh, yeah. There's no better time to test drive the network football fans rely on than right. Yeah. Also, Verizon 5G Ultra Wideband now reaches 2 100 million people. Wow. So everybody and keeps growing. Give them a try for free for 30 days. Wow. Shout okay. 30 day wow. free trial. Shout out. Shout out to them. Wow. And you know, Shefty's been very reliable for us. Yeah. Yep. Always yeah. Is. Showing up every single month. He started Why? listing some names. Why would the Panthers move on from Burns now when they got their young yeah. quarterback and they're trying to build for the future than maybe last year? Yeah, makes Whenever sense. they're in the middle of an interim. I don't know. Yeah, no, that wouldn't make any sense. That would be like, are we setting Bryce Young up to succeed mm -hmm. or potentially to fail? Do you want to have another reset year in Bryce Young's second year? Ah, uh, that sounds interesting to me, but maybe. Unless they think they can get two first round picks because they don't have any because they had to trade that away to get yeah. Bryce Young potentially. Well, and if Bajan has any say, the Bears aren't going to be up Dog. near the yeah, top not with right. those draft <laughs> picks. Dog. Huh? Not this Sunday, says Bajan. What a dog out of West Virginia. Yeah. Love him. All right, we'll be back on the other side with A.J. Hawk and more. This is the Pat McAfee Show. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Pat McAfee, sell on your stunner at WrestleMania. Stunner! Where does that rank all the time? I, that's got to be pretty up there. Man, top three. Top three, and I got to say top three because The Rock, number one, the way he oversold, and Scott Hall and some of the other guys that took it. But I mean, you know, Pat has a natural feel for the business, epic performer, great on the stick. I apologize that you're a punk bitch. Athletically, you know, that, that match he had with Theory was awesome. 
And then the, the kicker was not only the sell of the stunner, but to lay there selling, still guzzling the beer, the presence of mind to ad lib and improvise it like this is a moment without even thinking about it. I think he's amazing. Uh, he's very entertaining. And as a human being, I like him a whole lot. And here's a, here's an off the record story. The, the second night that we were, we were at Mania, I was just planning on drinking uh, whiskey with my Broken Skull Sessions crew. And so we had a bottle all lined up and we were just gonna drink during the show and show respect to the people that were working. Well, Vince called me into his room and said, hey man, would you come out in the end? Stun me, McAfee, and Theory. And I said, sure. So I couldn't drink until after the show. Okay, so the show happens. I go out there, stun all those cats. Brock Lesnar gets done with, with his match, the main event with Roman Reigns. And me and Brock have been wanting to bond together and, and have a few cocktails to begin with. And he goes, hey man, you got anything? I said, yeah. I said, where are we meeting? He goes, my locker room. So it was myself, Brock Lesnar, Larry, or one of the trainers who's been there forever, you know Larry, Larry. and uh, Pat McAfee. What a day, what a dream, what a life. Now I'm gonna have a couple more Steve Wazers. Why? Maybe a little whiskey. Why? And we took down a fifth. We just passed the bottle around. At first we were drinking out of little cups. Then it just turned into the bottle. And we, we uh, took down a fifth of Baker's Mark in about an hour. And then we all went our separate ways. Hey, we fucking did it. <laughs> and I heard through the grapevine that uh, a couple of those guys woke up whispering your headaches. Really? And I don't want to undersell this. Really hungry. <laughs> you know what I mean? From what you had inside the ring that we saw on camera, and then what was there a thing afterwards? Well, you know, there might have been. There might have been, yeah, a lot afterwards. <laughs> but it was a bonding moment, at, you know, after a big show like that of four guys, and I just barely met Pat, but he was already one of the boys because of his football background and how everybody, you know, the WWE has taken to him. And me and Brock's relationship goes back a long way, as does Larry. So it was a good time. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Overreaction Monday, October 23rd, 2023. Hour two of this program starts now. Football! It is happening this evening as the Niners and Vikings will battle in Minnesota in front of a Vikings faithful that will certainly bring an electrifying atmosphere. Will the Niners dominate or will the Minnesota Vikings be able to take advantage of some injuries on that San Francisco 49ers team? It was six and a half this morning the Niners were favored by. Now it's seven Whoa. the Niners are favored by. So the more we learn, Trent Williams out. I believe Debo out. Christian McCaffrey, though, playing but hasn't had any contact. Oh. We'd be able to handle a stand. The Minnesota Vikings defense, we shall see. Fred's playing. Brock Purdy's playing. Bye. How will he look, you know, after some question marks have been asked about the way he can handle an NFL football team throughout the duration of an entire season? Excited for tonight is Kirk Cousins. Is prime time Kirk oh, yet again? Yeah, the yeah. Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Don. Don. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. Do we know where the money is on this Niners Vikings game? Niners favored by seven going into Minnesota. It's October 23rd, probably chilly, but not like frozen just yet out there Inside. in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. No, I understand that. But uh, when we played out in Minnesota, we had to go from the buses to the building. 
It was negative 14. Yeah, negative 14. That was before wind chill, which I don't know how you even measure that. Okay? You don't. There's an absence of temperature by 14 degrees before even wind chill. So who knows how they decided. I think anything below like negative 5, probably all the same. But it's not like that in Minnesota right now. It's actually a glorious time. The Niners are probably walking around the hotel right now, mm -hmm. taking it all in, loosening up the legs. Where's the money at today? Uh, seventy plus percent is on the Niners. Uh, uh oh, uh -oh. That, we know what that they're means. Due, Week seven for, has been the opposite. Yeah. They're due for one though. The the seventy plus percenters are due for one because they're zero and seven to start this week. Yeah, oh. or is that a trend of week seven Dude. to kind of uh, reshape this whole thing? Uh, Nine-year NFL vet, host of NFL matchups, Darius J. Butler is here. Oh, and joining us now live from an attic in Ohio is a man who's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers who might be in the middle of a regression uh -oh. Uh -oh. in the middle of a transition year. He's gloom and doom. We'll hear how he is. Ladies and gentlemen, a man who got to address his constituents on Friday mm -hmm. in the rain and the cold. Yeah, those people showed up over there. Yeah, they did. Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hawk. Yeah. Yeah. Hawker, how you doing, pal? Doing great. How you guys doing? Amazing. Majestic. Life is good. Our uh, whole show will be traveling to uh, Utah this Friday. Oh, there hell. we go. Yeah. So big shout out to Columbus uh, for showing up for us and being amazing in that miserable weather. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Like anytime it's a 30s, 40s, raining and windy, it's like, is it freezing cold? No, actually not, which makes it worse. So this rain is just oh, going to yeah. hit us in the side of the face while we're doing it. Big shout out to your people showing up, AJ. That was incredibly cool. And congrats to Ohio State getting another massive dub on the year over Penn State on Saturday. Yeah, it was a good win for them. Obviously, uh, not a, it was a bit of a cagey game, a defensive battle for a long time. But yeah, I was there in the stadium, got to see it, got to see you doing your thing uh, in the game day set with CJ uh, pregame. It was a uh, I don't know how you felt, but it was a pretty good atmosphere out there for a noon game especially. Uh, it was awesome. And Ryan Day told us on Friday, he was like, hey, at noon, we need you, is what he was saying to the fans. Yep. And then there was a couple other people that were saying, like, this Ohio State team and their fans, no offense, but it's natural, you kind of just start expecting things, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, you'll show up, noon game, we'll start waking up around third quarter, yep. fourth quarter. It's October. The game that matters, we all know, is at the end against Michigan. We need to just clear it up. They were loud. Hey, Ohio State was – in the way that place is built, the horseshoe is sick, by the way. That Unreal. Is, is sick. That other side that fills in the end of the horseshoe, that's a renovation. Is that, is that probably accurate? Yeah, but it wasn't always – yeah, it wasn't always closed. It was like uh, – there was like templar, temporary bleachers there that were not nearly as big. And then I think like in 2001, they redid it and made it like a, a permanent structure. But that's just a wall of people. Sweet. The way it is built to kind of connect the two sides because we're standing – so incredibly lucky to be able to stand where we're, we're just standing on the field at the end zone. And I'm just like looking around like this place is awesome, you know, and I heard the chatter about them not showing up for the noon game or having enough juice. They did from little opening kickoff. Mm -hmm. And then you just stare down at the end. It's just a wall of red and they are losing their minds yes. for four hours. Incredible atmosphere over there. This might be the team, AJ. This might be Ohio State. Look out. Might be able to go. Huh, with that guy? Oh, huh? huh? They uh, passed a they passed a big test, obviously beating uh, Penn State. Now it's now we got to keep it moving. That's the problem. Ryan Day said on the show, like, hey, you can't lose a game at Ohio State. Like you're you you just can't do that. Well, I have no idea how it's going to be on Friday, but we can't wait to get out to Utah. Let's go. Yeah. I haven't checked the demo. By the way, the athletics demo is not ours. I do not think. No. I learned that this weekend. <laughs> I learned that the no, athletics is demo is probably well, not oh, our demo. Fifty percent. That's a high number. That's a high number of people. 50% mm -hmm. of the people that took this poll about my my presence on College Game Day said they do not, hey, like it, don't like it, indifferent. 50% of these 3,100 people said, I don't <laughs> like, could have said, could have said indifferent. 20% of the people said that, I think. They said, don't like it. It's crazy. So I don't know if the Utah demo is an athletic demo sure. or if it's our demo, but we're excited to get out there and experience it. I've heard it's beautiful out there. Yeah. I've heard it's absolutely beautiful out there. Yeah, only thing I've seen is pictures. I also heard it is beautiful out there, but we're a big Mormon show, and we love the Ooses. LDS. So, yeah. yeah. So, so what are we We had LDS about? Thursday. Yeah, hey, Utah, we're coming home. Boom. Utah, we're coming home. LDS Friday's coming home. Yeah. 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 I forgot about yeah. us. We are like that. Yeah. So come on. Pump for Utah. It's going to be unbelievable. Long flight. 
uh, Mountain Time. That's yep. a 7 a.m. local kickoff for nice. college game day Woo. on Saturday, which I'm very lucky to be a part of. Can't wait to get out to Utah. We appreciate you. All right, let's talk about the NFL Sunday that happened yesterday. AJ, this Philadelphia Eagles team, what they were able to do against this Dolphins team. And in the fourth quarter, Tua and the boys had a chance to tie it up. Instead, Darius Slay gets a big-time pick. Then the Philadelphia Eagles will go on a run there that will showcase who they are, a physical bunch that is not scared to bet on themselves. Sirianni on fourth down on his own. 25 in the fourth quarter runs the brotherly shove. Obviously, they're at 93% success rate, but still massive game, fourth quarter up one score. They run it right down at Dolphins' throat and put that thing away. What did you learn from those two teams? And I'm not down on the Dolphins with how last night went, no. but I'm certainly way up on the Eagles right now, more so than maybe I was two weeks ago. Yeah, I would say, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not completely out on the Dolphins by any means. I think the Dolphins can be the Dolphins, but I think this Philly that D line like just wreaks havoc. I, I love what they can do, even if they're not like directly affecting the quarterback. Like they're all like you have to always have that under my head. One of these giants is probably going to kill me here in a second if you have the quarterback, if you have the ball and you're the quarterback. So when you have that and you have both your offense and defensive line are just absolute studs. Road graders on the offensive line, D line penetrates all over the place. Like you're going to win a lot of games. Like and then you think about all the rest of the talent they have everywhere on that squad, yeah, you see like why the Eagles are so good. Yeah, Lane Johnson gave up his first sack in how many years? Three? Uh, 2020. Yeah, 2020. yeah. three Week years, 20 four 20. years. Yeah. Week 11, I think, <laughs> 2020. A tackle. He's a tackle. He's a right tackle. Gives up his first sack in forever. So the Dolphins D-line also, pretty good night last yeah. night. Yep. But Jalen being able to move, being yep. able to connect with his weapons, and that defense being as punishing as they are, this Philadelphia Eagles team's legit. They're for real. And it feels like a couple teams are starting to separate themselves from the pack. The Chiefs certainly one of them, AJ. Absolutely. The Chiefs are the Chiefs all of a sudden again. The same Chiefs that we always bet on at the end of the season are now the Chiefs yet again. And we have that down here on the ticker. The Chiefs is the Chiefs, as the old adage says. That's real again. It feels like certainly after yesterday and how they made that Chargers team look that is not good seemingly year in, year out. Yeah, but the, okay, so the Chiefs offense. Now, yeah, this is more what we're, we're expecting. When Pat had, what, four touchdowns and – a great day, obviously. Kelsey with a monster day. But what about this Chiefs defense? Like, I, they definitely never get enough credit when they do play well. But I like what they can do, man. I put a text in the old group chat when Drew Tranquil's running middle read. Beautiful. Plays through the hands like he times up the eyes. Boom. And whoever the tight end was, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name, got blasted as well <laughs> as soon as the ball got there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, great. Beautiful play. Like, they, they make things, like, look easy. I think their defense deserves some credit. And, and. What? And we're talking Chiefs. Oh, and yeah, obviously Taylor Swift has like uh, handshakes yeah. now yep. with Brittany Mahomes. Yep. She's yep. Oh, yeah. looking at babies. Like, yeah, Same. everything's going great, man. Yep. Yeah. Andy Reid mentions it in the post game press. Like, everything's looking great. Huh? They're in love. Yeah, they are. They're oh, in yeah. love. Sorry sure. about it. What? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. And guess what? Good for a- them. After season's over, you know, she's getting a chance to experience a Chiefs season, which. If it's anything like the recent Chiefs seasons, it's going to be a good one. Yeah, pretty fun. And then guess what Travis is doing? Right on the Eras oh, door. Yeah. Getting mm-hmm. a chance to celebrate her. This is a – Wow. Hey. It's going to be sick. This is hap- – I'm so happy for them. Congrats, you two. Woo. Congrats, you two. Travis. But also at that game, Marianne Doe. Any thoughts on her being awesome and very much a fan of the Chargers? Yeah, AJ so Hall? What, what do you say? What is this? Uh, she got a B-dubs deal? What happened? Where I didn't see that part. Yeah, yeah her her hat there, but Buffalo Wild Wings, uh, the white. What if she's just left. a big fan? You, th- you sure she's getting paid? Well, the white on the left there, Buffalo Wild Wings on his hat as well, and mm-hmm. he has the, uh, the selfie <laughs> camera. And, uh, yeah, it, it appears as if this is a work for Buffalo Wild Wings. But I want to let yeah. Mary and do- congratulations on getting a new deal. Yeah, not yeah. easy to s- secure no, a partnership, not. especially with a blue chipper like Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh, you know right. what I mean? A blue yeah. chipper. It is blue like B Dubs. Mary and Doe is able- now. Your thoughts, AJ, on all of it? We're pumped for Mary and Doe, obviously. I mean, I I can't hate on her. Why would I hate on her hustling, getting some cash? If B Dub says, "Hey, you want to wear a hat, and we'll either give you probably give you a ton of free product and a bunch of cash." Okay, sure, I'll take that. I didn't even think about the boneless and the wings that she got out oh, of this entire thing. Oh, what, yeah. a, what a win. And they used to have these uh, flatbread pizzas. I don't know if they still sell them or not. It used to go off oh. menu. You'd have to order it. Mary Ann's getting free that. And also front row seats. Yeah. yeah Felt anywhere. like front row seats. You know what I mean? They're probably yeah. hoping for overtime. That's kind of Buffalo Wild Wings thing. But you say you're not hating on her? 
Darius, would her. you like to talk? No, great for her. Ah, uh, you sound like you were hating a little right bit. Now, right right now. Now. Yeah, I don't know, D. You know, she hit it. Her team's, you know, struggling, obviously. So uh, it's great for her wonder, and the fam, man. Wonder if Marianne, with all that Buffalo Wild Wings money, is gonna do what I saw in the in that suite that she was in last week, happening this week in the suite, if she's gonna make it rain the next time the Chargers play at home. Oh, you're talking oh, about a little yeah. blue face throwing a one with booties. I think that's Marianne's suite. A lot of ass cheeks and Did stuff anybody like shut that down? Anyone like shut that down or, or they just let that roll? I believe Blueface said, I pay for sweet. <laughs> yeah. He actually got engaged after that yesterday. What? What? It was a true love story. He did get engaged <laughs> after that. Hell yeah. I don't know enough about this guy. <laughs> Me neither. But I, I do know well. Roger Goodell is about to learn something and say, mm. uh, Let's not put him maybe field side suites if he's going to have cheeks clapping <laughs> yeah. Yeah. all over the place, maybe for a daylight game. But you No know. cheeks in the field side. No cheeks in the field side suites. That's going to be a new rule. The, new, when you get your, you know, because. Remember they were trying to tell us that's what NFTs were, tickets? Yep. Oh, yeah. You already use NFTs when you get your tickets in your email. Right. It's like, okay. <laughs> sure. A little Thank bit of a stretch you. here. <laughs> but I understand. Right there underneath the little square thing that scans, it's like, all right, no guns. Yep. All right, be, uh, have a lot of sportsmanship out there. Mm -hmm. Be classy. Uh, no cheeks. Five, refer back to rule number four. We need no cheeks mm -hmm. in this particular suite. Blueface had the cheeks out everywhere. I don't know if that helped or hurt the Rams, but the Steelers saw it, and T.J. Watt was like <laughs> gobbling, the yeah. gobbling up picks, kind of doing what he's got to do. Yeah, I had to uh, mute Blueface and some other names on my Twitter. For, probably the second time I've had You want to see cheeks? Little baby? No, Why? just not even this. What's wrong? For the past few months, it's just they just pump it in the algorithm for some reason. Who, so Blueface? Good for him. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Ty mentioned Ty another one, too. That yeah. was pretty loud uh, well, yesterday and today. Little Baby? Yeah, yeah, mute him too. No. I did. I, did I have heard about little baby. What happened? Oh, I didn't hear. About he was at that uh, all white party with Ruben. I do mm -hmm. believe last. He was, time. but yeah, that's not, not what people are up in arms about today. Oh no! no. Well, happy for little baby. Happy for Blueface. Everything, baby. whatever's going Mr. on. Beast, Mr. Beast, Beast let uh, he Mr. let him out, right? Football pants. Mr. Beast was wearing football pads, uh, pants. Did he play? Did he get in at all? He, I mean, he looked like he was going to play for real. <laughs> I would like to say this about Mr. Beast. If Mr. Beast was to play, he'd be a quarterback or middle linebacker, and he'd be the guy on the yeah. field that figures out everything and does it better than everybody. Mm -hmm. That's what Mr. Beast is. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who this guy is that was wearing football pants yesterday with a shirt tucked into it on the sideline, <laughs> casual, with tennis shoes, you'd say, hey, listen, bud, oh, don't no, need to cleats. do it. Yeah, cleats. Okay, That's I'm sorry. I didn't even yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Of course he did. That's That's what he does. Just he, was running, he was running El Drill in warm-ups. I saw him time. Mr. Potentially. And they had a good stopwatch on him because he's only getting the best sure. for everything. Look, mm -hmm. This dude's been one of the best businessmen in America since he's like 13 or 14 years old. Mm -hmm. So he is a wizard. And I like the fact that he's getting more involved in the NFL. I do appreciate the fact, too, that they put him in pants and say, hey, you're going to look like an asshole. <laughs> good luck. We're going to put you out here. <laughs> you're, you're going to let you walk out there. But, hey, Mr. Beast, you look good, baby. Go. Keep, keep leading the way, you gotta Mr. Beast. If you're going to wear football pants, you got to put pads in them, or you are going to look like an asshole. Even You're still going to look like an asshole with pads in there, but... Only person I've ever seen not put pads in their football pants and look cool, Chris Angel. That's right. Uh -huh. And we all know that yeah. was the case. Correct. And Mr. Beast, though, obviously pulled it off. We appreciate him. How do you feel about the Lions kind of coming back down to earth or maybe just having a bad day against a Baltimore Ravens team that was incredibly hot? Lamar Jackson, don't look now. Don't look now. Awesome. Pocket passer, Lamar Jackson. Mm -hmm. and we don't have the stats, but I will assume they will be matching up with a lot of the other people that have nowhere near the ability that he has whenever he's running the rock. He's starting to become the guy that we all hoped mm -hmm. and thought he was going to be with this Munkin offense, slinging it, running it, swagging it. The Ravens dominate the brand new Lions yesterday, AJ Hawk. I mean, this was honestly very fun to watch as someone that didn't really have a rooting interest. I just wanted to see a good game. Watching... The Ravens just jump on them early and continue was it was a thing of beauty how well they play. But yeah, I don't I don't take a lot away from the Lions. I think they're gonna be fine. Sometimes just <clears> things happen where it's like, man, why are we when they watch the film back, they'll probably see things that they never they haven't done all year and you let guys behind you, broken tackles, all these things, but I think they'll be all right. That happens in the NFL, by the way. There are days where you yeah. just, for whatever reason, don't show up. And all you need is like four guys to have bad days on the same day, and all of a sudden everything can get exposed. That's why the NFL is so difficult. But that does not take away from the fact that the Ravens sliced and diced. This little check down to Gussie Boy, and then he pulls away with a D lineman. Ha, 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 ha. 
Huh? Move. Yeah, great hustle. Jump on the pile at least. Have to. Oh, need him just to yeah. fall on the pile yeah. there. Need him to get a little J-O-P at least, get a little mm -hmm. bit of credit. But everything they were doing was working. That's not, you know, obviously we think the Lions are going to be okay. Yeah. But the Ravens made that happen. I love what I saw. Yeah, that's a nightmare for defenses. Obviously, we know how dynamic Lamar is, you know, in the run game or extended plays. But if he can pick, continue to pick you apart uh, from the pocket, that is an absolute nightmare. Like you said earlier, this isn't like um, all new for him. He's led the league in touchdown passes before. We saw him in college throw the ball around that Petrino offense. So, um, and it's only, what, eight weeks? in the system now so I think they only get better yeah and like when you think about those two games like last night's game Dolphins Eagles this game Lions Ravens like the losses are something I think it just tells us more about the Ravens just like the Eagles game does tells us more about the Eagles okay. like the Ravens are just really really good now I think they're are they second or third in the AFC like if the Chiefs they're probably looking at the Ravens at least today like hey that's the team that we need to kind of keep tabs on because they are rolling let's talk about another AFC team that is seemingly Piece together to go on a run if they can figure out the quarterback position. Don't look now, PJ Walker undefeated. Mm -hmm. But the Cleveland Browns get a massive win over the Indianapolis Colts in a shootout. I think there was eight lead changes, which is the most in a four year span. If the tweet that I read is an accurate one, we had a chance to be there live and in person. It was electrifying. This is how the game started yeah. on a third and two. <laughs> it is third down, Colts fans. Ah! Gonna get a three and out. Let's get this thing started. And then Ford to the crib. Jeez. And all of a sudden, it's a much different vibe in there. <laughs> yeah. You start hearing that there's a lot of Cleveland Browns fans that have made the trip from Cleveland Heard. to Indianapolis. They had the entire upper deck, orange, spattered everywhere. It was bananas. They were infiltrating that entire stadium. The amount of... <laughs> what a thing, by the way. I'm happy that the Cleveland Browns have that. If you're a fan of this team, all you got to do is just bark obnoxiously. Don't need a rhythm. Don't need a melody. Nope. Just need to bark. And I'll tell you, it sounded sweet yes. in Lucas Oil Stadium yesterday. There was five, I think, Miles Garrett chants echoing from the tops and from the bellows Man. of Lucas Oil Stadium with what he was able to do. He had two sacks, a blocked field goal, game record all over the place. I think he accounted for 14 points himself. Mm -hmm. He is absurd. The vertical that he showcased from a four-point stance to block that kick and not touch the long snapper or the guard which be against the rules, absurd. The dude in person is an actual spectacle. Like, you see him and you're like, humans aren't supposed to be built like that. And I put a tweet out that said he might be the best constructed human in the history of humans. Mm -hmm. And somebody was like, LeBron James ain't going to like that you said that. I respect LeBron James. I respect a lot. Wemby right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I, I respect these people that are one of one. This dude's like 270, 280 yeah. doing all these things. Absolutely jacked. And his football IQ is through the roof. You watch him work against double teams and shifts and everything that's happening. He is a master. This dude was fun to watch yesterday, AJ. And the Cleveland Browns, if they can figure out that quarterback position, which they invested $230 million guaranteed into, they could be a real real team, it feels like, after watching them yesterday. Yeah, so first off, I wanted to ask, like, yeah, what what was it like watching Miles Garrett in person in a game like that? Like, Just seeing him in person is a special thing, I think, to watch play. But then to see one of these, like, games that we're going to talk about for a long time. Like, that had to be awesome. Well, first of all, Jones, remember Ohio State tackle? Mm -hmm. yeah. He's yeah, on the yeah. Browns now? Yeah, hold on. He's pretty small. Right. He's oh. tiny, isn't he? Yeah, so he's, tiny. he's like 15 yards away, and it's like, holy shit. That thing yeah. is massive. It is like, uh -huh. compared to all the big guys, just like whenever yep. we watch him, Ohio State, Georgia, it was like, that dude's bigger than everybody. Yeah. Same thing on the NFL field. So they have a couple guys, size and speed, ready to go, obviously, for the future. But Miles Garrett's strip sack, you know, uh, in the fourth to kind of get a touchdown was right, like literally four feet in front of me, okay? As it was, Ooh. boom, beat him, throw him, strip him, sack him. Uh, all of a sudden, they got a touchdown. Do your dance, do your dance. Miles Garrett gets up. He had a chip, beats his guy. No problem. Man. Ball out. Give me that thing. Bad bounce. It's okay. We'll get it anyways. Touchdown. We keep moving forward. Miles Garrett goes like this at the end of this. If they're going to show it, I'm not 100% sure. He goes like this, though. Mm. And I literally make eye contact with him. <laughs> and then he just starts dancing, basically, staring at the entire place. So he doesn't do the Bosa shrug, but it is pretty much like, a, are you not entertained mm -hmm. at a man that mm -hmm. just took over a game? It was fantastic. Now, I'm happy you brought that up. Because we will talk about what Miles Garrett did against the Indianapolis Colts. Huh? I have to. For a long, long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I hope what gets remembered is that the Colts were supposed to win that game.
Ooh. The Colts got absolutely bam boozled. Listen to this, AJ. I don't want to be the guy that says that, you know, people are getting bamboozled and cheated and that people are potentially gambling on games that have whistles mm -hmm. and wear stripes. Whoa. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to murder referees. I appreciate referees. I understand it's not a job that anybody wants. I understand that there's not a single person in the crowd that says, you know what? I want the refs to do well today. The only thing they want them to do is just stay the hell out of the way or if they're going to make a terrible call, make it for us. But if you make a terrible call, you're going to piss off everybody. Nobody wants to be refs. I get it. So we got to appreciate those that sign up for it. With that being said, just because you sign up doesn't mean you get to be in the freaking NFL. Some of these dudes are absolutely terrible at what they do. And it got displayed yesterday. I don't know how these refs aren't full-time. We've talked about this for years. Mm -hmm. I have no clue how that decision has been made. I have no clue how we've gotten to 2023 with how prevalent sports gambling is, how much money is being wagered on these NFL games, that the refs, the ones that are calling 40-yard pass interferences or deciding games at the end like at the Super Bowl mm -hmm. and stuff like that, aren't full-time employees of the league. That's integrity is the most important thing because it's hard not to say – that these teams got bamboozled. It's hard not to say that they got cheated because that's a pass interference, okay? That's what they said. But we go to the play before that, which is the illegal contact, actually. This illegal contact call, oh, my God. Whoa. That takes away a strip sack that the Colts would have won the game. Yep. Yep. Colts strip sack, ball going the other way after the play. Wow. Legal contact, 39, mm -hmm. Indianapolis Colts. That was a game-altering call right there. Yep. Then you say, oh, they got us once. Okay, all right. I mean, a little ticky-tack, but what are we talking? Then we go to the very next play. These refs said, nah, nah, you get one, we'll get another one. That ball bounces into the stands. Into the stands. Jeez. Go back, go back. This ball bounces. PJ had a great game, whatever the case. It's in the fourth quarter last. Goes into the stands. <laughs> that ball bounces into this guy's hands. Okay. Old buddy says, wow, I can't believe that thing went into the stands. That was a terrible throw. This guy's thinking to himself, incomplete? No way. This lady's like, I'm supposed to be looking this way, but look at this guy. He sees something. I need to look at what's going on here. He was nowhere near. That ball certainly uncatchable. Nah, nah, says whatever ref from. I believe it was Sean Smith. Sean Smith's crew said, that's pass interference. That's illegal contact. Same corner, two calls. Both of them obnoxious. Yeah. Both of them cost the Indianapolis Colts the game. I believe there's a chance we should start searching okay mm. we did this to the iowa hawkeye and iowa state kids yep, yep. yeah we need terrible call that landed outside of the yellow terrible call right. come on and gene you, think Wemby, you think Wemby could get that no He's tall enough to reach it gene sterator comes on and we love gene well Yenzy. huge yeah. fan great ref the, the game misses him so does college basketball miss yes. him he comes on and says for guys to say something's uncatchable, though, the ball has normally got to be, like, thrown into the stands. Where As he's saying that, the ball bounces into the stands. <laughs> as he's saying that. So I think he even goes, like, oh, I don't know why this was called. Well, you know why there's a chance that it was called? I like an investigation. Ooh. Okay? Into that particular ref. Yeah. Not only that ref. Let's not just check that name. We need aunties. Yep. We need moms. Whole family. We need sisters. We Everybody. need girlfriends. Right. We need husbands. He had to have something on that game. I don't want to be a guy proclaiming that these refs are rigging games, but I don't know how you call those back-to-back -to, -back to secure one team to definitely have a win. That seems a little... Huh? Uh, that seems a little... Fishy. A little fishy. All over the place. I mean, I, th I don't want to change the subject, but I feel like Iowa has the biggest gripe with that, that fake fair uh, catch situation. Uh, so, funny you say that. That was actually Ooh. another part of this. They <laughs> got bamboozled. You're on the same page. This, this was, is inexcusable. Inexcusable call, I feel like. This Thank is you. fourth quarter. 135 left. 12 to 10. 12 to 10. Offensive juggernaut, Iowa. Special <laughs> teams monsters. Takes a punt. Let's it bounce. Takes it to the crib. Holy hell. Iowa, who only has two yards of offense in the entire second half, pull off a comeback win with a play like that. Wow. The Hawkeyes fans are going crazy. The Children's Hospital across the street oh, is like, man. yeah, that's exciting football. Mm -hmm. We're not used to that with this Iowa Hawkeyes team. Then, somehow, some way, oh, this guy. Tim O'Day. Tim O'Day mm. and his crew call it back, and they say that one of the refs called it a fair catch. Well, that's a fascinating thing because not once does he signal for a fair catch. Peter, Peter, Peter. 
Peter, very standard operating procedure for a punt returner to get his teammates the hell out of the way. Then he catches it and says, oops, actually, I'm going to snag a few extra yards. Breaks a tackle down the sideline, across the field, big time comeback to keep the bronze pig, wow. the Floyd yeah. Rosedale, right. in Iowa. Now, if they thought that he was signaling for a fair catch, how come there was no flag on the field whenever he picked up the ball and started to run it? That would be a penalty. That would be an illegal fair catch sign. There was never a flag laid on the field at all. There was never a whistle that stopped this thing after the fair catch was allegedly called. The only thing we know is they went to review and came out with bullshit, which makes us think... Huh. Yin's got bamboozled potentially by this guy. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they when they the replay happened initially was whether or not he stepped out of bounds, like right there. There was never any mention of oh, that's an illegal fair catch or that's. And then, you know, I mean, I, I damn near had a heart attack. I really did. I couldn't believe it. I thought I was. And you don't want to bitch about the refs ever, but like I, I can't ever remember something like that happening. Well, it just doesn't make sense because what they said was fair catch. And my point about them not throwing a flag then, that's illegal. Like yeah. you do a fake fair catch and then you go and return it. It's like, all right, well, that's a penalty. That's yep. not mm -hmm. allowed. So then no flag on the field, no whistle to go all the way through, then come back after a review on whether or not, oh, actually, we called it a fair catch. Who did? Because that person didn't do the right thing after calling or thinking it was a fair catch then. Just a complete, we got to look into it. What's the name of the ref? Tim O'Day. Tim O'Day. We need Tim O'Day, Mama O'Day, right. Mrs. Yep. O'Day, right. Kid O'Day, right. Auntie O'Day. Right. Check. Because wait, maybe they didn't bet on the game, even though in Iowa. Yep. Yeah, Iowa they, they do Iowa. that. You know, in Iowa, we have heard. Mm -hmm. Iowa feels but like there has to be some sort of connection in Minnesota to get that bronze pig back. You would have to think that. And for the Colts game, maybe that person's from Cleveland, Ohio. Whoa. Maybe they're not betting on the game, but they just have personal interest for this Browns team to be able to go on a run. I don't know, but it feels like there's more. Than, the Rams have enough to be mad about because of Kenny Pickett not being able to – definitely not picking up this first down. I mean, nowhere near it. <laughs> nowhere near it. And that's easy to see this – look at look at this line judge. Look at this line judge right here. Uh, I can't see it really. He's down, but – I ain't got it. Who knows where? Well, I mean, the Rams don't have an argument, though. Was that first from Don guy? Jeez. No, it wasn't the ref from Pittsburgh High School football, which is an absolute legend. The side view is the one that we need to see. That's this one. There we go. Boom. Yeah, I mean, there's nowhere. <laughs> Didn't even get back. nowhere the near it. Zero chance. He's nowhere near it. But the Rams had no timeouts. So they couldn't challenge. And it was above two minutes because anything under two minutes is automatic review from the booth upstairs. Coaches can't throw the challenge flag. I think stadiums need to announce that, by the way. I think stadiums need to say, since we're under two minutes, there's no more coaches' challenges. Because there's been a couple times where Shane Steichen, who's just trying to, you know, kind of introduce himself to Indianapolis. I've heard people around be like, Don't challenge this guy's a dipshit. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, he's not. It's actually a penalty yeah, if right. he does right yeah. now, and he's not allowed to do it all. So the Rams certainly have a little something to say about it. The Iowa Hawkeyes certainly have something to say about it. The Indianapolis Colts got absolutely bamboozled. Clear as day, back-to-back -back plays. We all just saw it. We just watched it. That's bullshit. And the Miami Dolphins get no flags, no help, no penalty last night against the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, and that guy is actually from about 20 minutes north of Philly, I believe, who was the head ref of the Eagles uh, Dolphins. Jeez. See, so there's just, we need full-time refs, okay? We need full-time refs. We need to take these questions out. Now, I don't know what's going to happen in the Big Ten with Iowa and Tim O'Day. I assume he'll get the Big Ten championship game because that's probably. seemingly <laughs> how these types of things always work. But in the NFL, we cannot continue to have the conspiracy fodder that happens. As soon as I see those two plays, that refs in on this thing, and then you hear, the script says, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. script says. Oh, it's like, hey, a lot of people betting a lot of money on these games now. going to have to be something that you're going to want to nip in the bud as if it was a flower, and I think the NFL should take the lead there. These refs have had a seemingly quiet year. Mm -hmm. Now, I know there's been some holdings that have uh, certainly pissed off AQ, but they haven't been like the deciding factor for games until this past weekend. Let's not make this a common trend. Let's not keep this thing going. Let's upgrade the review facility. Okay, let's upgrade the review facility so it looks like at least an above average place to make these calls. And let's fix everything when it's wrong. Like the Kenny Pickett one, that's an easy one yeah. for them to go. He's short, dude. He's, yeah. he's clearly short. Well, they don't have any reviews. They don't have that. Well, they do have 
a team over there that thinks they've been screwed. And that's not good for the entirety of the NFL. Yeah, that side view is easy to see. I, that, I, that, that Hawkeye, that was the most egregious one by far. The, the Browns one, I mean, clearly uncatchable. And you know it's a spot ball, so now you give them a fresh set of downs on the one. Uh, God, you just can't have it. Full-time full refs should be no brainer. I don't no understand brainer. how we still having a conversation in 2023. Make them ex-players. Not enough set, money. What's, <laughs> yeah, that's the problem, right? That's the, I'm sure that's their claim. It has to be. For sure. Why don't we get a sponsor to pay for it then? You know, like, hey, these refs are brought to you by. Right. Don't, line. Bring, don't bring rational thought to this. Don't Somebody can that. pay for it. But if it's ex-players in a pipeline, you can go to, like, a school and you can be, like, uh, on a practice. I don't, I don't know if I want ex-players refing either, though. Like, I don't trust most players. Oh, yeah. They got, they got, I mean, I do. But, like, I, I guess, guys, if they really want to be a ref, then, yeah, you would. But I don't know if, like, it doesn't. you don't have to be a player to be a good ref. So you're telling me. That you don't want guys that have played out there making the calls? Yeah, I do. But I don't always think NFL athletes would make the best referees. Maybe some of them, I guess they could, if you get them in a pipeline, get them reps and everything. But I don't know many guys that want to ref. That's the problem. Well, if we had the guys that want to ref instead of, you know, going broke after playing in the NFL for four years and they were bought in and they had a chance to go to school and learn in a practice squad. But everyone's going to say they're homers, though, for whatever teams they played for, no matter what. There's always going to be weird instances. Oh, this guy played for this head coach. Oh, this he would play for this team for a couple of years. All right, well, forget it. Just take college football players. Yeah, like whatever the, the case, like just the make it a there career path. Like, just make yeah. it a career path. Yeah. NASCAR for yeah. people yeah like NASCAR for the pit crew these dudes are living on cam on a campus they have workouts in the morning they have this and it's like they are full-time pit crew guys now they don't have as much power as NFL refs do oh. but they do execute their craft it's a line of work like it's a pipeline like hey here's an actual job it's like officiating if it was a full-time thing and in the offseason guess what they did they even want the things to get better. Yeah. Mm. And then they were able to divvy up stuff to go to practices. And then if a guy has a terrible game or a lady has a terrible game, hey, you're going back down to practice squad. We actually have a replacement up here. It's like if money is the only thing saving that, it's like, well, I think you're going to lose more money later with people tuning out the NFL because they think it's rigged and they think that the refs are terrible. It's like that's a real PR thing. And this week was the first time it's really reared its head this season. But in years past, it's been like – Four or five weeks where it's yeah. like these refs got to be these refs got to be betting on a game. Mm -hmm. These refs got to be rigging this game for this team. It's like let's take that out. Let's go ahead and get rid of that AJ. And I don't know why we haven't. And now I guess the coach just yeah. got to sit by and get screwed. That's right. I had a bunch of Browns fans tell me, "Welcome to our life." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a little get back for the Browns because they've been screwed for a long time. Yeah. I'm sure you have. Wow. Well. And I'm sorry about it, dog pound. But I do know you're supposed to walk out of Lucas Oil with an L yesterday to a scrappy Indianapolis Colts team. Right, AJ, right. don't look yeah. now. Gardner Minshew the second, okay? Gardner Minshew the first. Shimmy. He's shimmying. I love his little shimmy. shimmy. Josh Downs did that one as well. Yeah. I mean, that was Sweet, kind yeah. of his dance. He was kind of a shimmy team this week. I had no clue they were going to be able to be that successful against that Cleveland Browns defense. I don't know if Gardner Minshew is the blueprint for everybody going forward. He was running. Yeah. He was throwing. Right. Jonathan Taylor was back doing his thing. Yep. Colts look good. Should have got a dub. Instead, they get screwed on the way out. Yep, MPJ made some big plays. You mentioned Downs, JT, obviously Moss. Yeah, they put up, what, 450 yards on this vaunted uh, Browns defense? But that, that Minshew... And Minshew experience is well, a roll look. Well, well Minshew wild, Mania is running wild. Mm -hmm. Four picks for the defense, too, Indianapolis. Four of them. They were like hungry, hungry hippos out there just gobbling. Mm -hmm. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, he's not from the NFL world. No, no, no. But he's a multiple-time world champion. Won a gold medal in three-on-three -three in the Olympics representing the United States of America. Hell, yeah. That's not, that's not where she stopped winning. No. no. All she's gone on to do is go back to back with the Las Vegas Aces. Ladies and gentlemen, your WNBA champion, Kelsey Plum. Yay! Kelsey, how you doing? Man, I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for coming on the show. I assume the celebration has been pretty fantastic. I've only seen the beginning of it. Obviously, you are a electrifying human being in that locker room, I would assume. How has it been going back to back, and how have the last few days been for you? Oh, my goodness. Um, incredible. Um, you know, my drinking tolerance has been low because we've been in season. So I've um, been building that up over the last couple of days. But, no, it's been incredible. We're just celebrating. We got the parade tonight. Um, hey. So Las Vegas is coming out. They're going to be on the strip. Uh, there's going to be some high-level performers. Uh, I heard Usher. I'm not really sure. Oh. So that's 
a rumor, um, but super excited, super excited. So what do we, we got Usher going tonight is what it sounds like. Ooh. Feels like that was, if Usher's he's out got there. A he's got a residency out there, so yeah. Yeah, is Adele, Adele going to come out too? Maybe Adele oh, comes out? No way. Carrot Top? Yep. Yeah. Carrot Top? Yeah, maybe Chris Angel. Chris Angel. Yeah, Chris Angel. Angel. Chris Angel. Chris Angel. Holy shit, Whoa. tonight could be epic. Yeah. Can't wait to Pretty see sweet. the videos from that whole thing. Um, whenever you think about going back to back in any sport, especially professionally, you think about the whole season that is, and I assume you guys had to get lucky along the way, but whenever you have the mental toughness to be able to complete the task two times. Now, I'm not the closest follower of the WNBA, but I do know the Liberty made some moves in the off season to become who they could, and you guys solidified your roster to make a run. It was almost like who the NBA thought, mm -hmm. WNBA thought was gonna be in the championship at the end. Why do you think you guys beat the Liberty, and why do you think your team was mentally tough enough to go back Back to back, Kelsey. Oh man! I mean, going back to back is. Um, I'm really glad you said that. It's mentally brutal um, because you're going to get everybody's best shot every night, um, and we did. And I think that's what was able to kind of get us over the hump um, at the end of the season because we had been tested so much throughout the season. Um, we played a brutal schedule, um, and our team was just very resilient. We have a lot of very resilient individuals, very competitive individuals uh, that just kept. Wanted to get better. Um, and a lot of times when you win, uh, people are satisfied. And that's just not the case with our roster. We have a lot of people that are, you talked about hungry, hungry hippos. Uh, we got a lot of hungry, hungry hippos on this team. So, Respect. Uh, Respect. We just kind of chipped away and, uh, you know, won it as a team. And it's just, to be honest, it's one of the pinnacles of uh, just my individual career, but also collectively just to do it with that group of women. Yeah, it was awesome to watch. Good, AJ. It's something we talk about all the time, and it's cliche almost, is talking about culture and the culture of teams and everything. But when you watch you guys play, where everyone can, can think of you busting into the, the post-game presser with the boom box and everyone dancing around having fun. Like That looks like fun. It looks like, hey, there's a reason that they win because they seem to really get along and, and want to do this together. Like What is it like there being in the middle of it? And it seems like you guys are, are as thick as thieves, as they say. Hey, they do say. Yeah. Man, we uh, um, I was joking about how we've been uh, hurt, arrested, and sued all this year. But, you know, the reality <laughs> is we've been through it. And so, um, like you said, I think, you know, that culture um, in certain moments allows you to kind of dig deeper into the trenches. And when you know you have someone to the right and the left of you that is ready to go to war um, and do whatever it takes, you know, there, there's a lot of confidence in that. And so um, it's really hard to build great culture. Um, and, you know, Becky Hammond she's she's our leader she's our coach and that's all of us celebrating uh having a good time man we, we were just rolling in there deep they they were so fed up with us yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're allowed to you're the champions hey i mean you go yeah. back to back you can do whatever you want uh my question about mark davis could go in multiple different directions okay because mm -hmm. in the nfl this guy's awesome. I don't know if yeah. you've heard this. Mm -hmm. He is awesome. Every owner's meeting, he is doing something that is hysterical. Whether it's sitting down with a backpack on and a starter jacket and a backpack because the back seat rises up on top of his head and he looks like an eight-year-old sitting and talking to his mom while giving an answer that's very deep. Or walking past reporters telling him, I'm going to dinner. I don't have time. And just walking right through there. He was getting... After it on that, yeah, he was getting down with you guys. What is he like as an owner? And is this what all WNBA owners are like? And should we spend more time uh, talking about WNBA owners? Okay, Mark is incredible. So his investment in us, um, when it first started, I think people scratched their heads. And, uh, you know, you look at it now and you see it pay off tremendously. Um, but Mark, man, he's a competitor. He'll text me before games. Just win, baby. Just win. <laughs> yes. He's 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 yelling at me on the sideline. We're, we're running back and forth. He's a competitor. He's not satisfied. Um, and he's loved. He's loved by the people. So shout out to Mark. Um, yes. Great, great human being. Um, yeah, I mean, WNBA owners, I don't know what everyone's like. I've only played for Vegas. But uh, what I do know is, uh, man, I, I wouldn't want to be with anybody else in terms of uh, Mark Davis and his investment in us. And he's growing the league. And, yeah, I think you guys should pay a little bit more attention um, yes. to WNBA and WNBA owners because it's, it's coming up. It's coming up for sure. Hey, the finals, We that was an electrifying game. Sweet. Sabrina, Sabrina puked 
Mm -hmm. Mid-game, came back out. Kirsten Bell, I think, is on your team. She's uh, got one of the greatest fades in history. And then she's, I think she told, shut up, bitch, to somebody in slow motion. I was like, yes. Yeah. We got, I mean, it was, that game was real. Big comeback for you guys, too. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why the year with all the grit kind of paid off. It was an electrifying game. Like, mm -hmm. it was great. Is that how it is? All, how many games all season? Uh, we played 50 total. Jesus. How many months? Uh, a little bit less than six, so like five and a half. So we're playing pretty much every other day. How much time do you have right now until next season starts? I know we're at the parade. Let's not think about that. But how much time do you have until? Yeah, I have some time. I have some time to cheer on my Giants. Um, oh, my Giants. We don't start until mid-April. Hey, big win. This I got to tell you. I got to tell you guys, though, uh, we watch your show every morning in the training room. Uh, when it's on and and then you if when you guys talk about my Giants though I got to turn it off <laughs> <laughs> you guys stink I, I mean, big win over the commanders though big win over commanders Derek, Derek got hey, yeah, Derek, I mean he I mean hey we got a touchdown we're dancing do your dance do your dance let's talk about that how does it feel to get married and then he gets shipped four and a half hour flight away at the same exact time pretty much that's wild to think about it is wild it's brutal it's like ripping your heart out um but you know if anyone can handle it um you know, God, God really just, he, he, uh, it's the only way we kind of got through it with our faith. And, um, he's a soldier, Darren's a soldier. And, uh, you know, I'm grateful to be able to go out there and spend some time with him because we really haven't had much time together. Um, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles, you know, sports is a business at the end of the day. Um, it's a Cadillac problem. So we're going to make it work. Hell yeah. And the Cadillac was dancing. I mean, the Cadillac getting brought <laughs> over to the Giants is the reason why it's so surprising that they've stunk this year. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you add Darren Waller. Mm -hmm. right? And then somehow, hey, they got time, though. Hey, mm -hmm. if you start showing up, remember, championship mindsets are showing up yeah. around. You know what I mean? Maybe it'll make everybody better. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Kelsey, we all kind of saw the press conference you gave over the weekend, or maybe it was even last week after you guys won, about a uh, possible broken finger that you were playing with. Now, based on your response, I think it's pretty easy to assume that you were playing with a broken finger which is unbelievable especially when you look at what you did in the finals but how hard is it at the end of the year you know when you guys are dealing with injuries I know you guys weren't uh, fully healthy when you closed out in New York is that kind of every year was it like this last year or were there just a lot more uh, adversity you guys had to go through to go back to back I mean you guys know at that part of the season um, everybody's kind of hanging on by a thread uh, whatever it is, knees, ankles, shoulders, backs, mine happened to be fingers. So to me, it was a win. Um, it was on my left hand. Both of them are broken, but at the same time, like, what are you going to do? You know, you, you got to just suck it up and go win. Nobody cares. Um, but yeah, our team is definitely banged up. I know pretty much everyone else. There you go. That's it. Hey, That's you, it right there. Hey, how many are we putting up a day? How many are we putting up a day? That th you very rarely miss. How many are we putting up a day and how long have we been doing that? Oh. Uh oh. Oh no. She's frozen. She's gone forever. Oh no. Oh. Big smiles. Big oh, smiles. No. Oh my god, gone forever. We started complimenting. We asked yeah. about the workout routine. Oh. Hush hush. She's here in Toronto over there. Hey, you still there? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm still here. How many are we making a day to get to that point? How many are we making a day? And how long have we been doing that? We've been doing it since we were ten. We've been give or take, I would say three fifty to five hundred. A day. Okay, so I got my daughter. You know, she's uh, what? So ten? Uh, how old? She's five months right now, about yep. to be six. <laughs> when does she need to start putting these shots up? You know what I mean? Ooh, uh, she needs to start playing with the boys around seven or eight, and just just let her go, let her be free. Okay, that was a big part of like the Caitlin Clark story. Whenever she was playing, and they're like, "Hey, she played against the boys whenever she was growing up in Iowa because her dad couldn't find a league or whatever." I assume same thing for you and everybody that's in the WNBA. Pretty much. I mean, boys playing against boys growing up um, was super helpful for me just because, you know, the size, speed, physicality of it all. My dad, I played a ton of pickup with my dad. He used to make me walk home after we lost. Um, all good things, all character building things. But yeah, absolutely. Um, it definitely helps. We have practice guys we play against um, that you know, they're so funny. They go out there. They think they're going to make the G League if they if they uh, block our shot and stuff. So they, they take it really serious. You guys should talk <laughs> those dudes, I assume. Yeah, heavily. Absolutely. Absolutely. Your 100%. team chirps a lot? A lot of chirping out of your team? Um, No, I mean, I would say, I would say, 
you know, we'll, we'll respond, but I don't think that we necessarily start chirping, but I'm not going to lie. I get going sometimes. Um, if it hits me, if it hits me in the right way. Absolutely. Yeah. Spirit of competition. What do you want? Mm-hmm. Sue me. I was walking home as a kid. Okay. That's right. uh-huh. I've worked my ass off to get to this point. Ty has a question for you, Kelsey. Kelsey, you mentioned the league as a whole kind of on the come up right now. And uh, obviously, you know, like with travel and some of that other stuff, like you guys kind of get the shit end of the stick. And I, I think, you know, most of you would say like, hey, we're still not being paid what we kind of deserve to be paid. But do you think the WNBA and women's basketball is more popular than it's ever been? And do you see it being at a point or will it ever be at a point where like you and some of the bigger stars in the league don't have to go play overseas at the end of your season in the WNBA? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I absolutely see it on the rise, even from when I came into the league until now. uh, We're night and day where we were. Um, So that's a blessing. And And I do know that good things take time and, you know, we're a baby in terms of our league. We're 25 years in. You know, the NBA, where we were when the NBA was at 25 years, we're, we're ahead. So I think a lot of times we forget those things and just compare right now to there right now. Um, so it takes time, you know. Um, we weren't allowed to vote less than 100 years ago. So, you know, we're, 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 we're doing good. Um, I understand, though, that, you know, there's not a sense of complacency. We understand that, um, you know, even watching the NCAA this year with uh, Kaylin Clark and Angel, and Angel Reed and just the viewership, um, we know that it's growing. So is the game. So, you know, tuning in to things like this and and being able to talk to you guys is 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 a great way to continue to grow the game. People tune in and our games are fun, man. You get you get a chance to go in person too. Um, I promise you, it'll be a show. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's I went go. to the, ooh, the Fever here yeah. in Indiana. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fever have a great atmosphere, great environment. We're not good right now, but we're getting there. <laughs> on the we're, we are on the way. Every league. Every league needs, uh-huh. you know. Right. That's part of the whole competition. AJ has a question for you, Kelsey. Kelsey, uh, have you guys, uh, you already sitting there talking three-peat with your coach and, and the other gals? Like, what's, uh, where are you guys at? Where's your mindset? And how are the contracts? Is everybody coming back? Everybody's coming back. Oh. oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> everybody's coming back. You know, AJ, um, I mean, as a competitor, like, why do you play? You play to win. Duh. Uh, Duh. Uh, No joy, AJ. Stupid. What a dumb question. (laughs) (laughs) No. I mean, to be honest, I'm going to enjoy this one. I know how hard this is to do. Um, But, yeah, I mean, when we start training again and going after it, um, like I said, we got some hungry hippos. So, uh We'll, we'll be excited to make another run for it, for sure. Uh, is there going to be some sweet Kelsey Plum memes coming out of this parade this evening, you're thinking? What do you guys think? I don't know. You know, last year, Fire the cigar. some beer cans. <laughs> yeah. What, Fire what, some what, full beer yeah, cans. Yeah, We've seen your arm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot yeah. about you with that throw up in that T-shirt. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, I might need to launch it into, like, the Bellagio or something yeah. see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Bingo. Um, Bingo. That's yep. what I'm happy we're doing. <laughs> Everywhere. That, look at this. Everywhere. Cannon. Man, that was a good day. It was a good arm day. Oh. Hey, is that standard? That's standard throw for you? You know what's so funny, Pat? The only reason that happened was because they were like, hey, you here, use the T-shirt cannon. We want you to get it into the second deck. And I was like. I can. You're offended. Okay. And that's why I started launching it because I was like, oh, okay. You think I need the cannon for this? <laughs> Hey, I, I, listen, yeah. I don't know how many humans on earth yeah. are getting that. Yeah, T-shirt's not, not like the heaviest thing either. No. No. And it's not saying, to get, you know, like snowball type situation. Right. Mm-hmm. I That was very, I think, yeah, I mean, it took over the year. So let's talk. Let's go back to this, though. So you're maybe yeah. hocking a beer into the Bellagio. Happy yeah. we talk. Be sweet. Yep. What do we, what do, is it, is, do we go, you know, you guys are experienced paraders at this point. Yep. Are we going hard alcohol? Do we, what is the the drink of choice for the team here during this parade? Well, the parade is a longer parade than it was last year, so so I need to spread it out a little bit. Um, but Sorry. my teammates, I think, are drinking four locos, so oh, I don't know. No shit. Yes. 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 Kelsey. Kelsey just froze on that one. Yeah. Oh, they froze her. Just like a oh, four they, loco. they throttled her. They say, hey, listen, can't have you talking about four locos. Hey, you're back. Are you back? <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. Are you doing four loco tonight? Is that what we're expecting here for this parade? No, I'm saying my teammates might be doing four locos. I don't think I can hang. Um, no, but I might, yeah. I might be doing some tequila. What? What? <laughs> Whiskey? What? 
couple beers. What? <laughs> Four loco, maybe. What? Listen, Kelsey, take care of yourself. Congratulations. We can't wait to follow along with the parade. You guys are allowed to do whatever the hell you want. I will say, though, as a bunch of former pretty drunk whites here, that Four loco is not meant yeah, to be out in public. Do not do that. Don't. You're not supposed to be in front of cameras. <laughs> not in Vegas. Four loco. You're the best champ, ladies and gentlemen, Kelsey Plum. Yay! I was going to shoot, you know, just get a little. Hey, she's still on. She's still on. Kelsey. Yeah. Shoot a lefty. Yeah. Kelsey, what do I need to do better to make more shots? Let me see. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind, Kelsey. Sorry about it. Hey, have a night, Kelsey. Thank you. Thank you, Kelsey. Yes. Woo. Perfect. Yes. Still got it. Obviously. Uh, this show is the dumbest. That's because of you, Kelsey. That's for the aces. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. It's for the aces. Back-to-back -back champions. That's awesome. She's been mean before, too. What's that? When she had the uh, tiny All Star Game MVP trophy. Yes, a couple years ago, dude. And the, I mean, she she has a good time. Yeah, she does. Mm -hmm. She's worked her ass off to get to this point. I'm all. I can't wait to see what they do. Longer, longer parade tonight than last night or last year. So really? four loco. It's yeah. Four loco for the. Uh, get, Mark like Davis. get Mark Davis Throwback. for Loco right now. I heard oh. Nick Moraldo back there start dancing on his seat as soon as he heard for Loco. That's <laughs> yeah. that's what Quiet Nick used to become. <laughs> Old Quiet Saint Nick would become an absolute madman on Four Loco. Yeah. I guess it's only right for the parade. Kirsten Bell. Oh, with some Four Loco. Look out. Look out. Start swinging on people. <laughs> Look out. All right. That's Overreaction Monday on ESPN. Hell I'm yeah. sure everybody got dumber that watched this. I appreciate you. To the athletic readers. Thank you for everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys are the best people on earth. We're going to miss you. Dude, 50% is a lot. That's a high number. Yeah. That is a high number. How many people? Must be like 10 people. 3,000. Damn. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Cheers. Legit, though. That was a lot. That was, that was a wild thing to read about yourself. Holy shit. I can't, I can't really log into anything. I got a new phone. I can't log into my <laughs> yep, email. Or anything, yeah. So I try to log into that. Oh, shit. That, that is the worst. Yeah. Just went through For real. Well. Everything. I'm out of everything. I can't do anything anymore. If you're going to get a new phone, and this is like real advice, reset all of your passwords before you do. Because if you don't, you're going to have no idea what you're doing out there. Yeah, the whole save password on phone thing yeah. is kind of like what happened with phone numbers. Yeah. yeah. So back in the day, you had to memorize phone numbers. But mm -hmm. then phones started just having them in there, and you just had to search for it. So nobody really memorized phone numbers anymore. Same thing with passwords. Yes. And also, with how hard they make you make them. It's like, are you going to remember the exclamation point, semicolon, colon, Bingo. period at the end of that thing in the proper order? Or are you going to get it wrong three times and be locked out forever? It's yeah. an insane situation. That's why I haven't changed my phone. Yeah, that's it's smart. Exactly. honestly a smart thing to no do. No point in doing it. Don't ever do the suggested password, too, and just take that one. No. No, it's don't, dumb. Don't do it. Well, Apple. if you use the Apple. same password. Have you done that? Yeah. It's like VXY, oh, it's, capital yeah, Q, it's dash. Yeah, and then it's lower, terrible. underscore. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, mine is a if I was saving in the keychain, it'd be good. We'll have to think about it. Don't I, can say wrong. Time. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the new way for passwords is just do a sentence. Uh, so like a sentence oh. you will remember. That's and not that'll bad. that'll be like the ultimate password. What kind of sentence do you remember, Z? Quick, lazy thoughts. Oh, I can't tell you that. <laughs> so I, I do. That's what I... That's what my move is now. Okay. Yeah, my move is a full sentence. But that thing's taking up all the character. I mean, it's the whole... Because you're just waiting as you're signing in. Like, okay, I'm doing this. It's like weak... It's a weak one. Yeah, right. The AS is like, yeah. I could guess this. I'm like, how are you? And then mm, medium, oh, medium. Could, could and then work. when they finally get to good, it's like, all right, thank you, AI, for telling me that my 45-character password that has seven different capital letters and four different signs is good enough for your liking. Oh, now i got to do it again. Confirm. Okay, here we go. Let me make sure this at and exclamation point are in the right spot. It's wild. So you're saying you're fucked. Yeah, I made it through because I, I use the same iteration of the same two passwords for everything. So those three guesses. Oh, uh, that's going to get got so quick. Yeah, you're done. No, hey, no, con no, man, no. what can I do? My problem, con, I'm trying to get into anything and it sends a code or a number to yeah. my other, another device. But guess what? These devices don't exist and we don't have them anymore. <laughs> send yeah. them to your email. I can't. <laughs> send them to your email. Yeah, you're going to yeah, get great. What? You it doesn't matter. You still, I click the number and it says, here we go. We sent another number to, the, to this iPad and this one. Well, he was using his had. Ohio State email, but they just shut it down on him the other Your way. Your college yeah. email was the one you signed up for everything on? Yeah, hawk.83 at osu.edu. I used that for like 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. Why did Ohio State shut that down? You're the current president of Ohio. I, 
I think once I turn like 35, like, all right, pal, you can't use this anymore. <laughs> You've been gone a while. But they've been sending confirmation emails oh, to that email. Not... No, not to that. No, it's not even email. It's to different devices. So this, like, this yeah. iPad, yes. we've had a bunch of different devices over the years that get all run together, and I can't find the devices those codes are going to. Hey, this is so, Cadillac problem. It's actually kind of nice. Yeah, it is Cadillac that. problem. It's kind of nice. Yeah. I just say, all right, cool. I don't do that anymore. Yeah, so I just won't get a new phone. Yeah, no point. We'd like to reiterate the fact, though, we still believe that Kelsey Plum and the girls should not be drinking Four loco. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely Do not. At the Maybe beginning of this parade. Maybe a couple, though, just to get them going. Not at the, Oh, at the beginning, you're saying? Yeah, because think about it. They've been having fun for a little while. They need a little boost. Hey, let's, let's, let's go Has pick That's quite one? a jump start into having been boozing all. See, you heard her say, like, my tolerance is not that great. And then some of the girls are drinking Four loco. It's like, whoa, that's, that's, that, that combination. Uh that, if I was to, if I was to do the four loco right now, I have no idea what that would do to my. But have you had a new one? Do we know it's is not it? real anymore. Yeah, it's not yeah, real. No, I, like I used 7%. to drink the new ones in college, and if you drank two of them, you were gone. So I okay, can't so imagine still had the same juice. what the old ones were like. He's 165 pounds. True. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. Yeah, his school yeah. put Adolf Hitler on. Like 130. Oh, no. well, like to drink though. To be fair, too, Michigan State Hitler was averaging 15 and 10 for Izzo for years. Oh, he's a Spartan. <laughs> yeah, Don't bring Izzo into this. Before he went over to Germany, he actually. Actually, no. was uh, one of the best post moves that Michigan State East Lansing's People ever seen. People are going to get so mad that you even said that, but mm -hmm. they should actually be mad at Michigan State <laughs> putting <laughs> Adolf Hitler on their jumbo. Did you see this, AJ? Yeah, w was it an answer to a trivia question? Yeah, That's what country it? was – so it came after – like, here's the – I watched – never the, an option. There's yeah, never an option for a, a Jumbotron. Nope. But yeah, yeah. Agreed, yeah. In life as a whole, people Have, don't even name their kids Adolf anymore. Like, it's – you know what I mean? Like, that is – so it was like, how many colors are in a rainbow? And then they said, what color is this guy from like Star Trek shirt? Okay. It was green. Mm -hmm. And then what country was Adolf Hitler born in? That was the next one. That That's the line of the trivia huh. questions that were running in on the Jumbotron before the game. That's, I saw the video. How long was the video? The YouTube video? It was, was like, it like think, three I, hours? Yeah, I think there's 50. I don't know. It, it was 40 some questions in, I think, is oh, where geez. it was. My God. But it's like. Immediately upon it happening, Michigan State's like, uh, what do we always do? Uh, blame somebody else. Uh, <laughs> third, party. Yep. third party. Third party. Boom, 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 boom. It's like, so nobody just, nobody nobody looked at the video before no one chance. up on your Jumbotron oh, in front of. Yeah. How many people go out there? A lot. A couple hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Two to 3,000 people watching yeah. East Spartans mm -hmm. games this year? Yeah, or yeah, what is yeah. the, just what about. is. Oh, uh, I can't. I couldn't even guess. Oh no, yeah, nobody's going. Know. So maybe that's what they said. Yeah, fuck. Throw it we up could put Hitler league. up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody would even know. Nobody's coming. That game was sold out, though. I know that. Yeah, Michigan game. Uh, Michael Cole took a screenshot earlier today of you, Foxy, and just want to let you know. Oh, no. oh makes sense what? now. What's no. all that all about? Oh, no. You tell me. Foxy. You're going to say you Look were explaining. Look at disgusted. Yeah, you were going to say you were explaining <laughs> lion stuff because I think you were saying, I'm not worried. Yeah, that's, that's what I was saying. Uh, but with everything that happened with Michigan State this weekend, huh? Nice. It's classic What MSU. a dumpster fire, man. Everything, it's just week after week after week. And then guess what? We lose by. 49 points. Yeah, the Harbaugh's took a big steamy poop on your chest this weekend. Yeah, yeah. they did. Yeah, the Harbaugh's decided that Foxy's life was not supposed to be a happy one. But <sighs> Good coaches. Foxy, I will say, after meeting some Michigan State people, now, a large majority of Michigan State people were trying to get us canceled, me canceled, before we even go on here, mm -hmm. because there was a doctor at your school yeah. that I did not hire, but certainly can never say the name again, because why would you remind people right. that somebody in a very powerful position might be one of the most disgusting dirtbags in the history yeah. of society oh, yeah. in modern history here? Right. Why would you want to keep that maybe like, hey, let's remember terrible people in very powerful places. I've met some more Michigan State alum. Mm -hmm. Feels like good people. They are really? good people. Genuinely, genuinely. You met his, did yes. you meet his family, yeah. his friends? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good people. Good yeah. people, yeah. good school. They're just fucking up a lot of things right now. Yeah, but at some point, you know, that would have to go back the other way. Like, you would have to stop being embarrassing, like, every week. Right. You know, mm -hmm. for us not to just say, oh, Michigan State is a shitty school <laughs> with yeah. shitty people running it. Yeah. It's hard not to say that. that hey, that's you know what's going to happen? Basketball is going to start. Tom Izzo's got a great team this year, so then we're going to go Michigan State. Good place. January, February, January. Izzo, Izzo loses. Oh, Izzo. Wins the title this year. Mm -hmm. Gonna need it.
I'll tell you what, winning cures everything. I don't know about Hitler on the Jumbotron. No. Yeah, that's tough. You know, I, I don't know about that one. Uh, we have some games we have not chatted about, and we have overreactions from around the internet. We have a massive third hour in store. Hell yeah. Should we do phone calls as well on this overreaction Monday? Hmm. Uh, that's interesting. That's a thought. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> maybe tomorrow. All right, maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Well, what a decision there. If anything, yeah. it may, maybe Wednesday. Tomorrow's a huge day. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Yeah, and <clears throat> Thursday, definitely can't do it then either. Yeah, because we got football. Yeah. yeah and then Friday, and, and and Friday we're in Utah. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe Wednesday. Maybe next week? Maybe check back in next week. All right, next Wednesday. Okay. okay. Oh, All I right. think we got a big next Wednesday, though. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. JJ. Yeah, people. Well, not only JJ, we're, we're getting people scheduled out in advance for these Wednesdays. Yeah. People that aren't necessarily in the football world. It's like, oh. what day is good for people that aren't football world? Wednesday. Let's do Wednesday. And then now it's just like. Wacky yeah. Wednesday. Yeah, so no phone calls then. So the Wednesday after Thanksgiving. Boom. Sign yeah. Maybe delivery. the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Okay. Well, there you go. Okay. Because we won't be able to do We should do phone calls today. one 833 Monday? Doesn't feel like there's any time in sight to do them. On a so Monday. we got to at least act like what we paid for it to get done. To have these, do you it's remember? an option. Oh, yeah. It's an option. Uh-huh. All right. one 833 4 Can't wait to hear some overreactions. Can't wait to read some overreactions. And can't wait to prognosticate about tonight's Niners and Vikings Ooh. matchup, which has become a seven-point Spread. Yes, it has. Niners favored by seven on the road in Minnesota. That's a big one. Yeah. Huge. That's yeah. a big one. Christian McCaffrey playing. Mm hmm. Debo not. Uh -huh. Trent Williams not. Yikes. Uh -huh. They still got Ayuk. Yeah. Yep. And he fed him last week when everyone else went out. They still got George Kittle. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Tight. And he's. Is everyone, everyone on defense healthy? They so. still yeah. got the Niners' defense. I so. Also, Ronnie oh. Bell that did score earlier in the year when uh, I think it was Ayuk was out. Who? Ronnie Bell. He's their, like, number three, number four wide receiver. Him and Juwan. He's Jones. just been waiting on an opportunity. Big yeah. threat. But the Vikings are saying, we got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we got, got him. him. Boom. Because they got Daniil Hunter. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they're out Trent Williams. Yep. Maybe Brock Purdy doesn't have a comfortable night. Eight's Maybe he's not able to get into a rhythm. Uh -oh. Maybe their run game gets disrupted. Maybe the Vikings make this thing a mush and a seven-point spread's too much. We'll make our picks later. We'll take some phone calls. We'll go around the internet, and we'll talk about the games that we haven't talked about enough, like the Atlanta Falcons getting a massive win over the box. Yeah. With Young Way Koo. Young Way Koo. Kicking a walk-off game winner where he does a Steph Curry turnaround midway through. Mm -hmm. Absolute dog. dog. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. Take five. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, a man with the dog mentality, Paisano, Coach Cereal. You're fucking awesome, dude. Did you ever feel any pressure that you're gonna have to change and adapt to being a head coach and speaking in the same bullshit ways that every other head coach talks in? Some of the best advice I got was be yourself because if you're not yourself, everyone's gonna see through it. The messaging is the same. You're just doing it in your own way. And I think that's the most important part. And being authentic, you're 100% right. As you were saying, if I wasn't me, everybody who would tell the fucking locker room immediately gonna be like, well, this guy, he's a stooge. There's another coach that wants to talk to you. Uh, coach Sirianni, your question for Coach Sirianni. I feel like I know you just as good as I know myself. What is it about Jalen, you think, from your point of view, last year to this year, that is like cementing him as a guy that people are talking about, this motherfucker might win the MVP? Well, I know which one thing you want me to say. He's a dog. Yeah! yeah. Yeah. yeah! He's a dog! Yeah! Fucking Why? dog! Do you maybe want to play best two out of three, rock, paper, scissors, coach first coach? You're there forever, huh? Like, that's the, you have to have that mindset as the head coach? Like, do you feel like you're the perfect head coach for the Philadelphia Eagles? Because it feels like the team <laughs> is the perfect representative of the city of Philadelphia. And I might be wrong, I'm from Pittsburgh, so the Johns are going to judge me for that. I love the passion of the city and how much they care about football because I care about football. I, I love football. I don't have a lot of hobbies. My biggest hobby is, is football. Rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. shoot. Oh, yes. you scissors. Scissors. <laughs> scissors. Yes, yeah, we're the same person. Okay. We, we both threw, both through scissors. Dog mentality really is to be in the moment that you're in now and not worry about what happened in the past, not worry about what's going to happen in the future. It's all about our process and about being here today to make sure we're going about to go one and zero this week. That's it. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot.
Ooh. Oh, yeah. rough. I definitely got Jason Kelsey the, the kegs of beer. I was just trying to sweeten the deal of, of him coming back. As long as I'm the football coach here, I want him here. So I, I'm, I'm ready to give as many kegs of beer to him next year and the year after that and the year after that because that guy is a dog. Rock, rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. shoot. Amen. We are getting our ass kicked in this preseason <laughs> game. Uh, Belichick is taking it to us. <laughs> it's halftime, and we are getting booed like you've never been. I, I, I was like, paper, rock, paper, scissors, scissors shoot, shoot. Oh! oh, I think you might have hey, rock hey, there, but hey. You got no <laughs> idea what I'm going to do because you're like, uh, there's no way he's throwing scissors again. Come on, baby. I got a damn flower thrown at me, right? Oh, a yeah. a, a flower remember. chucked down. We lost to the Chargers. Boom, flower chucked down. Hey, how's your little manure settling in? <laughs> That's literally what that John said as they were throwing that John at you. They were like, how's the manure and how's the flowers coming, coach? Hey, this is game seven here. Rock, <laughs> rock, paper, paper. Scissors. Scissors. Shoot. shoot. Oh. Scissors again. He threw scissors again, so did I. <laughs> Rock, Rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. shoot. Oh! oh. You guys are the same! Come on, hey, this is for 15 Rock, or 10. Paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. shoot. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> dog mentality. I got dog mentality, coach. What can I tell you? <laughs> hey, we're off to something big. Hey, we're not we are up to something. This is the coolest moment of the history of my existence. I think people are gonna be startled. It's a joke, and I can't thank everybody enough, honestly. I'm up to something. <laughs> oh! This is a big time day. Let's go. Not only are we going back to Plum to do something cool, but today is the day that our heater horse has arrived for the Super Bowl. <laughs> You know, whenever you get a chance to give back to where you're from, especially a place that helped create me and mold me, I'm very, very lucky to do it. I'm lucky to be from here, and it seems like the only smart thing to do would be give back. Mm -hmm. What's doing, Monster? Huh? It stinks here, huh? What's up, Kenny Wood, dude? Kenny Wood is named after Kenny's Woods. A man named Kenny owned the hill in the woody area. They turned it into an amusement park, which is a Yinzer stable. Shots out this area. I think life can be much simpler whenever you just take care of your people, enjoy your life, and do your thing, and that's all we're trying to do. You know, growing old, slowly dying. How about you? How's everybody? <laughs> I'm gonna give a full lead up to how I got to where I'm at. I think I'm very lucky to be from here. If you're a kid that has walked through these halls, you understand something that not a lot of people do. I think Plum is a much different place than everywhere else. And there's Nick up there. Go look at Nick, how pissed off he is. This past summer, I was driving through here because I was here for an event, and Angelo Bolino, a little blonde haired kid, was kicking on the same field that I used to kick on as a child. And he had like two balls and a holder. And I was watching him kick, and then he would go shag for himself, and he would come back and kick. And the easy question is, if he had 10 balls, how much better could Angelo Bolino be? If I would have been able to have 10 balls, 15 balls, new cleats, new everything, chances to go to camps with my teammates and everything, what could have happened? So I said to myself, literally after meeting with Angelo, great season, by the way, dude. I said, if I ever get a chance, I'm going to try to take care of the potential humans and kids that were in my exact position in club. I'm gonna give 200,000 to the Plum Area Soccer. I'm gonna give 150,000 to the PMFA Youth Football. I'm gonna give 100,000 to the Baseball Youth. I'm gonna give 100,000 to the Lacrosse. And then we're gonna have two million in this fund that'll just start. And hopefully it'll only go on from there. Sweet the stuff for sports. Just anything to make everybody's, you know, the teams and the players' lives easier, better. Trying to streamline the entire process of taking care of the athletes of Plum High School is uh, kind of what it's all about. Wow, dude, that was cool. All right, Narati, like an indie. You're gonna have a lot of people that have never accomplished anything in their life tell you that what you're thinking about doing isn't possible. Just because they don't think they could accomplish it doesn't mean anything to you. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Hey, we're all Mustangs here. Let's go. Just want to do what's yeah. right, but turned around and got dropped. Great sportsmanship. Into the cover, he has sportsmanship, but Mia Hill just picked up her first win ever in NXT. Here we 
Why? Let's go! This show sticks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice, could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Overreaction Monday, October 23rd, 2023. Hour three of this program starts now. Football! It's happening this evening as the Niners will take on the Vikings. That guy's been a champion at, uh, were you a high school champ? I was not, no. That was tough. Oh, wow. Oh, no. This man. guy's team a lot of good, A lot of good football in Ohio, man. A lot of good football. Yeah, but it would have been cool if I could have said right there, you know, this guy's been a champion at every single level of football that he's ever played. Yeah, so cool. In youth football, this dude's face used to run through other kids' faces at a rate that nobody had seen, even in the state of Ohio, won a championship. Mm -hmm. Junior high, middle school, whatever you want to call it, this guy won everything. He was playing every position, too. Mm -hmm. He was the quarterback, and he'd hand the ball off to himself. He was the running back. Then he'd punt and play linebacker. Then when he got to high school, they got smacked in the mouth by every other team in high school. They weren't able to get a win. But he goes to college, national champion freshman year. He goes to the NFL, Super Bowl champion with the Green Bay Packers. He would continue his career as the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, but never winning in high school. Uh, What a loser. Ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hawk. Hawk, great to see you, pal. Good to see you. We won some. We won plenty of games. We just never won at all. Uh, well, well, I will tell you. Everybody saw that uh, that Pittsburgh ref and heard that Pittsburgh oh, ref this weekend. Yeah, oh yeah, sweet. Our my high school football career ended yeah. at the school that that guy was doing the game. And for those that didn't see, this is Pittsburgh. And we talk about Yinzers, I think, on this show probably more than any show that's considered international or national uh, yeah. in the history. You know? Most people from Pittsburgh, whenever they get out of Pittsburgh and they get into any platform type career, they are told that they have to change the way they speak because it's disgusting. So a lot of people have no idea about the Pittsburgh accent. Mm-hmm. You hear the New York accent, you hear the Boston accent, you hear the Southern accent, right. you hear the uh, Canada and Michigan and Minnesota mm-hmm. accent. Not a lot of people even knew that Pittsburghers had a real accent because every Pittsburgh that gets out, they get told to change their voice. So whenever I started speaking how my father spoke and how Tone's father spoke and how definitely Nick's father spoke Mm -hmm. and CFO Phil definitely father spoke and how Pittsburghers speak, there's a lot of people that A, didn't know about Yinzers and B, did not like it. And to that I said... Oh, shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> now, with that being said, if you look for it, it's the greatest accent out there. And a ref in high school football in Pittsburgh proved it once again. He needs to be in the NFL stat. Run the clip, Foxy. Five-yard penalty, still first down. All right. Defense, number six, 15-yard penalty, the result, first down. Okay. <laughs> Face mask, defense. That penalty be assessed on the kickoff. The extra point is good. Okay. Still first down. All right. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Result of the play will be a first down. All right. We play first down. 15 yards from the end of the run. And? First down. Okay. Personal foul. Defense, number 58. 15 yards from the end of the run. And? Result, first down. Right. Five yard penalty. Still first down. All right. We play first time. <laughs> this guy's oh. the best. We appreciate oh. him. That school at the bottom, Upper St. Clair, beat us by like 50 in the playoffs my last game. Sean Lee was the running back. Sean Jeez. Lee was the running back and the Jeez. kicker and Jeez. also the linebacker, linebacker, obviously. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, Connor Lee, his older brother, who went on to kick a pit, he was also kicker, linebacker, running back for them at a the time. They're pretty good. They're a powerhouse. Their school is a college campus. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. But that guy needs to be in the NFL, AJ. Mm-hmm. I don't know if all those calls are accurate, but whenever he was describing them, I just knew he got it right. You know, I knew he got it right. Well, and his not not only did he get it right, his audio was pristine and he was very confident yeah, in what he cool. was doing. That's all we care about. You say all the time, hey, when you're on the mic, like you're representing for football, like take control of that situation. And we we just saw a master class of how to do that. I didn't even think about it. that's maybe the greatest representation of football in the history. Yeah. Probably. That guy. Wow. Opinion, probably. Send that to the aliens. Yeah. All right. There's 11 yeah. on one yeah. side, 11 on the other side. Then there's refs. <laughs> this is what a standard ref yeah. is. But a host of a show called Hammer Don has to love everything about that. I I don't get 
like you guys watch like videos a hundred times over and over and over. That does I don't do that a ton. I watched that thing maybe three hundred times this week. And I it never got old to me one time. That's my hero. That's why who I want to be my not my father, okay? But I'd like him to be my uncle. Yeah. Maybe something sure. like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nobody's Coach Diggs. No, no. Uh, yeah. yeah. Coach Top guy. Tier. I okay. would assume that guy's Italian too, by the way. So oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking <laughs> yeah. that guy's rather Coach Italian. might have played in him in a bocce league somewhere, I would assume. I bet you they know each other. They're on the same email chain or something, but Just that guy's off. Awesome. Look up Pittsburghies in news clips too, if you want to follow up. There's a guy that was cleaning up a little fire. Yeah, Barry Pangor. Yeah, he said if this was guys, <laughs> Pittsburgh's That's still the best donor. I mean, it's All just right. it never ends. If you were to go to Pittsburgh, though, and chat with the people, they would sound exactly like that. And know that although they are a tough crew, okay, they are a tough group, if you approach them with respect, they'll do the same for you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Cross them once, though, fucking over. Something to remember. Love that. They'll put you down, which I absolutely <laughs> love that guy. Let's talk about a couple games that we haven't chatted about around the NFL. AJ, Green Bay Packers, fascinating situation, okay? Could have won, man. Could have won. Yep. Could have won. And that is a storyline, obviously, for a lot of teams that end up being bad at the end of the year. There's a lot of games that they could have won. They are not. Everybody's saying, coming off a of bye week, Jordan Love should have looked much better against a defense that was potentially gettable. Now they're saying they're in the middle of a regression. Is it Matt LaFleur? Is it Jordan Love? Is all hell breaking loose? What are your thoughts, AJ, on the team that you're the all-time leading tackler for? And anytime you're losing to this Broncos team, even though Sean Payton's Ooh. the coach and Russell Wilson is the quarterback, which are two big names, very synonymous with success. This year, they've been a dumpster fire, and they get a win over the Packers, and everybody's saying the Packers look worse now than they did a few weeks ago. Yeah, not a great showing for the Packers coming off a of bye. Like, sometimes this can happen. Either you come off a of bye and you're on fire and you look great, or you tend to, to look sluggish and not really make plays, and their offense was like that the majority of this game. Now, obviously, came back, had a chance to win this one. Okay, what's your thoughts on this? What do you think happened here? I know Sertain says it's a pick. Well, two feet down before the other person. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, that's what the rules are. You know, number two came down with both his feet before Dobbs. They got it. That makes it his catch instead of the offensive players here. I think Gene Steratore actually said that. So yeah. – yeah, something it's, you learn quick, though. When it's a tie, it's going to go to the offense every time. I you hear what Gene said, though? He said because both feet were done. Yeah, yeah that's, that's legit. Hell and cell I'm, I'm, telling you, I'm telling you right now what was the actual explanation. Yeah. That, that's not me making that up. Yeah, never heard of that. So I actually thought you were making that up. No, I think it was actually <laughs> yeah, described. I believe he said that. It was. It was yeah. described that yeah. way. And now, granted, AI right now. Okay, and we've heard oh my God. that a story that you guys broke earlier well, is I potentially digitally no, 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 no. Potentially. We didn't break that. Potentially. Owner Garage got you? Well, um, I interesting. Guess, I yeah. guess you could say yeah, that. Yeah, you could say a boner garage. A boner garage might have got us. Hey, it is something I want to ask AJ about from this game, though. Kareem Jackson, a uh, guy who played, you know, been oh, playing yes. for long, I think 13, 14 years. Knocked the shit out of a tight end. I think it was a clean football mm. play, violent, obviously. And I think Gene also said they look at every play in the vacuum and his history had nothing to do with the ejection. Mm. What's your thoughts on uh, Kareem Jackson, his play, and his, you know, they find him, I think, what, four or five weeks in a row now? Yeah, I mean, he's going to get fined a billion dollars for this one because of his past history. But, no, like he, he didn't make – contact with his it wasn't helmet to helmet it was defenseless receiver right the yeah. receiver didn't have time to defend himself so watch this like one it hit him two, right three. almost i mean shoulder, he to, shoulder. Shoulder, to, shoulder to chin like honestly it could have been way worse and i'm sure yeah. that's what jackson would tell him hey i actually tried to not hit him with my head when we know if this was 10 15 years ago this would be on all the highlight clips and you wouldn't get kicked out of the game. And I think you said he's going to get fined a bazillion dollars. He's a repeat offender. This yep. is the fifth oh, week that he is getting fined. But there's, you know, let's go back. You shouldn't get thrown out. You should not get thrown out for that. I assume that they they were trying to take, like, his past his past situations, and that's the reason he got thrown out. So you're telling me no. someone with no, with no fines anything is getting thrown out for that hit right there? They said that they do not think that's about easy, yeah. any of the previous stuff whenever they're deciding on this particular yeah. ejection, allegedly. But before games, the other team is saying, hey, remember Jackson, he flies around a lot. Let's protect the guys out there, giving a little bit of a heads up on things that they've picked up through film that they think they can gain an advantage of and the refs aren't calling or whatever. Let's go back to a couple of the hits that have got him fined for five straight weeks. Here's against the Raiders. Guy's going down dead. 
poor guy. <laughs> so like he was going down though. Yeah, he's, going, he's sliding down. And the question is always like, what do you want Kareem Jackson to do? Because he is going down, but Kareem Jackson's oh. supposed to lower yeah. where he's hitting. So if he's going to lower the strike zone and old buddy drops into there at the same time, he's 20, with a shoulder too. Yeah. Kareem does a great job of using his shoulder. Yeah, it's like twenty miles an hour. This stuff's happening pretty quick. It's like, yeah, he is laying wood on these folks, which is not as normal as it was at one time. Mm -hmm. But I think he has an excuse for yeah. most of these things, especially that one. Yeah, you go, you're going across the middle of the field. And as a safety, a linebacker, whatever, like you want, you know, obviously you don't want to get fined, you don't want to get kicked out of games, but those are the type of plays, at least when we're playing, you want to put on film. So you know, like you said, in those offensive meet rooms, hey, 22 is back there, get your ass down. Hey, you're looking at your quarterback, don't throw any hospital balls across the middle. I think that's a fair one as well. The one this week was definitely fair. This one was bang, bang, but it's a receiver. Like, what's, what's defenseless? You know, you got the ball, you're looking right at me. Now, there is one that he has had on this particular run that we'd all say, well, that's probably going to be something here. Yeah. And this is against the Commanders and Thomas. And the, I mean, wait till you see the back yeah. view here. Head, <laughs> shoulders. Launches. Jump. Yeah. Teeth and nose. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, he, uh, he propelled himself. I, I, understand. I understand this one a little bit. Yeah. He's kind of launching, <laughs> launching himself through. Yeah. Through him, but yeah, like I get it. But uh, yeah, I thought the one he got thrown out for, he should not have been ejected. No okay, uh, for that one, let's a little clarification too. Uh -huh. Like certainly going to get it for that, but six foot six. That's right. Love Thomas, six, six, six foot six, six. two sixty. Yeah. So he is going up to hit him regardless. He ends up going directly at his skull. That's going to be a penalty. If he was kicked out for that one. I think people would be much more understanding mm -hmm. than potentially the one that just happened yesterday. Kareem also, his rookie year was 2010. Like, he didn't come up tackling like the rest of these guys probably in the league did now. He came up tackling like... Like, like what? Like, like, oh, yeah. like when we play football. Yeah, yeah old football. He's like, an old school guy. You're talking about you got... Jacked up! Yes, oh, bingo. Yeah. Those days? Yeah. AJ was probably written all over. Oh, oh yeah. my God. I didn't even think about how much that particular dome piece has probably been showcased on You Got Jacked Up. Uh, I don't think so, but I always would love watching safeties just annihilate people. And that's what I always talk to. Like, I'd ask DB, I'd ask anybody, like, how do you play safety now? Because your job is to – you're coming from a distance trying to dislodge the ball yeah. from a receiver or a tight end, and now, like, your target area is so small. And I, I understand whatever. I'm not going to sit here and complain about it. No, nah, it's safe but, yeah, first. We it, get it. It's just a tough – it's a very tough thing to do. And I think safeties have it harder than anybody. Yeah, it's damn near impossible. Like, this, the last one you show, yeah, you get that one. But it's impossible. It's bang, bang. And you are trying to dislodge the ball. Like, you're trying to separate the receiver from the ball. And the receivers, obviously, you know, usually when they catch it, they have a step, maybe two. The one with the Green Bay tight end, he had three feet before he got hit. It's tough. It's damn near impossible. I get the, the safety part of it, but Derwin when James has been caught with a bunch. Oh, yeah. um, like you, it, when you get these guys, okay, there's not okay. too many safeties who play 14 years. It's hard to change when you're an instinctive player. And also, not players. everybody has a hammer. Like not everybody Correct. hits hard. Like mm -hmm. that's a that's a that's a benefit that Kareem Jackson has. That's mm -hmm. a talent. That's a skill. I think that's what people think whenever they're watching along. Like, well, not everybody has to hit that way, so he needs to learn. And it's egregious and everything. It's like. That's very quick. He led with his shoulder, and he is one of the – That's football. I don't know how many people are left in the NFL. That, that sure. is a talent of his. He oh, yeah. is. Uh -huh. So he's got to go lower, though? Is that all he has to do is just lower his – lower where he hit him, and it's he's still – But that guy's guy that, falling. I honestly don't think it matters. I think they're going to flag him regardless yeah. just because what of how violent – Yeah, the, it's so just too much, but they're not going to Can you take, not hit him, though? Uh, that hard, honestly, I know. I think they're going to flag it every time. It is interesting because anytime there's a big hit, we're all like expecting a flag. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, here's a question: What if he what if he went low and chopped his legs out and tore his ACL? Well, that remember because that would be way worse. I think that was the big conversation. Whenever these rules were changed to the strike zone, you had like a lot of tight ends and Bronx, bigger wide Bronx. receivers be like, "I would much rather them hitting me in the face than." Tearing my ACL yeah. with mm -hmm. these low shots. So then they made the strike zone. So then the strike zone was created where it's like middle of thigh to chin. That is where you need to hit them at 22 miles an hour with people moving, like just, just oh, yeah. like this, potentially jumping and sometimes Racing. crouching down. Mm -hmm. It's like that's a wild thing. Now, how good guys have adapted, I think we're all very impressed mm -hmm. by. Mm -hmm. You know, because I thought that was going to be a very difficult thing, especially in the first couple of years of the transition where all the old Meatheads were still playing football exactly how they learned how to play football, which is right here to where? To where the Adam's apple? Is that right? 
What do you mean? What do you mean? Strike, strike, your strike, forehead. Strike zone is? No, your forehead. Yeah, the right there. Hey, that right there right there. No, right. Just, you know, you, that was an old technique, head and hands. It's, same time, boom. Yeah, but where are you aiming that? Where are you aiming that dome piece at for? Depends how tall the guy is. Probably right in their chest. Don't want to get anywhere near the head or neck or chin. Yeah, oh, see, yeah, he's sure. lying well, right there. Yeah. He was literally aiming for the Adam's apple. He told us that. Uh, we've heard many other people <laughs> say that as well. Mm -hmm. Right under their chin is what football coaches actually used to say whenever you're talking about hitting people. So we thought the transition was going to be difficult. This next generation that started with USA football and heads up football and everything in high school and all these tackling camps, they really have adapted pretty well now that we're sitting seven, eight yeah. years later. But every once in a while, there's going to be an old school guy that's going to come through the ranks. Uh, ranks. And I'm not saying Kareem Jackson because he is an old school guy. I'm saying there's still going to be guys that are thumpers and there's going to be guys that are going to figure out how to hit in the strike zone, how to do it full speed, and how to absolutely Absolutely slaughter people. Like that is gonna that's gonna be the next generation of this whole thing. So I hope it isn't just big hits. Like because big hits can come anywhere. Yes. Body blows. What about can running back though? Out. How many running backs have been called this year when they lower their heads straight down and go at you, which I don't think should ever be a penalty, but I know it technically is if they lower their head. Yeah, and yeah, I don't they, know how often it gets it. called. Rarely. Much, yeah. It wasn't a point of emphasis this year. It was a point of emphasis last year, so mm -hmm. it got called last year, but it's not a point of emphasis. Anymore. But Kareem Jackson, hey, we want to let you know. We appreciate you flying around, yeah. and we don't think he's a cheap shot artist. No, no. There's no, people saying they think he's shot. like a cheap shot guy. It's like, nope. come on. I don't think – I think he just plays his ass off. Yeah. Like, I, I think he, he plays his ass off, and that Thomas one's tough to defend. But <laughs> Oh, was an, yeah, but no. was an aggregator giving you know. an opinion? What's that? Was an aggregator giving an opinion? The internet gives their opinion, <laughs> but it was just a narrative that was being built, I think, or trying to be built. And it's like, hey, this is happening real fast, and he's a thumper. Like, And there's going to be more of those. Yeah. Like, as the years continue to evolve and people continue to work this, we can't villainize the thumpers. Like, the thumpers are a weapon that the NFL has. So and, it's, down. and it's exciting. It's exciting as hell. Obviously, college has their problems we saw with the Iowa game, but isn't that uh, maybe a rule that you think they do right where there's the targeting call, but they actually review it and we'll pick that flag up or they'll bring the player back like isn't that something that maybe should get looked at if that continues how did i wasn't watching that game live i only watched it afterwards how did it without the commercials it's a great way to watch yeah this ai thing's awesome mm -hmm. game changer get to watch these games without it's, yeah. it's really good don't miss a thing how did that whole thing go did they they threw a flag there yeah he got the, ejected like immediately uh -huh. so they didn't do like a full sit down talk let's they watch this like thing it. up top not really. It, yeah, no. was, I mean, and they they did, but there, like there was there really wasn't much communicate. Like good. he was, they tossed his ass, and there was really no. He was like, surprised too, though. Yeah. He was complaining. He was he didn't but, think he was getting booted. So how how does that work? What's the process? Yeah, there has to be a third what's party. The, yeah, what's a what is an offense that what. It, what do you have to do to get thrown out, I guess, and not just get a 15-yarder? Yeah, because if there's another hit like that later in the game, by the precedent that they have set, they're going to have to eject that person, too? Is there not like a... Uh, Especially if they're not taking well, into account. There has to be a checks and balances in there somewhere Hamil for ejections. Yeah, Hamilton had one in uh, London. Um, yeah, he did. Titans, and it was, I didn't think it was that bad either, like to the point where you get kicked out. And mm -hmm. in college, I do like that they review it. I do. I always hate, almost always hate the ejection part of it. I feel like it's, it's part of football, unless a guy is just... Drop it. I think the most important emphasis should be when a player drops his crown and leaves with the crown. Is because we've seen intent. You know, yeah, intent. we've seen what happens. Well, those are that compression fractures. I talked to yeah. the team doctors in Green Bay. Like they don't. He, he would be like, "Hey, man, keep your head up because that's when you get like a spiral fracture down your yeah. spine that paralyzes people." He's like, "That's what we're worried about. That's why we don't want you to lower your head." I'm like, "Okay, I get it, doc. That does scare me." Yeah, okay. Sure. I mean, I haven't been taught that my whole life. This is brand new information, but yeah, so work be. with me here as I continue. Well, I said, like, what if I've uh, what if I've done it a long time? I've built up enough strength that that's not really an option for you. <laughs> that's not really an option for me. I understand in theory what you're saying, but also like, I've kind of strengthened this entire thing. I don't have to worry about it. I drink a lot of milk, calcium, mm -hmm. bones are strong. Like think, Ram Doctor. Hey, it is crazy what you guys used to do, though. Like, bro, you were in the NFC North, okay? In the middle that was of the, the fullback, that was the fullback era when I got in there too. Had, every team had a fullback that was two hundred seventy pounds. <laughs> in yeah. the middle of the helmet oh, to helmet yeah. era, oh, yeah. like that's oh, and you're God. the all time leading. <laughs> sure. You, hey skull head, hey skull. Way to go. Way to go to your skull. Do you ever celebrate hey, that thing? Nah, yeah, all the time I do. That's what I watch. I like watching the Ravens because I like old Ricard forty two, and I'm thinking. I am oh. so happy I'm not playing against that guy because that would be awful. Let's he talk, is awesome. Let's chat about the Ravens team. We're believers. I don't know if we've gotten a chance to chat with you about it all, but Lamar, don't look now, last couple weeks with Monk and have opened that thing up. He's still able to run. They got weapons, defense hunts. Uh, Ricard had like a 
25 yards uh, reception. Yeah. Yep. I mean, he's running with the rock as is, as if it's casual. Feels like you can sneak him out anytime you need one. Like, they're, they're going to come to a time they're going to need one. And you just have that former defensive end, 280 pounds, uh, and then he's out gotcha. naturally. They are a buzzsaw. I understand the Lions very. maybe have a bad game. 21-27, to 27, very efficient. 357 yards, three tuds. Nine rushes, 36 yards, and a touchdown. Both through the air and on the ground. He's evolving right in front of our eyes and only getting better and better and better. And Munkin seems like the right guy to do it with him. Yeah, he's definitely evolving. I mean, he, he looks great sitting in the pocket and passing, but also defenses that go against him. We've heard J.J. talk about this before, too. Sometimes – even though Lamar may not run as much as he has, like you still rush worrying about him breaking contain. So your rush is kind of always – you kind of have an eye on him. You're peeking. Don't get past the quarterback. So it kind of has to slow your defense down as well. Yeah, you can't bring as much, right? Nope. Yeah, because if you bring it, you know, there's a chance he just escapes. And then if you do have him contained, he'll just run for 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then are you going to be able to cover somebody for that long? Nope. No way. No way, especially with the speed that they have. I mean, that's Aguilar. He's never been questioned for how fast he is. Yes. You got Zay Flowers. You got OBJ over there. Mark Andrews is a weapon. I mean, I know we get a chance to see him every once in a while, and we definitely get to hear him every week. This team's supposed to have J.K. Dobbins as well. Yeah. yeah. You know, so. like it's uh, – they, they're built to do it. Congrats to them. Congrats to them. Congrats to Ray. I think I saw Real nine good. different people caught passes from Lamar. Yeah, I think it was in like the first half too. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was spinning it. Yeah, that was like I, I'm watching it while we were at the uh, Colts game. It was like, oh, this is the Lamar's best game he's ever like played. It felt like because of the throws he was making weren't just like wide open monking. It was like, no, he's throwing this over a linebacker mm -hmm. in front of a safety to get Zay Flowers. That was one of the highlights I caught run. I think it's this one right here where Zay Flowers perfect spot puts it where he needs to be, and then he. Yeah, mm. gain of 50. They're inside the red zone over here. Yeah, in the uh, time he had was immaculate. If that's yeah. going to continue and he's going to be able to pick people at that ball. Boom. Yeah, it's over a linebacker. in front. Of, he's been hitting a lot of that, man. Yeah. And you look back, it's not just this week. You go back to London town. Ball. I mean, he's spinning it. Yeah, he's he's. I think he's rushed for – he's had multiple touchdown uh, games running the football twice this year. All right, let's hit some interesting stats from Hembo that we have not covered yet today. Hembo just sends me these things, and they're kind of just – the order in which they are placed together, fascinating. Oh, you know, is that cause, right? Yeah, because it'll be like uh, – at the top here, a lot of Miami, Dolphins, Dolphins, and then Mahomes here. Mahomes was 20 of 23 in the first half, and two of those three incompletions were drops. Mm -hmm. Nearly <laughs> flawless execution out of Patrick Mahomes in that Chiefs offense in the first half. Fun to watch, AJ, when they're cooking. Fun to watch also. Scary for everybody else when you feel like the Chiefs are finally starting to kind of put it together on offense. Yeah, yeah. and congrats to the, like, the Swifties are watching along, mm -hmm. and this is their team, like, this is what they're usually like, Swifties. Yeah, this, I know. Th that, this is probably what the rest of the year looks like. You know, you saw him against the Jets with Zach Wilson threw a couple picks. That's not normal. That is, that, is, that is not normal at all. It's almost like a nice little story arc in the script for Patrick Mahomes with the Swifties. Mm -hmm. that he was down and out. He's making some mistakes. Yeah. They were talking about these other guys. And now all of a sudden he's back. Somehow the best player on earth right now has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, underdog conversation. But, yeah, the Chiefs is the Chiefs yet again. And that stat certainly proves it. Let's go to Lamar. Back to Lamar. Lamar had 223 yards on 11 play action completions yesterday. So we talk about the run game being good for the pass game. Once you get those linebackers sucked up, yep. he's able to hit those crossing routes right behind them for the safeties. We've seen it yep. that entire time. That's a weapon that's only going to continue to grow as the season goes. Yeah, he was completing like 69% of his passes coming into this game. Dang. So, obviously, that's probably going up. But he, I mean, like I said earlier, that is an absolute nightmare for the defense uh for a game planner because now this guy can kill you from the pocket and you still have to be on point with your rush lanes and then your run game. You have to have spies. You can't play too much man coverage. It's, it's, it's a doozy right now playing against these guys. Yeah, and they're only getting better, everybody's assuming. Yep. Eight weeks in the system. Now that obviously doesn't count training camp and everything, but you get it. Here's a list. Randy Moss, Jerry Rice, and T.O. That's the entire list of players to catch more touchdowns through the age of 30 than Devontae 
Adams. Damn. And obviously, with what's going on at Las Vegas right now, Ooh. all of us are going to wonder whether or not Devontae was happy with his decision to get the hell out of a town and make it the Raiders instead of any other team that would have been very pumped for his services. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he got paid a bunch, and obviously, when, when he's out there, he typically does perform, but I don't think he signed up for, hey, you know, you're going to have to have Brian Hoyer playing with you for, you know, six out of the 17 games this year. I mean, he just... Bad spot. Who knows when Jimmy G is going to be back, when he's going to be healthy. He kind of got done dirty with Derek Carr, but I, I, I feel for Devontae big time. Yeah, Josh McDaniel spoke in the press conference afterwards. Um, uh, uh, hold on, we're pulling it up, I believe. I believe we're going to get it. Never People mind. aren't that happy with him. Well, no, Josh, they yeah, yeah, they want to get rid of him bad. Yeah, it's not going well over here. Yeah. You know, and then you talk about like Darren Waller. You know, we talked to Kelsey Plum about him mm -hmm. getting traded. People are alleging it's because of yep. his relationship with Josh mm -hmm. McDaniels. Then obviously, I mean, who knows what else, but Chandler Jones, like the whole situation yep. that's happening with that on and off the field. Who knows if anybody would have been able to help with they've not been, I mean, it is it's a lot. It's a lot. Here's Josh McDaniels after, uh, we do not have it. I didn't know Josh McDaniels sounded like this either. I, I think that was something. I, this is the most I've heard him talk in a while. We, 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 we had a, a, an entire week of practice in L.A., you know, or some most of the week, you know, we had an opportunity to practice him, um, you know, and there were some good things, and there were some other things that, you know, we needed to, to work on and fix and obviously get better and improve. So, um, you know, th that's such is life in that regard, you know, when, you're, when your starter is not available, you know, you're trying to make – what you think is the best decision for the team. Again, I, I don't put this all on one person now. Let's make sure we make that clear. There's a lot of people uh, that can do a better job of what we did today, and, uh, and that's what we're going to need to do. Yeah, he could have added yeah, himself there, you know, at the end. He could have mm -hmm. certainly done that to make it a full coach-like answer. But you're talking about catching balls from Brian Hoare. I guess there's a real conversation on whether or not it should have been Aiden O'Connell because of how good he was in preseason. But I think we've all seen what preseason translate to. And when he got some times, I think he didn't do that bad in the second half. Okay. So McDaniel's picking Hoyer, probably another thing that a lot of Raiders fans are telling him he needs to fucking get out of town about. Yeah, and I think he said, like, someone asked why Aiden O'Connell wasn't starting. He said, well, yeah, this isn't the preseason. That's why he did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right even, there. Even though he he started a game like yeah, two, two the weeks Chargers. ago, yeah. yeah, second half he came together yeah, full circle. Better than where? Um, Much let's, better. Let's talk about the Dolphins. They have the worst strength of victory in the AFC. The teams they've beaten are a combined eight and twenty-five. Uh -oh, no. Is that why you're jumping off the boat? I, that I, makes I'm sense. Still now. on the boat. I will be on the boat forever. But like wow. I said earlier, we are waiting for a signature win. Uh, you know, from the Dolphins, you know, once they get tested by these good teams, which the teams, the good teams at this point will only start to get better. Um, but I mean, look at the guys they have, Tua, Hill, Waddle, et cetera. Like they'll, they'll make those plays against good teams at some point. Obviously, here's another Dolphins stat. The run game weeks one through six, when they were beating the teams are eight and 25, <laughs> they averaged 28 rushes for 181 yards. Last night, 12 for 45, AJ. 12 for 45. All the stats for the Dolphins last night versus the rest of the season, much different. Much, much, much different. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I'm not off the Dolphins Me at neither. all, but things like that can happen when they run into a juggernaut. Uh, Josh Allen's average target depth yesterday was insane. Completions, 5.1 yards. Incompletions, 19.2 yards. I don't know what's going on with the Buffalo Bills. Mm -hmm. Okay? I don't know. And he's playing against Bill Belichick, who knows him. Very well. Bill Belichick knows Josh Allen mm -hmm. very well. Steve Belichick knows Josh Allen very well. Divisional games are always going to be more difficult because people know each other. But there is a little bit of an overreaction happening right now from not just us, that the Beals might stink because they <laughs> lost to the Patriots, which is wild to think that we're at that state point. And you, you said it's not just us. It kind of feels like it's just us because the conversation today isn't about how Josh Allen and the Bills stink. It's about, oh, did we, did we kind of go too hard on Mac in those first you know seven games? No. The only two wins the Patriots have are the only two games he doesn't have a turnover. But, yeah, I mean, the Belichick knowing him, the division battle, all that, the Bills will be fine. But you can't think like the way we think about the Dolphins. Like, I don't think – we're not jumping off the Dolphins because that was a tough loss away. They were missing guys. The Bills, I think a lot of people are just like, oh, okay, the Bills are the Bills forever. They'll never actually win. Mac Jones recorded the quickest snap to pass time of his career yesterday. Yep. Average 2.19 wow. seconds. Just getting the ball out quick. Wow. He was decisive. He was decisive.
He knew his de- he knew that defense too. Mm-hmm. Maybe we have been too hard on Mac Jones. This guy's talking about losing every game to move on from Mac. I know. Yeah, well, I, I was mean, a we, Pro Bowler. We haven't been too hard on Mac Jones. He's Bing. played terrible. This is this is the first game that he's played where it's like, okay, he made no plays that were going to lead us to lose, and that was the first time it happened. And he hasn't been good. Like he just hasn't. I'm pumped for him that he, he got one under his belt and he got Bill his 300th. But no, there, there's you, you can't look at two out of seven games like, yep, and those two he played well, so we should definitely keep him. Worried about the Buffalo Bills, AJ? A little bit, yeah. I am oh, definitely really worried. Just yeah. obviously yeah. injuries, losing yeah. Milano. Those are yeah, they, like, yeah, they have right. some injuries that, that worry me a little bit. I just don't know. Pats are playing without their two best players on defense, too. Yeah. Jeez, a wish. The because, Buffalo Bills. Yeah. <laughs> it's the point in the season where everybody's going to – you know, start dealing with certain injuries. But Bills, you know, you just mentioned it. Milano, Trey White, Daquan Jones up front. Like, those are big, big pieces of the defense. But when you look at him and we look at Josh Allen, the idea, the perception that everybody has of him when you cover and talk about the NFL is that, oh, they'll be all right. They got Josh Allen. They can score 30-plus points a game. Um, but outside of Diggs, I feel like every week he's, he's doing his thing. He's producing and getting to the end zone. Can Josh Allen be consistently that guy that can elevate the rest of the – Yeah, he's just got to carry the team there at some points, it feels like, when yeah. you're watching him. Kincaid got the rock. Hey, yeah, Kincaid got the ball for the first time. They're going to need him. Uh, let's wrap up these interesting stats from Hembo with a 4-2 and two team. The Pittsburgh Steelers. Ooh. Oh, yeah, they are. The Pittsburgh Steelers have been outgained by 660 yards this season. They're 4-2. and two. They're the Iowa Hawkeyes. <laughs> of the NFL, and Tomlin and the boys came out of that bye week absolutely rolling. T.J. Watt's pick. So cool. First play of the second half. So cool. Are you kidding me? Drops back into coverage. This guy's going to break the sack record. What else is he going to do? Oh, I don't know. Give me that. Being the secondary. All hands catch. See ya. Keep it moving. Doesn't get in the end zone. Puka Nakua maybe lost some reps or lost. Puka Nakua maybe lost some reps or lost some because uh, he was injured and Cooper Cup was doing his thing. But then all of a sudden, this rookie makes plays like that. Man. And you go, is this dude serious? Watch the tap of the right foot here. It's a big hit, too. Boom. Man. Uh, Bang. Uh, Keeps it in. Wow. Are you kidding me? He's a player. He is a Fucking player. Yeah, I can't no. believe they drafted him that late and got that much production thus far. It's like, this dude, how'd he slip through the cracks? He's awesome, and he ate yesterday, but Cooper Cup only had two catches yesterday, which was which was really nice to see. And then, you know, when it comes to the fourth quarter, Kenny Pickett is just – he's top five in the league when it comes to fourth quarter. Bunch of touchdowns yesterday in the fourth quarter? No. He's <laughs> surgical. What'd he do? What do you mean? What, he threw a touchdown? No. Oh, he, he threw balls to get them down to they they had their first rushing touchdowns of the year. Oh, Naj and Warren. They had wow. three rushing touchdowns yesterday. Before that, they had zero because yeah, Kenny in the fourth quarter has been slinging around. But yes, he hit GP down the seam a couple. Oh, uh, GP hit, went for more than hundred. Yeah, uh-huh. Deontay Johnson was back. He hit him on a big one. They had three fourth quarter drives, two touchdowns, and then a five minute drive to end the uh, the end the game. Oh, is was, that good? Yeah, yeah, mm. I'm thinking it is. He put it on the inside shoulder, too, or a good runner's ball, so Deontay could do his thing afterwards. Like, boom, get me out of here. Got and I'm gone. Let me dollar. throw you upfield real quick. That's something that the guy on the other uh, sideline normally does. Oh, Matthew Stafford. Kenny Pickett was doing his best impression while Blueface was on his side throwing ones and cheeks. <laughs> Boring. He's a dog. Yeah. Naj, too. Naj had a big one. Naj Matt Cannon has showcased some emotion as well, Tone. Some emotion. Uh, what a he- ball. What he a ball actually right did there. call uh, one of the touchdowns. I think Kenny might have audibled on one of them, too. So that was one of his, his mad faces. He doesn't like when Kenny does that. Um, but, no, overall, I mean, yeah, you saw it there. That was a really cool play where they ran into each other. Yeah, but, Connor Hayes. Yeah, it looked like the timing was perfect there. Really that, threw the defense off. Yeah, defense was so confused. Like, no way they're going to snap this ball before this guy clears, right? No, nope, they did. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the hell? Touchdown. Only Touchdown. need one yard. Two, that's, that's almost a better play than the the, the brotherly shove is at 93%. That, yeah. that that play right there is at 100%. Maybe other yep. – you know, it's copycat league. Something to think about. Late motion, <laughs> yeah. run into quarterback, handoff. Mm-hmm. Especially if you got a D tackle who's real smart oh. and is like kind of reading the motions to see mm-hmm. where the ball's going with Aaron Donald. Just have the motion not be like anything else. Have it not be properly timed, and they'll be so confused by the snap, and they'll be able to score. Not a bad. Hey, Matt Cannon is changing the game. Funny you say that. Their version of the brotherly shove, which we saw on the bamboozled segment, First is down. they did that same exact motion, and then they hiked the ball when the motion was here so that when they got to push Kenny, they just pushed him straight to the side. We're, We're working really on it. Oh. We're working on it. It was smart. I don't know if it's – um. 
I don't you know push the cheeks, not the back. You got to push the cheeks. None of these go. teams. 11 successful tush pushes for the second most out of any team in the NFL over the last two seasons. And what, 44 or something like that yeah. Yeah. for the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> and last night, man. Close. Hey, last night, dude, <laughs> that was awesome to watch. Own 25, fourth quarter, big game. Should win this game. But right now, it could be a decision that goes the other way. And they go, nope. We know what we're doing, and then bang, and then again, bang, and then again, bang. It's like they know who they are. Mm -hmm. The Philadelphia Eagles know exactly who they are. Mm -hmm. They're confident in it, and it's the reason why they won last night. And it's why you got kicked out of the Dolphin community. That's, That's right. Cool there. I'll be there forever. But, no. uh, great win against a good team, but Philly, I mean, they're built for it. They'll be right in there at the end. Thank you, Hembo. Thank you, Hembo. Hembo. We got a win this morning, too. What's Sticky that, Hem Hembo? got another win this morning. Who did he beat? Oh, uh, was it? Moss? Rex. I think Rex. Uh, Rex Ryan has been a tall task for old Hembo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rex Ryan's been around the NFL since he's a child, a little mm -hmm. boy. Day one. With his dad in there. So he he normally has all the history and everything. He looks good, too. Looks yeah. great. Yeah. People are saying he's going to be back on the sideline next year. Ooh. To see. People are saying he's going to be back I on the sideline. I hope so. You want to know coach? what the question was? What's that? Youngest quarterback to win three MVPs. Nope. Youngest player. Oh, suck Well, it's it. always a quarterback. It wasn't, I guess. Uh, it was no, not. no, no, no. It, the uh, Rex's answer. Oh, you're not right, a quarterback. Uh, but the answer ended up being a quarterback. Who uh, was the answer? Uh, Brett Favre. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's go. Hey, look at you. Hey, suck it, Hembo. Twenty-eight years. What old. What did Brett say? Or what did uh? Well, well, well Brett yeah. said a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. And then he said, "I'm not Rex. saying it." Yeah, he took the fifth. Rex. Doesn't remember. I plead to one, two, three, four. <laughs> hey, it. Well, you can't right now, actually. What? Huh? Huh? Ah. <laughs> I just. What do I got here? <laughs> Ah, what I got in my back pocket? <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. Fifth. That's what he said, right? You know what he yep. Yeah, I thought so. Yep. That was amazing. <laughs> Is that where MCD I can't believe from? we were in the middle of that. Me neither. Like right dab smack in the middle of that. Oh, yeah. It was a fun time. There's no way those lawyers thought we were leading the show from Radio Row. With Super Bowl. Week. No, definitely yeah. not. <laughs> Electric. It's awesome, AJ. It's awesome. Because every other show, don't, don't comment on it. Wait. Yeah, don't cry. Let's not add to the. Yeah. Let's not add fuel to the fire. Yeah, okay. All right, boys. First hour, I think we're doing. Have to. Have to do a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. I'm being sued. <laughs> 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 that lawyer else? was doing a press conference or like that podcast. Remember? What? Yeah, to fight against me. Yeah. He he keeps talking. It's only going to get worse. Okay. Bankrupt. You. All right, we're leading tomorrow. Yeah, they wanted to bankrupt me mm -hmm. and the business. Yeah. Everything like that. It's unbelievable. Did have to pay lawyer fees. I did have to pay lawyer fees. Mm. But they did a great job. Way to handle all that. We appreciate you. Good, Good work, lawyers. lawyers. Thank you, Sarah and team. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah went to our high school, graduating class. Oh, shot. Yeah. Hey, what suit are you going to hire? Oh, I don't know any really. Uh, Sarah graduated. You know Sarah? You remember her? She graduated our class? Yeah, like Sarah was a good lady. Mm -hmm. Good egg. Yeah, she's a lawyer. She'll handle this. You got it. I'm in. Awesome. And she did. She did. That was a wild scene, AJ. I didn't expect to be in the middle of that type of mm. thing. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I mean, obviously everything is bizarre. You know that. Everything over the last four or five years is pretty bizarre and pretty <laughs> – yep. I guess you could not predict it or you could not script it. But, uh, yeah, it's all part of the process, right? Yeah, I guess it's all part yeah. of the story. I thought I was going to get – what's that called when you get sat down and they start uh, – Deposed? Deposed. Yeah, yeah you got to get deposed. I thought I was going to get deposed. I was, like, looking forward to it. I've seen Lil Wayne's. I've seen Beebs. Mm -hmm. I've seen oh, yeah. many other – you know what I mean? You, I just, we were spitballing call. ideas out in, out in uh, Arizona. Yeah, you were the deposition. I was so excited. I was like, here we go. So it's going to be me versus this guy's lawyer? Yeah. yeah. I'm one. All right, let's go. I, uh, I cannot wait for it, you know? <laughs> The iteration of what I have to say, all right, we will, we will drop the case mm -hmm. if a statement is made about it. You got it. And then they typed one up and sent over. I was like, I'm not reading that. No chance. All right, we'll, we'll go back to it. Just type up another one. Nope. It was like four to five different mm -hmm. back and forth. And then I typed up. Remember, this is when I was at home with my baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was at home with my baby at this time. Then I typed one up and said, this is it. Or once again, I'm excited to get the post. You know what I mean? So this is, you know what I mean? And they said, let's just move on. But that thing's still happening. Oh, yeah. Uh, what? Big time. Today, okay. it, it, today there was like. Not, not with us. Not with us. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm with, saying, other, with, the other, with other people? State it? of Mississippi. Yeah, the whole no, thing. With him. It's, it's oh, only oh, getting okay. bigger down there. It's oh, like, yeah. Shannon's still? Huh? 
Shannon still? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't. Heard, I still yeah, have yet yeah, to hear sure. Shannon. There has been a real update. I don't know if that one has been <clears throat> kind of put on pause because of the far of Mississippi one. So, and then the auditor as well, right? The state auditor. Yeah, the state yeah. Auditor, yeah. So it was me, Shannon, and the state auditor. From the HBO. He was going hard. Yes. Well, my entire thing was going to be, who else are you suing? The auditor. Okay. Well, I just, the auditor saying this would be the person that understands the ins and outs of the case. And also every other meter, media outlet has talked about this. Yeah. It was my entire thing from the beginning. They were telling me I should have been scared, though. They were like, we're going to bankrupt you. You need to be scared. We're going to go through this whole thing. Not once did I ever even blink at that. Thing. Not worried at I think at the, the, we thought it was a joke at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then we're in the middle of it, and it was at that point I said, everything on earth is bullshit, which is sad. It's sad to think it, about. It is a bummer. But everything is absolute bullshit. And here we are staring down a 50% poll saying they, they hate this guy. <laughs> well, we just keep it moving. Yep. Just keep it moving. I don't care. I think those. I think Brett and his lawyer, are big athletic readers. Yeah, for if sure. I had to guess. Well, I, who I knows about what? I don't think so. What? I think Brett <laughs> reading the reading the funny papers. What is that, that's about guy? the extent. What is this guy? I think problem? he's doing deep dives in the athletic. Maybe he is. I could be wrong. Let's go around the internet, and I got a bunch of people that are like, "Don't address this type of stuff." It's like, yo, I'm on the internet every day. Still, we are an internet it's show. We it's like I see everything. Like I yeah, am a I mean, human that sees. You don't hide from. You don't really hide from anything. You address pretty much everything. Yeah, I saw someone, hey, woe is me. Ah, it's like, that wasn't a woe is me. This is just like, a, hey, if you see any decisions made in the future, there's potentially a reason behind it. And I am my representative. I am my PR person. And I've been like this since the beginning. Like, oh, I'm getting sued. Okay, we're leading the show with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a poll that says 50% of the people that watch your show on Saturday mornings that you're a part of hate you. It's like, well, got to talk about this. I mean, this is something that has to happen. Those fuckers hate you. Think about that. I mean, well, think about voting in a poll, first of all. See, I was thinking about that's, how, that's how, how think about. leading Boom. the thing was, how leading like the question was. You know, like, what do you think about Pat McAfee? This guy's a little, he's a little out there, isn't it? Like, it, it, it depends on how that question is actually posed. No, no. Because if you get the right group of people, that could have been a hundred percent or there. You know what well, I mean? Which I was a little for, bit. Yeah, but for that, sure. But if, if it's posed as like, this guy's everywhere, isn't he? Like, yeah, think about it a little bit. You don't really like this guy, do you? Like, if it's polls like that, then yeah, it, it's very easy for people to be like, you know, yeah, you're right. Fuck this guy. Hey, listen, hey, listen, poll maker, I want to let you know. I'll do enough for people to fucking hate me. Okay? I, I don't need you to, to continue to move it. But it has been interesting because I think a lot of the game day people, they act like I'm brand new to the show. Yeah. You know, like 2019, I was on a bunch. Then COVID happens. Oh, yeah. Last year, I was on every single show, sitting in the same exact seats mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that I've been sitting at. Like, and then now it's still happening. It's like, we're at the point now where these people shouldn't hate me anymore. You know, normally, I get dropped in front of a new audience. Boy, this guy's the fucking worst from the same group of people. And then, like, five months go by if they keep up that long. And they're like, okay, don't hate this guy. This seems like who he is every single Don't love it. Don't love, but I don't hate him as much. It's like we're like almost two and a half years in to this college football thing with game day, and these people are still like, no, nope, fuck this guy. It's like, God damn. I thought I'd have him won over by now. I have not, but I will say, being on that show is awesome. Like, yeah. it is like, no matter how bad they, the, some of these humans hate me from the college football crowd, it's like, I still feel very, very lucky to be a part of that show and a part of college football. Like, that Ohio State crowd was fucking awesome. Like, being out there at Washington, 6 a.m., those kids showing up, like, it is it is a dream out there. Can I ask about O's? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it fucked me up. Are you a plant? Are you a plant? Is he a full gaze? Hey, that fucked me up a little bit. You tried to get you tried to get him? I did, yeah. <laughs> you saw me try to get him. Oh, well, yeah, and then he knew. He, yeah. He, he knew. Yeah. Yeah. Because I head. was ready to come on this show and say. I got him. Yeah, because whenever he was like, think of a card, think of a card. I was thinking of one card. Mm -hmm. And then very last second, whenever he said, all right, now I boom, flip to another card. It's like, hey, you're supposed to be in there, pal. Figure it out. Mm -hmm. Did you talk to him before the show at all? So I did get a chance to meet him uh, oh. beforehand. But it was not a, this, there was no, I had no clue what was coming. I had no clue what was coming from that entire thing. So whenever I said five of diamonds and he was like, eh, but. And then he goes, what was it? It's like, yeah, Ace of Spades was the other one. I, I almost shit my pants. I was like, what is wrong with this guy? How did he know that I... 
was thinking of two cards, just trying to fuck with him. Literally, mm -hmm. that's all I was trying to. This guy is always gets it right. He was on Hard Knocks, got it right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was uh, in Michigan, he got it right. Yep. I've seen him on TV shows, he gets it right. It's Probably. like, all right, if you're this good, let me, let me fuck you. Won't get my brain. Okay, let me tell you how it is. ADD, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I'm thinking of one now, but there could be another one coming. And I did, and he fucking caught me. I don't, I don't understand him. Then the score thing. Yeah. 31-28 with the game. That was nice. And then Herb Street with the prime thing. It's like, Herbie's an Ohio fuck. Like, he's not, you know what I mean? He's not oh, yeah. going to get in the and football. And they asked Des, like, game of the year. And, like, I, no one thought Duke, Florida State for, like, game of the year. That's how, like, the question I took. Did he ask you? No, he said two random teams, I think. He didn't even say, did he say game of the year? It was. And then he said two teams. Something like that. But when he was talking Bro, I was mind blown show. sitting. I want to let you know. I was sitting there, like, trying to see what he was doing. It was maybe... The Mid least amount of movement I've ever had while being on camera in my life, because I was just staring at him. Yeah. And I was staring at Desmond as if I was a mentalist <laughs> at one point. I'm like, what is he seeing? That everything? Because I just view him as like a poker player, like the way he does his things. So like, you know, like the way I cover up for giving away and he tells is normally I'm just wildly honest mm -hmm. about everything I'm saying. I got it. I got this. Oh, if he was going to, like, Jack of Diamonds is my favorite card. Yeah. Like, oh, I love this. Like, just dropping stuff in his mind. He got us. I, I, from my standpoint, I don't know what happened with everybody else, but for me, yeah. I don't know what the fuck his deal is. Like, why doesn't he go play World Series of Poker and just win it all? Why doesn't he get just sports gambling? Yeah. yeah. How does he get the paper inside the football? There was a like, that's yeah. the only thing I go back to is, like, how do you oh, actually yeah. – get something inside of something that is manufactured elsewhere. And he kept saying catch with a ball and he handed it to us. That pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That yeah, one. Yeah. This isn't a hand. Isn't, isn't the whole thing with yeah. the mentalist though, that you're, you're planting the idea yes. to the person essentially. That's why I wanted to ask what he talked to you about before. Like, did he somehow plant ACE in your brain before the show? Nah, I don't think so. And if there, like there was no, there was just a little... Did you know his lighter was going to go out? That's why you that had one awesome. ready? That was pretty sweet. Yeah, that was great. I'll tell you what, I thought this was going to be good. <laughs> he was going to be so And mad. everybody that's watching that sees me pull that lighter out knows. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, hey, why is... Why is huh. Pat, came has a, Pat has a lighter? Be smoking cigs? What is this all about? No, not cigs. Everybody knows. <laughs> everybody knows that ain't, that ain't my thing. Uh, but, yeah, it, literally as I'm seeing the thing, because it was I saw it, I was watching on the side, and I've been there, done that. Whenever you got one of those, uh -huh. you know... Throw up flame throwers, pretty mm -hmm. much, and it's not sparking for whatever reason. It was like a four to five time. Mm -hmm. Oh no! And I'm like, is Keep this back. part of the thing? Is this part of the thing or not? Go. And then I was like, I think he needs a little flame. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and then he spells out prime. It's good word. And what was that? What did he fucking melt off? How P. did he? Normally All the other use, letters. Normally they use P for stuff like that. What's fuck your problem? Now he fucked me up. Fucked me up too. And then we had to go do a rest of a show. It's like what, dude? How'd this dude just do what he just did? Is anybody going to ask alien. any He must be an alien. He's Could a be. hybrid. Could, Could be. be. And what happened? I heard Reese. So I didn't have, because we were moving over to another uh, field for that thing. So I heard Reese give a full breakdown about yeah, running I was, the Michigan thing. I was thing. fucking pissed. Why? They, they, I can't believe you guys had the gall to show a Michigan piece after they were getting accused of cheating. I, I, like, I, I was getting the tail end of what Reese was saying, and so, I didn't full, because I was told, hey, O's thing next over on other sets. So we get down from set, see some people. While we're in transition, sometimes audio completely breaks up. Then I, as soon as I get to stage, it's Reese cutting a promo about what is happening behind the scenes. And I'm like, oh, shit. All honesty, I, I did not know this was happening. In all honesty, Reese came out and made a statement and said, there was some heated discussion in uh, game day meetings whether we should show this Michigan O's piece based, uh, based off of what the allegations were this week. Like they murdered people. <laughs> well, you know, with a mentalist who knows what's coming uh -huh. with them. And then you heard him say, in a competitive sport, if you knew what was coming, you'd be able to win every time. Yeah, yeah. He's what O said at yeah, the beginning. Yeah. I'm like, oh, oh, really? That's not good oh. shot. What's that? That's not true. What's that? If you know what's coming, but that's, that's a lot of plays. You know what's coming. <laughs> still got to stop, 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 stop one on one with Randy Moss him. right here. It probably run the fade. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Good luck, buddy. How do you feel about the Michigan sign stealing thing? We talked about it pretty. I, like, honestly, I haven't dove too much in it. I heard something about it being electronics involved, and if that's involved, then that's that's a whole different level. But outside of that, if it's, it's game gamesmanship, we we talked about it, you know, plenty of times in the show. You know. If you're not cheating, you're not trying to a certain extent, but there is, I feel like, a level um, that you can't cross. And if that's involved, which I don't know, something I heard, uh, that's... that's. Yeah, I don't think it's been... I, they. The big storyline is that the Big Ten addressed it. 
And that's like kind of what Pete Thamel brought up on the show on Friday. He was like, if the Big Ten is trying to get out in front of this, and I know people say he doesn't like Harbaugh potentially because Harbaugh has been through it, but the Big Ten's not just going to throw like a brand like Michigan, which is one or two, we'll say two because right. we're Ohio. Right, AJ? We're a big Ohio oh, state. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, I thought you just you respected General Bob's top five. Well, General, but <laughs> you're talking about brand names like yeah. in the Big oh, Ten. No question. So, one of the, yeah. So Cal. in this transition era of new teams coming into conferences and people leaving conferences, it's like for the Big Ten to be like, yeah, one of our biggest brands is currently being investigated for cheating. Like that is why Pete Thamel thinks it's like it has to be something that will rise to the level of what the Patriots did or what the Astros mm-hmm. had going on or like one step past like the morally acceptable yeah. signs. Of, seemingly, that's what he said, right? If I heard what he said right, yeah. is that what everybody heard? But he, and he also said – I don't expect anything to happen this year from this. So I'm like, oh, so it doesn't matter. Like, nothing this year. So this is going to be like a Reggie Bush situation where they're going to go back? Because this team looks good, bro. Yeah. Yeah, This team looks very, very, very very good. So if they go on to win it all, is this going to be something like a year and a half from now? They're going to be like, by the way, hope you didn't have that much fun in the national championship parade (laughs) or celebration or afterwards because you guys didn't win it. Give us our trophy back. Is that what's going to happen out of this little thing? Potentially, and I think it sets up for Harbaugh maybe leaving after this year because it's like, hey, you get if he knows that like sanctions are going to be coming and like loss of scholarships and stuff like that. That's exactly what Pete Carroll did. He was like, okay, yeah, we just we just you know won however many national championships, but I'm not going to stick around at USC for when they have to rebuild this thing from the ground up. I'm going to go to fucking Seattle and and have success there. Yeah, Harbaugh leaving. Yeah. Everybody assumes he go to the NFL. Exactly, and that kind of sets up perfectly. It didn't really sound like Shefty thought it would happen, but the Packers need to hire Har- Harbaugh. <laughs> they, they need to. They need to. I mean, it's just the same shit happens over and over and over again, year after year. Nothing ever changes. The last time they actually had like a hard-nosed, tough son of a bitch at coach was when they had Mike McCarthy. They won a Super Bowl. Like they just they need they need a, a complete image overhaul. And I think Harbaugh's got to do it. You got him smacking those pads, Jordan Love at Lambo. Exactly. Ooh. Think about him and his cleats warming yeah, up there. Wearing in Lambeau. gloves, fucking oh. throwing pads. Maybe JJ in McCarthy the in the celebration yeah. pictures. Him, him being Green Bay Packers head coach feels. Right, because he's like ultimate old school football dude. I think so. And it's like Packers ultimate old school football. You like this, AJ? You like getting Harbaugh out of town? I don't know. Honestly, whatever. I want the Packers to win some more games. Michigan's good. I don't know. I don't know. Michigan's very good. They are. They have not played anybody really, which is not their fault, but they are very good. You know, as we're getting closer to Michigan season, you know, which is coming up here in a few weeks, starting to watch more Michigan stuff like after games and stuff. Buddy, JJ? (laughs) Yeah, he's very good. He spins it. He's throwing dart. I mean, he's putting balls over corners, shoulders, like Aaron Rodgers type shit. And then obviously they got the offensive line and like it's, hey, they got. They're a force. They are a force. Lose to the team that loses by 55 in the national championship. It's going to be hard to get that taste out of your mouth for people. But it's like this Michigan team, same but different in different fields like a much better different than it normally is. That's why any of the, like, sanctions or anything after if they were to win it all. Like, if they beat Ohio State or even Penn State or another good team in these first few weeks when all these allegations were allegedly happening, then that would be one thing. But if they go on and win the national championship after all this, I think it just makes it even better. It's easy to win when you got everybody signs. That's right. (laughs) That's right. I mean, you've seen those Astros. Those guys are hitting dingers at a rate. Automatic. Has that ever what it was garbage cans? Yeah. Yeah. They had a video camera though. Right. And they were using garbage cans. Yep. That might be different. They, they won a World Series shit. after it though, right? They did. Yeah, they did. That, I mean the, the Astros are unbelievable though. They go to the ALCS like I think they have like okay. seven years in a row or something like that. Like they're very, very good. Oh yeah, when you got the lot of trash cans <laughs> in the city. <laughs> you know, but they bounced trash. back from that. Like they got fucking pee pee whacked for doing it and then they just it's like okay, it doesn't matter. We'll stop cheating and we'll still just <laughs> Okay, I guess we'll stop doing what everybody else is doing. We're not gonna throw everybody else under the bus. There's two to three other teams doing the same exact thing we're doing. We won't do it, we'll still win, is what the Astros said. Yeah, kinda. And then how about the Phillies? Huh? We're back. Here we yeah, go. Tonight, big game. Game six. Let's go, AJ. We need Bryce to see we, a beach ball night. We can close it out, right? We can close it out tonight. Yep. Yes, we can. Yes, yes we, we can. can. Yes, we yes, can. We can. Hell yeah. Hell oh, yeah, AJ. Oh, boy, yeah. Hawker. Patronizing. Uh, all right, let's go to some over. Uh, <laughs> no, here's another sure. stat coming out about last night from David Fiorones. 
I yeah. feel like I nailed it. I feel like yeah. I nailed that. Sound I'm not 100% sure, Sound but like I feel like I nailed it. in there? Huh? Is there a tilde in there over one of the words? F-U-R-O-N-E-S. Could be Ferones. Could be Ferones. I think you're right. Ferones. 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 That's how I would say it. Anyways, he says... The 10-0 penalty disparity in the Dolphins' loss to the Eagles Sunday night was only the seventh time in NFL history where one team was not penalized while its opponent was penal uh, called for double-digit penalties. I knew you got it historically fucked last night, Gumpy. Historically. We, we knew it all along. We What's up with these along. refs? There just, just, like, there had to be one call, and there was like a few that they could have made. I'd even, I mean, it's it's favoritism by me, but I would argue that that could have been P.I. on Slay's interception. Like, I think Moster got hurt earlier there, but, I mean, we lost. We Philly should, was better than us. I'm sure the Eagles aren't just a highly disciplined football yeah. team. <laughs> Especially Coach Sirianni. Yeah, exactly. How about him making a pitch to the camera earlier? Yeah, that was awesome. First camera. You can't do it. Okay, we can do it. You can't do it. Sorry. Sue us. <laughs> he was awesome. He was. He was wild. How about him in the tunnel? Keep doubting us. Mm -hmm. Talking to the boys. Your head coach. Sideline. Your head coach is in the tunnel. Keep doubting us. <laughs> right. We got the video. We got to run the video. Stop <laughs> 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 I love it. Who was Bad. Bob? <laughs> he talked some shit. Yeah. Bob talked some that's shit. Unreal. Hey, I love that that's the head coach. I love it. That's how he is, it feels like, every single day, too. That's why everybody loves him over there. Yeah. I never had a head coach that was that, like, you know, extroverted and would do that kind of stuff, but I can see how that would juice your team up a bit. Is that clean enough for you, huh, Bob? <laughs> yeah. Right before he's going into the yeah. – oh, yeah. going to talk to the team. You remember what fucking Bob said? You remember what Bob said? Huh? Yeah, I told him. You guys can too if you want. Bob, you got anything? <laughs> That's what I thought, Bob. <laughs> Shut up, Bob. Stop doubting the Eagles. This guy's screaming while he's going in there. I love it. I love yeah. it. I don't think I've ever had a head coach either. Nope, me either. He just authentically himself. It's the best. Hear everybody that comes on here to talk about if you're a player, that's what you respect. Regardless of what your personality is, just be that every day. And he obviously is, it seems like, behind closed doors and out in front. Let's run the end of this video one more time where it's a – It with the coach shit, man. ISO cam. Bob is PR guy. Okay, Bob is PR guy for the Eagles. Mm. This was – Coach Sirianni right before going into the locker room after a massive dub on Sunday Night Football against the Miami Dolphins. Complete enough for you, Bob. Complete enough for you, Bob. Bob's right there with the yeah. beard. Let's go back to that. Black dude or the short guy? I think it's the short little white guy. guy. I think it's the short little... Dom is the uh, guy in the all black there. That's team security. <laughs> okay. Dom's a dog. I've heard a lot of stories about Dom. Okay. Dom's a dog. Okay. Dom also, if you look for him, everywhere. Mm. He is everywhere. Mm -hmm. like Seeing all things, taking care of everything. Complete complete enough for you, Bob. Is that what Nick says? Complete enough for you, Bob. Bob, but Bob didn't even know. <laughs> Bob didn't even know Coach Sirianni was near him. Go back to that again. Because he just kind of popped up on yeah. Bob. Is that, is that pretty enough? Cle yeah, complete enough? Is that what he said? Uh, I, heard pretty. I heard pretty. Complete enough for you, Bob. I See, I could be enough. complete enough for you, Bob. Weird. How about Bob just walking, mind his own business? PR guy. Bob he has Bob. no idea that Sirianni's there. And then he smiles after, too. Complete enough for you, Bob! Scared the shit out of Bob. Yeah, scared the shit out of Bob. Hey, Bob, way to go, Bob. Had a boy, Bob. Hey, Big Don, by the way, was like, "Is uh, if Bob tries anything here, I will break his skull. Yeah, Bob, Bob is, Lang, Senior Vice President Bob of Communication. Bob a bit. Yeah, Bob's lived a good life out there, you know, with the Eagles. There's some tough decades, and, uh, you know, the thing about Bob, he's a world champ. Mm -hmm. That's right. People forget about that. Yeah. Bob is a world champ. One of the best. Here's another video being sent in here to the group text from Gumpy. I guess it's after it got cut off. He also drops a uh, Sirianni gives a fuck yeah as he's walking off. Really? Well. Nice. I love this guy. I love the tunnel chatter because normally every tunnel I've been a part of, pretty quiet. You know, a couple dudes will scream yeah. some things, but then once you get into the locker room, you do it. I like that Sirianni from field all the way to locker room is letting the boys where this post game message is coming from. Let me let me give you guys a little teaser on what's coming out here. Stop doubting the Eagles. As soon as he gets in there, mm -hmm. they doubted us all week. Yep. Didn't they? They doubted us all week. And complete enough for you, Bob. Yeah, people said we couldn't put a whole game together. Complete enough for you, Bob. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
That was way better. That's awesome. That angle does sound like pretty. God. Yeah. Yeah, let's try that again. Let's see what it is. That's awesome. That's pretty enough for you, Bob. Pretty enough. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, let's go back to the previous one and then run that one. So it's pretty enough yeah, for you. Yeah. yeah, is that a pretty... Pretty enough for you, Bob! Okay, then he turns the corner. Obviously, still a little bit more of a walk. Pretty enough for you, Bob! Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man. This guy's the best. That's great. Uh, I'm happy that guy coaches one of the best teams in the NFL. Yeah. Coach of the year. Hey, Coach. Hell yeah, Coach. Hell that yeah. That was unbelievable. So excited. It's the best. Oh, and he's walking with the team, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's the only one. <laughs> yeah, no one else is saying just anything. He's trying to get back to the locker room. He's the only one going yeah, nuts. This is what we thought, coach. <laughs> yeah. Regular season game, coach. Just mm -hmm. week seven. Got to get to week eight. Huh? Oh, is that right? <laughs> is that right? <laughs> I love him. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Can we run that one one more Please. time. I mean, he hits a real high. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, there's real emotion getting out there. I haven't slept at home in three months. Huh? Fuck yeah! <laughs> it's a long fuck. I'm mate. sleeping on my couch long at the fuck. office yeah. for the last three months straight. You don't think I'm pumped about beating the Dolphins on Sunday Night Football, Bob? Huh, Bob? <clears throat> and then Bob laughs and goes mm -hmm. off his way. Fuck. Good for the Eagles, man. Yeah. Um, we have some breaking news happening right now, live in real time. It has been announced that the in-season hard knocks oh. is going to be for... The Miami Dolphins. Oh, no. A lot of personalities. Oh, no. Very talented oh, team. No. Coach McDaniel is going to be fantastic to follow along as the regular season rolls on. I will say the in-season hard knocks has not necessarily had the greatest success for the teams. If you do recall, the first one was the Indianapolis Colts with Carson Wentz. Certainly supposed to go to the playoffs. Yeah. They lose to Clanton, where the fans were actually dressed like clowns because of how disappointed they were in the team in which they were fans of. And they lose that game and end up not making it. People say, well, it's just the in-season hard knocks curse. It would continue. Now, after Miami loses to Philadelphia, oh, no. it's announced that a potential curse is being brought into the building. Although I do love the fact that the Dolphins have been chosen because I can't wait to see how the day-to-day -day is with McDaniel. We see his interviews. We see the results. We see the one-on-ones. But what is it like day-to-day -day team meetings? How is he addressing the team? Gumpy, this is great news. You're going to learn a lot about the boys and the franchise. Yeah, You're going to get a behind-the-scenes look at the team you've been a fan of for your entire life. Ooh. NFL Films is going to do a great job. It's going to be fantastic, Gumpy. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? It's going to be great. What could go right? Everything. Yeah. AJ, what's he's that so all nervous. about? Boy, oh Why is Goopy he's so nervous oh, now? What are yeah. you talking about? You're uh, not a fan we'll anymore? Be, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Lots of personalities. It'll be awesome. Uh, Darius, I do wonder if you will watch this because you are noted no longer Miami Dolphins fan. <laughs> fake news. What's that? No, you're an ex. They voted you out. Yeah, you're, you're done. <laughs> Who is that? The, the, the Finn fan. Yeah, the Cup Mountain. Vote. Was there a poll? Don't trust those votes. Was there oh, a poll? I don't... I, I trust the athletic votes. Nah. I can't say the same thing. But yours, yours, nah. Gumpy told me they, the tribe had spoken, uh, the Miami Dolphins yeah. community. Yeah. Yeah. And it was one of these with the fire. Yep. Shh. Jeff Probst, you are the weakest it link. Was, it was yeah. just the Eagles retweets right after the game. The fan hey, wasn't you know, happy, uh, man. I'm a pundit. I got a job to do. You know, <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Pundit and a fan. Congrats yeah. to the Eagles. Yeah, big stuff. win. Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. But at the same time, you know, my heart was a little broke. My big brother was in there crying in the group chat how we got cheated by the rest. But uh, don't love it. Don't love the in-season hard knocks. I like kind of the mystery of uh, Mike McDaniel doesn't do a lot of interviews during the season, neither does Tua, but um, it'll be good entertainment for fans. Jalen Ramsey coming back, I'm sure that'll be a big story. Tyreek Hill is a character. Um, and then obviously Mike McDaniel with, you know, the mastermind that he's been. When's it start? Usually it's been November, yeah. the last two years. So they're already filming? Yeah. Yes. They're already filming, they're already in there. They started filming Saturday. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Tony. That, what? Uh, that was Tony's we'll maybe voice, guys. I didn't even know they'd do this. Uh, we're going to send a text to hopefully get some information. Is this Mark Anthony's move or J-Lo? Who decided this? Yeah, that's who does have to approve this. Is this one of those ones where they can just kind of force it on a team? I don't Might think been, he's an owner, AJ. Might Mark have been Fergie. He's, Fer he's, he's married an to an owner. True. Yeah, I don't know if J-Lo's still an owner. You remember whenever they were doing that whole thing? We had a Monday night football game down there, and it was like everybody was there. I think Tiger was there to see Peyton, but like. 
I think Serena. it was J-Lo, Mark Anthony, Serena. Yeah, like everybody was there for the Monday night because they were doing like NBA ownership thing. I haven't heard much about that in a long time. It was it was last year, I think, when uh, the owner was suspended that the highest ranking official who's been there for the longest within the ownership group was Fergie. So if they were going to do any fines or anything, Fergie was going to be the one that would have to kind of lead the charge for the owners. Yeah, I guess Fergie might have been there on that Monday Night Football. She was really... <laughs> oh, yeah, she was doing future, it then. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it oh, was... Josh, Josh Duhamel's ex-wife, yep. Fergie? Yes. Yep. Yeah. How okay, I didn't know she was part of the ownership. Yep, yep. I, I don't know who Josh Duhamel is, but I know who the fuck Fergie is. You'd recognize him. He's a big, big handsome actor. dude, played college ball. And an actor. If you saw him, you'd be like, oh, that's that bad guy. I just would like to let everybody oh. know that. What? Like, he, he plays a villain in some movies. Oh, I saw a movie this weekend. Hey. Boom. Oh, yeah, I don't know that guy. You know him. What movie? I don't know that guy. That's a bad picture of him. I do not know that guy. I can't tell you what movie he's been in, but. I... Well, you, we've heard about your movies. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because you of what you Transformers? About. No, just yes, love transport movies. Boom. I He's watched in. that as He's a kid. A star he watches. I don't know Josh Duhamel. I know yeah, fucking Fergie, gorgeous. though. I want to let you know that. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's his mom's Bonnie. Yeah, I don't know this guy. Big, he's a big Vikings fan. He is a big he Vikings is. fan. Is he really? Yeah, he's from yeah. Minot, South Dakota. Is he going to be hitting the yeah. drum tonight? Is he going to be oh, doing a boom? He boom? might be. Maybe. He could be. He yeah. should be. Do you know him? Uh, no, but I've been a fan of him. He was on a what was he? He was on a TV show a long time ago. I Vegas. saw him. And then he's done movies and stuff. Oh, okay, it was Vegas. Well, Fergie took over the world. Yes, she uh-huh. did. I do remember when Fergie took over the world. London Bridge. Our sources have to- uh, told us that they have not started filming the end season Hard Knocks. Okay. okay, they have not started filming yet. Okay, so that's good news. So Tony Diggs, you just lied right into the, <laughs> right into the microphone. So maybe let's, let's go around the internet. Let's do some overreactions to test the waters of the NFL fandom in. All the cities. I assume this one was pretty ridiculous. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for... Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but... Let's go to some overreactions. This thing ended up trending number one. We appreciate you all so much for participating and letting the NFL emotions pour out of your skin. Ty went through all of them and picked his favorites. This one's from Matt at MPITS44. Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but... I held my Chargers funeral last night. Mm. They are dead. Brandon Staley makes me cry. Kellen Moore, he makes me vomit and cry. <laughs> How do you score zero points in the last 38 minutes? I'd rather stink and know we stink than stink and have hope. I'm all out of tears, says Matt. I'm sorry to hear that, Matt. Mm. I assume Chargers fans are very similar to this around the overreaction tweets. Yeah, this one was a little bit more tame because I didn't want to just, you know, kind of do the hack move of putting in one of the 800 tweets that were like, fuck Brandon Staley. This guy's a dipshit. They need to fire him today. There was a lot of those ones. So this guy, you know, I mean, he, he kind of a little bit more thoughtful, a little more heartfelt. Um, now Kellen Moore is starting to get a lot of that that brunt as well though it's not just brandon it's staley who knows how long that whole thing's gonna last over there excited to watch it unfold the chargers is the chargers though it feels like yep. yeah it just looks like they will not ever get over that hump and um the bright spot that's been there the brightest spot should i say is justin herbert he has not looked good uh for the last at least three four weeks i know he hurt his op- his left you know finger left hand but i feel like since that injury he's looked terrible Played against the Chiefs, and the Chiefs is the Chiefs. True. But certainly sounding the alarms in Los Angeles, AJ. Yeah, it, it, it's an interesting tweet. I mean, it makes sense because it's true. Like, there always is hope with the Chargers. It's hard to pick against the Chargers because you think of all the weapons and Justin Herbert and the defense and who they have, and then they just can't. They just don't find a way to get over the hump, as Debo said. Let's go to another overreaction, shall we? This is from Alex at underscore God underscore. Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but but the Patriots still suck. The Bills are just worse. They're dead in the water. Bills won't win anything with Josh Allen. Their window was three years ago, and they missed it. Shout out to Connor with the burner. This is you? No, this is not me. I am not skilled enough to have a burner. Who do you think this is, Patriot fan or Bills fan? This is a Bills fan for sure, because that is the truth, and they've kind of been going like this a little bit when you look at the three to four years. How are the Bills fans in here? Not great. No, they don't like it. Not great. Yeah. A lot a lot of like, hey, Josh Allen just kind of turns the ball over too much. We're never going to win with this guy. We always get hurt when things are going well, you know. It, just, it, it was not great today for Bills fans. It's getting ugly up there in western New York, AJ. <laughs> I mean, you better be careful saying that you don't like having Josh Allen as your quarterback. There's a lot of other guys that you don't want Bring it. You don't. Well you don't want to kick Josh Allen out for somebody else. Well, and also, I mean, with the way it's going, Brandon Bean better hope 
that those fucking buffaloes are 30 to 40 feet. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Every <laughs> single one of them, maybe 50 feet. With each loss. They and I don't think they're actually called buffaloes. No, bison. 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 Yeah. Bison. They we need, need some to big bison. We need some big ass bison to turn the, the, the narrative about what's going on in Buffalo right now. But once that weather turns, that's yeah. when they really get sure. going. Oh, really? first time ever yeah. too. A lot of uh, like, hey, the Sean McDermott experiment is done. Oh, yeah. we oh. need to get rid of this guy. Really? Yeah. Saw really? that yesterday Jeez. too during the game. People have been like, okay, with McDermott, have we hit a wall? Like, have we gone as far as possible? Obviously, he helped turn the culture around. But I saw a lot of that yesterday. Like, Jeez. done with him. Not good in Buffalo. Let's go to another overreaction. This one's from Jay Z at Jayzov. Jayzov. Oh. Jayzov, very happy about the success that Hove had. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, because being called Jay Z a lot cooler whenever another one exists and happens to be like one of the most successful people of all For time. Sure. Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but, but my Browns have as many wins with PJ Walker as we do with our $230 million quarterback this season. AJ, this whole thing continues to be a situation. Kevin Stefanski looked out for Deshaun yesterday, even though he cleared all tests with his shoulder and concussion on the field after playing the game and starting the game and being the captain of the Cleveland Browns. Kevin Stefanski made the decision for him not to continue bring in PJ Walker. I, as Colts fan, Seeing the two picks happen right in front of my eyes, said, let's keep Deshaun on the field. Exactly. When PJ came in, we're a little bit more worried. Shouldn't be like that, I assume is how Brands fans feel. That nah, should not be like that. But so was it more his shoulder or more his head? He, if he cleared concussion protocol, and then they, but I just know because when they showed Deshaun celebrating, he's doing the one arm up, left hand, and keeping his right arm tucked. Like, is that that's because he his shoulder hurts that much? I think his shoulder is hurt. Now it's clearing test, but they can't see all the micro muscles. Remember, isn't that what they're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. what's up? What are you doing, Debo? What happened? Like, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure. I don't know what's going on here. But Stefanski, after the game, said he's a starter going forward, and I think maybe even starting the next game. But that was very odd. I know you guys were at the Coast game, so probably couldn't hear. But on the broadcast, when he was standing up on the side, they're like, "Yeah, he's cleared concussion protocol. The shoulder's fine." And then you see PJ walk on the field. So um, mm. it's a head, head scratching, a lot of head scratching shit going over there. Is there a chance Stefanski just used that as an opportunity to put PJ Walker? In oh, yeah, definitely. Place. Definitely. But I'll tell you what, Andrew Barry has them. You're choosing, uh, you're choosing to not use hmm. the $230 million asset to our company. Yeah. Okay, that's fun. Get the fuck out of here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that normally works, isn't it? They'll trade if there's even a conversation. Some places, not all places. That's why what the Niners were able to do with Brock Purdy is so, you know, abnormal, and it gets talked about. Like they'll trade away competition for people that they have invested a lot in, and their legacy will be kind of judged off of in this entire thing. As the, so, the conversation doesn't even happen. It's like that convo is happening. Not only there, also in New York. With Tyrod Taylor. Mm -hmm. I mean, that conversation's really happening right now. $40 million a year for Daniel Jones. They're talking about Tyrod Taylor. And then $230 million guaranteed. They're talking about P.J. Walker. That's not good. That's never good, especially if you're the person paying the checks. And there's no, there's no way around not having Deshaun there. Like, there's no out. His contract is signed, signed sealed, and lost sealed, for him. Delivered. Huh? He's theirs forever. Yeah. 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 He's got to figure it out. But who get knows? healthy. Yeah, get healthy, Deshaun. Get like, healthy. Kind of the conversation, not with McDermott because they haven't had nearly that much success, but another time a coach might be his time to get the hell out of there, even though he hasn't done anything too bad. Yeah, he could probably go find an offense coordinator, but roll somewhere. Oh, yeah. Sure. What do you yeah. do? Make you make Schwartz the head coach? Then is that what you do? Oh, not bad idea, especially yeah, with the way those boys. Hey, those the way those boys are flying around. Yeah. That defense has moxie. Mm -hmm. That defense has a lot of moxie. Yes. I mean, Miles walking around like this, looking at the crowd was. One of the most gladiator-esque things I've seen in some time. Sick. And he knows it, too. Oh, yeah. Like, he knows. Like, who, you know? He's 28 years old. That's well, unbelievable. He's, he's, he's running, that young still. He's running directly through chips. Mm -hmm. Other professional athletes yeah, that have been put in a position to stop him just get pff, shed to the side. Like, they're not there. Not. It's how, he, it's how he can bend and run when he's that big and that muscle-bound, but he can bend and run parallel to the ground and turn his shoulders, and it's like... Oh, cool! They got a couple guys blocking me. I, I would never. My eyes never even go to anyone near blocking me. I'm, I'm directly staring at the ball and the quarterback. And I'm gonna boom, hand swipe, turn the shoulder, dip. Boom! Here we go. Four Safety, points. Touchdown. Four point stance. Four point stance. Okay. Four point Not stance. Human. Straight to a vertical leap up over two yep. people. That is. 
It's absurd. Unheard. And if you, you touch- can't graze them either, you can't even graze the jersey of the snapper or anybody. But then the strength combined with that, like you said, like the most you know impressive human, like to see like some of the reps against Trent Williams when he was going up against him, yeah. but you never see Trent Williams like get moved around like he did, and then to, to still be that explosive. When I was watching him play yesterday, I thought back to that Titans play. And they got the delay game, and I'm like, you know what? I get it. That's not, and that's not that bad. I'd rather take a delay <laughs> than to end up with him one on one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's a game wrecker. He's an absolute. I'm like, come on, give me that. And the athleticism, you know, and the dexterity, and how smooth he is with everything. Like, he got to Gardner Minshew's arm just like easy. Like we're talking yeah, easy. Perfect. Let me go ahead and give that thing. He's just, he's a weapon. What'd you think about that decision to go to kick the X sixty yarder after? Losing a few yards. I thought we were punting it for sure. Yeah. I think whenever he came out on Same. the field, I was – oh, I think I actually – I was going to record it, and I accidentally hit the button twice whenever I saw Miles jump. So, mm-hmm. like, yeah. as I was watching, I'm like – I think I said in the video, oh, shit, we're kicking this. This is – how long is this sound? Look up the score. 60-yarder. Okay, into – they window window close. Yep. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. all good. A little chilly out there, though. It was cold. Hey, we're the- keeping this roof open about 50. Yeah. So. Why? Bold move. Why? <laughs> Let's talk it in a while. Why not? Was, it, was there a sweet <laughs> halftime show they had to keep it open for? Well, the Purdue Boilermakers band and the biggest drum on earth was oh, there. Oh, nice. That was cool. And oh, this, yeah, I've seen them. This They're fucking good. guy that hits the largest drum on earth wears a helmet, okay, okay and a full mm-hmm. suit. Football helmet? Uh, no, it's like a Roman, like, uh, oh, like a gladiator, gladiator helmet. Gladiator helmet. Oh. There's one on this side who's a lefty, and there's one on the other side that's a righty, and there's four people pushing this fucking drum around the field, and they are full sprint with their drums like this, and then they turn a corner, and then they turn a corner, and while they're running, boom, you know, as the rest of the band's doing it. Sick. It was awesome. It was a great halftime show. Okay. It really was. But I think uh, long sleeve hoodie jacket sales in yep. the stadium. Oh, yeah. Probably through the roof. Oh, that's why. If I had to guess. That's, that's the biggest it. drum in the world. Yeah, that's the world's largest drum. It says it right fucking right on I'm surprised Jim doesn't have a marching band for the Colts. <sighs> I got a lot of questions about a lot of things. Or an uh, in-house yeah. band where he, like, slays the axe every once in a while he gets up yep. on. So he danced one half time. Blue made it first shot. Again. Yes. He's first shot. Fire. He's, in, he's in his bag right now. Blue's balling right now. He had Bruce Buffer intro him. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Real one? <or? laughs> Real talk. Mm-hmm. And he walked through. Was Bruce, was Bruce there or his voice? No, his voice. It's a piece of content. It's like, the greatest mascot in the history of mascoting. Like, it's a, ladies and, it's a full thing. And he comes out with, like, smoke. It's fucking, it was pretty awesome. Sweet. Bruce does that on Cameo. They probably paid, like, 100 bucks for Cameo to do that. Kind of smart. Cameo is not a bad business. Cameo feels like a very good business. There's people hustling, like, for millions of dollars on Cameo, right? Uh, Oh, yeah. Kevin Malone. Yeah. Kevin yeah. Malone? Brian Baumgartner, Baumgartner kills it. He's like the yeah. number one creator in the history of Cameo. Brian Baumgartner. He's got, he's got big OnlyFans, too, I think. Yeah, he does. Mm-hmm. I'd subscribe to that. Killing it. Plays with his beef all day. How come he... Is that real? <laughs> that sounds like a lot. Like, like chili. Like, oh, beef chili. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Baumgartner, I appreciate how he gombles. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Out that golf tournament. He's got action with everybody, it seems like. Doesn't he? Really? It really does feel like yeah, that. Yeah, he does. I'm like, respect oh, yeah, he does. to the Baumgartner. I don't like the way he looks at me, though. Yeah. Hey, I don't know why he always looks at me the way he does. Yeah, I, mean, I hear that. Got beef? I think so, yeah. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm a big fan. Every time I go to talk to him. How does he look at you? He, like, side eyes at- me, and I'm like, is this guy oh. fucking boozed up or what? Well, he got demoted. That's why. He used to play with Aaron, you know, and then now you're out there. and <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, Brian, Bro, you know, we're going to stick you with the Miz and uh, Larry the Cable guy. See, this is the thing. Out. This is why everybody fucking hates me. I didn't make that decision. Put me with the Miz and Larry the Cable guy. I would love that. I'm a big fan of Baumgartner. He's always side-eyeing me, though. I'm like, always. why is this fucking guy always yeah, side eye? That, that makes sense. Makes sense, huh? Yeah, he, he wants to play with Aaron and AJ. Nah. Then do it. Good news. I got good news for this upcoming. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Congratulations, Brian. I got some good news, AJ. Ain't oh, there? No. Yeah. What? You gonna win it this year? I don't know oh. if you're gonna see me golfing out there. You Come know, on. You can put it to the basketball. Come we'll on. see. We got a long time before it happens. Put it to the hoop, buddy. My feet were bruised yeah. for two months. I couldn't walk right because of walking around that fucking golf course mm-hmm. at altitude. Well, and you, and I got worse. Get some. Yeah, you were, get some of those Skechers that Romo wears. Those are much more comfortable than what focus. you have. Hocus, yeah, that's what I wore. I was fine, but yeah, uh, that, that that thing is you legitimately put in real effort to be good at golf this year, and it got worse. Yeah, it's like all right, I'm done with it. I can't. <laughs> this is not how I need to devote my life. It's not good. I, 
I'm not. I'm not cut out for it. Is it a lot of uh, elevation change? Oh yeah, out there? dude. We're walking up mountains, pretty. Oh much. yeah. And it, like, shout out to the people that follow us too. Like, there's like fans that follow and walk the entire thing. I'm like, how are you doing this? Yep. How are you? I don't know how these golfers make it. Like, I look at golfers. Yep. I'm like, John Daly was just walking around. That guy was smoking six packs a day. Yep. Mm -hmm. Drinking two gallons of chocolate milk. Yep. What? Housing beers and whatever. What? And he's just walking around these nine mile, ten mile courses. I don't know how. It, they, golf has beat me every time I've actually played it. You know, and it's also the first time I play eighteen holes all year. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I lose attention. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's definitely walking a problem. Country. There, there was just a massive trade that just happened. Whoa! I just looked down at my watch and saw it. It is, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Holy shit, that is a massive. Huge. From the Titans to the Eagles, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Burr. Wow. Holy shit. Hey, this is a big deal. A.J. Brown obviously goes to the Eagles, has great success. Who knows? Why is this happening? D. But what's the reasoning uh, for why the Tennessee Titans are sending him to the Philadelphia Eagles? I mean, buyers and sellers. And I mean, since that A.J. Brown trade, I feel like they've it's been downhill. I just saw the Vrabel video in the uh -huh. draft room the other day. But, I mean, this is probably after Jeffrey Simmons. This is their best player on defense. He's, he's been consistently yeah. like pro bowl, all pro level Dog. Um, year in and year out. So, I mean – Great for him, and this is the this is one of the pieces that the Eagles were missing on defense. So wow. Well, and now with the Titans too, it's like okay, Bayard, sure, but if you look at the rest of the team, you wonder if it's a full blown fire sale like Derrick Henry. I know he's on the last couple of years of his contract. D Hop's contract was only yeah. two years. Like there are a bunch of players that the Titans kind of have, maybe not a bunch, but at very important positions. Like Pat even mentioned wow. Simmons. Like could or you mentioned Simmons yeah. as the other best player. It's like. What says they don't just decide, all right, you know what, Jeffrey Simmons too, Derrick Henry. Like they, they could legitimately unload their entire team and probably get decent capital. Like a trade like this, really good player, but you wonder if they're only getting like a third-round pick or something. Yeah, it's been a lot of late-round swaps, you know, if yeah. people want to get in and out of contracts or whatever the case. Uh, we actually have an incredible opportunity. Let's go to Coach Sirianni for his take on this big-time trade here on this court. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. All right, Coach right. uh -huh. Sirianni's pumped, AJ. Coach Sirianni's right. pumped. You figured he would be adding a great piece to the secondary on his defense. Yeah, this makes sense, though, doesn't it? I mean, Titans was where they're at in the season. And for, for Bayard, hey, cool, let's go let's go get a ring. That's all it is. That's what the trade uh, deadline means. Hey, congrats to Kevin. Unreal. So, one of us pronounced his name wrong. Who cares? He's a fucking great football player. Yeah. So they brought in Edmonds from the Steelers to replace CJ GJ, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. And it didn't Blankenship get hurt. The Reed Blankenship. He was hurt last game. He's missed a couple games. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that makes but, sense. But and he's but, the other yeah. green dot on the defense. Hey, he's from Philly too. Damn. Just learning this, going back to Philadelphia, just like Swift, Swift went yeah. back to Philly. Yeah. It's like Sirianni is trying to recruit the dogs back home. Let's go on an incredible run. Diana Rossini from the Athletic, huh? Uh -huh. Great thing. The Tennessee Titans are trading all pro defensive back. <laughs> oh. Kevin. Bayard. Bayard. I called him Bird. Fuck. Sorry about it, pal. To the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles will be sending the Titans a 2024 fifth and sixth yeah. rounder and safety Terrell Edmonds oh. per multiple league sources. Okay, so multiple moves here on this glorious overreaction Monday. Now, the 23rd. Edmonds was the safety last night who did get beat over the top by Tyree Kill in that bracket coverage that you tweeted about, yeah. D. But so, you know, maybe you make a mistake and figure <laughs> you're out. Next day you're out. Yeah. Huh? Just need an upgrade. All it's right. kind of what uh, Shefty was talking about. You know, the good teams kind of just. Working behind the scenes yeah. to get, yep, get better. Here we go. Yeah, he says it seems like all the good franchises are trying to make their team better at the trade deadline. And it's like, well, if my <laughs> team isn't a part of that, is that a hint you're saying, Chef? I'm not, I'm not a fan of a good team. Yeah, because the Colts, oh, we still got everything in front of us. It put up 38 points on the best defense in football. I, in, historic. Yeah, one of the best events in the last 100 years. You know why they're potentially not going to be in the historic great defense conversation? Because the Colts, because yeah, of what the Colts did. Garden 38 Minshew. points is going to be an outlier for a stats or two. Him throwing for what? Three what? Uh, 307. I don't know. As a team, they like 450 plus. Four, boom. Got to wear the jerseys every game now, right? Because they. Yeah. I'm about Sweet. sick. Good I'm call. About, I'm about sick and tired of what J.J. Watt's doing. What, what do you mean? Indiana What's he doing? Knights? He wanted a whole fucking segment last week about jerseys just so he could bury the Indiana Knights jersey. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden, while he's watching the game, he goes, you know, Indiana Knights, day game, open roof. It's like, J.J., relax. We get it, okay? Maybe they did create the Indiana Knights thing for a primetime game. We didn't get one. 
Okay, we're one of the only teams in the history of the NFL not to get a primetime game. At least back in the day, it would be a mandatory Thursday night game. Okay, mandatory for everybody until Amazon got involved and they said, nah, -uh, we ain't doing that. Why? Colts Broncos. You remember how bad that game was? Ooh. Historically bad, we're not doing it. Colts got no primetime games. They already had the Indiana Knights in the chamber. So they decided one o'clock game against one of the toughest teams we're going to play mm -hmm. at home. Let's roll the dice. In the Indiana Knights jerseys, you're right. They look good out there. Best, yeah. best really the offense has looked all year. In person, they look good. Yeah, they did. It did. It's, it was just vastly uh, different than what the Colts uniform normally looks like. Mm -hmm. so match I thought the it, helmet up next time, maybe. Was everyone a captain? Or so that's just. Or uh, match the jersey and pants up. I should. So say. everybody was a captain. Nice. Okay. So that was interesting to me because I thought. Wait, they, were they really? Uh, this was on everybody's jersey. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it's leaders and dogs or just uh, everybody's, uh, <laughs> everybody's a cult. Everybody's a cult. Yeah, that's the alternate cult. logo. I don't know if you actually noticed the inside of the C is the shape of the state of Indiana. Yeah, so everybody has to have one of those. As I was watching the defense get announced, I saw a C on a guy's chest. I'm like, oh, this guy just got voted. All right. Okay. All right. Here we go. I didn't here? expect that. And then next guy comes jogging out. Oh, another cat. This guy. Wow. All right. Defense are heavy. All right, we got five. We got five captains on defense side, and then just kept coming. Six, Eleven seven. of them. And I was yeah. like, oh, everybody's captain. Oh, it's <laughs> like a participation trophy. No, nah, it's Bingo. just hey, save the jersey. It'll look good. Tell people you're a voted captain. You lived a good life. Well, yeah. Colts Boom, love right. participation trophies too. We did hang 38 on them. I'm expecting a banner. Yeah, well, yeah. there's – and also there's an engagement. There's been some rumors about a possible congratulations you've been married at Lucas Oil Stadium banner as well. Right? Oh. Baby born wow. too, right? Mm -hmm. I love yep. that. Yeah, and a baby was born in uh, in the stands. Yeah, that that took crazy. a massive dump. This past week? No, they didn't oh. – it wasn't an excuse for a massive dump. They had an actual baby. Oh, a small child. Yeah, actual baby. Okay. Yeah. Somebody wasn't just unloading nachos and pretzels in yeah. the toilet. You never, you never know. Look, you don't act like I'm not looking around the stadium seeing a bunch of fat slobs. I do that every single <laughs> Sunday, and that's what happens. Uh, I thought that maybe someone took a huge dump. I think what we need to remember is that the Colts were in it. Yeah. Gardner Minshew the second back. Yeah. Jonathan Taylor back. Yep. Look out, whoever we got to play next. Absolutely. <laughs> also, all black next year would be so sick. <laughs> With what? like a couple blue, yeah, couple oh, blue yeah. pops, the helmet. maybe blue yeah. around the numbers. And, host, and now that the schedule people know what AR is, yep. when he's back, maybe we'll get a primetime game, all black. Oh yeah. baby! Oh my God! It'll be Indiana boys on Indiana nights. You know what I'm talking about? Just like they were supposed to be. You host the Saints next weekend at one o'clock. Oh, okay. like That's a winnable that. game. That's a dub. Winnable. That's a uh -oh. dub. Unless they put Jamison. Yeah. Look out. Let's go to another overreaction, shall we, on this glorious overreaction Monday. This one's from Preston Estrada at P Cash. P Cash, hell yeah. Hashtag I don't want to overreact. But, but this Lions loss has shaken my faith as a fan, a man, and a gambler. We played like pretenders, had no fight whatsoever. Welcome back, same old don't say it. Lions. No, no, no. We're five and two. We're atop of the NFC North by a wide margin. This is so far away from the same Whoa. old Lions. It's unbelievable. And let me just say this. Look at this guy's profile photo. He's a Michigan State fan. He had a bad weekend, so he's just a little upset. What happened? Well, you know what happened. We lost 49 to nothing. The hard that's the only thing that happened this week. What else? Uh, was that, there something that else? That was it. You guys. I, I, We're I just talking ball here, right? You guys show. Well, that is ball. That, that's what no, we're just talking ball. <laughs> that <laughs> is ball. Was it in a football stadium? <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah it was. During a football game? Nope. That's ball. Yeah. Trying to own, you know, one of their favorite alumni. <sighs> I'll tell you what. Oxy, make that graphic for the scoreboard? No. Did you do the trivia challenge? It's his no. idea. You should. I don't know. To be clear, like they say it was a third party update. We get the people edit videos for people all the time. But like the questions were not leading up to a Hitler question. <laughs> Didn't sound like At all. Like I watched the It was. There's a lot of possible questions to throw out there. Hitler does not <laughs> ever need to be in it. Yeah. So like how, many, how many colors are in a rainbow was like the question two before this one. And then. <laughs> What color what? shirt does a guy on Star Trek have? Green was the answer because it's Michigan State. It's like real curveball. For it's almost I would assume, and I don't want to kind of go to bat here for Michigan State, but that might have been a late entry 
You know what Could I mean? Been, As I sure a, hope. That might have been a late entry into the change. Well, and also, why are we going to, like, generic questions? Why don't we have Michigan State versus Michigan trivia, like some football trivia, something like oh. that? Oh. Well, it sounds like they did. What's have. wrong with just footballs dancing around under a helmet? Which one is the yes. football under? We don't need Dude, this trivia. one got me this week, didn't they? <laughs> like, oh, this no one way. got me this week. No way. Really? Four helmet. They had three helmets at the beginning. And then a fourth helmet was right. intro. Wow. Yes. They can't do that. And then all of a sudden, the one went behind the other one, and they were certainly looked like it was two dogs, one bun situation. <laughs> oh. And then they came out on the other side of it, and then they were jumping and moving. They got That's the first one I think I've ever missed, literally, my whole life. Is that the first Did you see helmet? the Jumbotron? Uh, so because it's so tiny up there? So that is something. Colts are now 10 and 1 or 9 and 1. Whenever the roof's open and the window is closed, mm -hmm. I think it's time we all make a decision yep. for where that window is. Yep. Just put a big fucking jumbotron so we look like every other stadium in the NFL. Mm -hmm. That would be a very easy answer. Yep. Even have the window be the outline of the jumbotron. There you go. It'd be super cool. That'd be yeah. sweet. Take the roof off. Super, because it is tough to see which which helmet the ball is under with how small it is exactly. up there mm -hmm. in that upper corner. You know what I mean, AJ? Essentially, it'd be like the video yeah. wall behind you too. Yeah. I mean, they host like, the Big Ten Championship. Really they need a screen. They need a big screen. Yes. Yeah. Especially whenever Ohio State's taking on Minnesota. Ooh. No, 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 no. Michigan's taking on Minnesota. No, 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 no. Minnesota ain't making the fucking Big Ten Championship. They got the Florida Rosedale first time BJ Flex tenure. It might be all different now. Yeah, what? That's horseshit. I mean, they got beat, but, you know, let's see. They're here. Right the Hawks, maybe, the Hawks went cool. out. If the Hawks went out, they will still be there. Is that going to happen? You guys had two yards of offense in the second half. Yeah, I know. I was expecting this to happen at some point. I didn't think it was necessarily going to happen against Minnesota. I thought maybe in a couple weeks here when they go play a game at Wrigley Field, that was kind of like the perfect, hey, get beat by Northwestern when you absolutely should not. We'll see, though. Hopefully the, this hardens the boys a bit. Um, I didn't ever think that Iowa would find a worse quarterback than Spencer Petras, and here we are just one year later. and <laughs> They have a unique ability. Deacon. Yeah. I mean – First and foremost, this son of a bitch needs to lose about 45 pounds. You need to relax. I do not need to relax. <laughs> You're in college, son. You weigh fucking 280 pounds. All right? This guy just sees these rushers coming in at him, and he's so fucking fat Whoa, that he can't get out of the way. Go. I'm sick of it. I'll tell you what, like, Packers losing yesterday, like, I don't give a shit. They suck. <laughs> Who cares? I bought into Iowa being like, Hey, we're so fucking bad on offense, and we just continue to win, and it makes no sense, and it pisses everyone off, and I love it. And for Cooper DeGene to run oh, that back, man, and he, he, one of the best punt returns in the country, he's just been doing it week in, week out. For them to get fucking hosed like that at Kinnick, fucking sick to my stomach. P.J. Fleck. And then, yeah, that, of all people. that son of a bitch after the game to be, to, you know. He's yelling like an asshole per usual. I mean, I didn't expect anything different, but then for him to say, like, we just beat one of the one of the best football teams in the country, it's like, okay, pal, you know, slow your roll a little bit. Oh, you guys stink. You shouldn't have said that. Wait, so no, I you shouldn't have said that. They're not one of the best teams in the country. They had fucking two yards in the second half. Are you cool. kidding me? He trying to – I know what he's doing. He's What's trying he to doing? fucking save his ass because he should get shit canned because – He just beat Iowa. He just won the bronze pig. And it's the Florida Rosedale, and, yeah, I mean – Fuck that guy. I hate P.J. Fleck. He's a piece of shit. There's no two ways about it. Whoa. I will won that football game. Okay. Wait, they didn't. They couldn't get into field goal range with a minute 20 left? Well, it's funny you should mention that because uh, Deacon Hill decided <laughs> to throw it fucking 800 miles an hour. to Had someone wide open, you know, third and 20. Hey, let, let's go ahead and just live to fight another day. We need 12 yards to get into field goal range, okay? What's this dumb son of a bitch do? He throws it. <laughs> Hard as he can, you know, from one hash to the next, gets picked off. I mean, had no chance of completing it whatsoever. It just he wasn't it. supposed to be the player. He was taking his year to get back into better shape and get ready for the time whenever nah, he was he's needed. Like an eighth year senior. He was at Wisconsin. You know, it's just he's just been bouncing from place to place to place <laughs> to place. Maybe Kirk starts recruiting some quarterbacks in the state of Iowa. You know, there there aren't a whole – it's like you, you can't play quarterback in Iowa if you played quarterback in high school in Iowa. We got to go fi find guys from California who – newsflash, if you're from California and you're playing college football in Iowa, you fucking suck. <laughs> what is your Because if problem? you were worth the shit, you'd go to USC <laughs> or UCLA <laughs> or Oregon 
or Washington right. or one of these schools on the West Coast. You wouldn't fucking go to the Midwest to play quarterback. I'm sick of it. I'm fucking sick of it. Yeah, right. did you get it all out? Yeah, I did get it all out. All right, now, boys, we got a we got a week to kind of <laughs> reload, <laughs> and then now you got to go, got to go win at Wrigley. All right, got to beat Northwestern. Cannot lose to Northwestern. Hashtag I don't overreact, but, but that's pretty much what you just did right there. Yeah, pretty much. You got anything to say, Deacon? You took some real heavy shots at Deacon there. Maybe the sorry. Thing. I mean, I'm just no sick and tired of seeing the guy. You know, you. you you watch the whole game and and you convince yourself it's not actually this bad, and then you look at the box score and oh no, he was twelve of uh, thirty four for you know sixty seven yards and two picks. It's how does that fucking happen? <laughs> how can that happen in college football? <laughs> and I understand we're down our two best tight ends and and all this kind of stuff, but how does that happen? How can that? That happen? doesn't happen to a team that's going to the Big Ten championship. Well, we'll see. They still might. They actually had his best game. What yeah, was he? It, well, 10 of 28 for 116 in an interception. That's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> for him. <laughs> for Iowa. <laughs> so bad. You're telling me that team's going to play Northwestern at Wrigley Field. <laughs> and you're yeah. worried? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's the thing is they they can't blow out anybody. Like Tough barn, too. So they, they could get beat every single week. So, yeah, I'd say I'm a little worried. How'd Torrey Taylor do? So good, I bet. Yeah, I mean, but that's the thing is, like, you know, when Tory Taylor is punting, like pinning teams, you know, at like the 15 instead of the two, and then it's like, oh, he had a terrible game because, you know, he needs to pin him inside the five for us to have any chance to do anything. But I believe he did have, you know, pinned him inside the one-yard line at one point. Yeah, I mean, pretty Hey, good. hey way to go, wow. Hawkeyes. You're still in it. Nine, Everything's still in front of you. Chance. Nine punts. Inside the 10. Yeah. Well, though, he, he, he only five. punted nine times, too. Yeah, but, yeah, that's amazing. Only? He's a part of the offense. No, I mean, that's what I meant. He is literally a part of the offense. He gets the ball more than wide receiver. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's a dog. I'm sorry you had to go through that. I'm happy you got it all off your chest. Though. You said some stuff about Deacon in there, though. I think you're going to want to, like. Him what? being the fat sack of shit. Yeah, uh, you were pretty yeah. negative about it. Well, sorry, Deacon. Fucking complete more than 45% of your passes, and I'll change my 10 to 28, that's a lot lower than 45. You're right. It is. Complete 35% of your passes, and maybe I'll change. This is in fucking D3. This is big time D1 football. Yeah, it is. Big 10, okay? Yeah. There's a Big 10 championship on the line. There is. Every play. And guess what? I don't get back to go back to Iowa City to watch them play, so I have to, hey, just fucking win so that I can come watch you guys get your asses kicked in Indianapolis <laughs> just so I can see those beautiful uniforms on the field at least once a season. Supposed to have it last year. They fucking choked and got beat by Nebraska. <laughs> Supposed to have it this year, you know? And I knew because I started saying, hey, there's no question. This team's going 11-1 and one and they're going to be in the Big Ten Championship. Well, what happens? You know, they fucking get beat by Minnesota the next week. It's Florida Rosedale. Yeah, I know. You got to throw all the records out whenever you're talking about the Florida Rosedale. You don't, though, because they won. They won, and that son of a bitch, Tim O'Day, decided to, you know. What's that? I mean, we all saw it. Every person who knows anything about football was like, yeah, this is bullshit. Yep. Okay, that was not a fair catch. Well, and also, AJ, I said this at the beginning during the bamboozled segment. If they said it was a, a bad fair catch, well, as soon as he starts running it back, that's a penalty. Yep. You should throw a that, penalty flag. Don't they whistle it? There was no yeah. one, whistle. Okay, it. so one ref watches, I assume, watches the whole time the returner to see if, it's a, if, if they're fair catching or not. And this is clearly Peter, Peter, get away, pointing to get away from your, like, Everyone that knows football knows what he's doing. Well, and also penalty on Minnesota for going to tackle that guy if yeah. he was, you know, right. if he was fair catch. I mean, there's it's just so many, other, failure. so many other things that would have had to happen if it was truly called a fair catch at the time. A whistle, obviously clear. A penalty on Minnesota for hitting a guy after a fair catch. Penalty on Iowa right there for continuing to return after giving a fake fair catch. I mean, there's just so many penalties that have to happen for that to be the excuse. I don't under I don't understand how that happened. Ball bounce? Yeah. yeah. Ball yeah. Bounce. Still fair catch still. Still still okay. Yes. I didn't know that. Fair catch ball still ball. good. I didn't know. Even if ball bounced. Yeah. Wow. wow. They wow. went to review because they thought he stepped out of bounds too. They didn't go to review because they thought it was a fair catch. So they're in review watching and they're like, I think he stays in, and then somebody chimes in and goes, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter, right? Because I call it a fair catch. Well, how'd you call it? Did what? you blow the whistle? That's wild. No. Did you throw a flag for them hitting them after? No. Did you? No, I just, in my head, I, I thought that's a fair catch, and then I never did anything. 
Okay, cool. So it doesn't matter if we want our bonds. No, sweet. All right, let's go tell this entire crowd to go fuck themselves. Yep. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. It's wild. Nuts. Yeah, that one hurts. And then the Packers do what the Packers did. Yeah, I don't care about that. They suck. They suck. Let's go to another overreaction here before we get the hell out of here and answer some phone calls. Round mound of pound town at Barrels Charkley. Hell yeah. Okay, hashtag I don't want to overreact. But, but the Falcons would be one in six if it wasn't for Young Way Koo. Ritter has shown us time and time again that he cannot be trusted to take care of the ball and limit stupid mistakes, hurting the team more than helping. He's young quarterback. Come He's on. He's a quarterback. He's a rookie. He just led my fantasy team to a big time dub. Amen. Because of all the touchdowns he runs for. Now, they also have the most, like, is it a touchback or is it a touchdown moments in the history of any team ever? And they added one yesterday. Here's it late in the game. Get stripped. Is it? Is it not a touchdown? Is it a touchback? Can we celebrate this thing? Uh, I'm in there and I'm not. The ball's out. That's like right on mm -hmm. the pile on. That's either six points for one team or it's going the other way with a 20-yard head start. Devastating to happen. This happens to the Falcons all the time. Earlier in the game, mm -hmm. Drake London has a front flip situation. Ah, he reaches the ball. Whoa. Mm. Is that a touchback? Is that a touchdown? Is he out of bounds? Did he have possession of it whenever he was spiking it into the goal line? What is it? Oh, you would think, oh, just two and one game. That's kind of uncomfortable. No, let's go two weeks ago. Desmond Ritter had another one of these as he was attacking the pylon. Balls out. Is that a touchdown? Is that a touchdown? Falcons fans have had to experience the oh. Oh, more than any team in history, I believe. Yep with how many touchback touchdown situations. But the football gods have been on their side. Drake London was ruled out of bounds. This was a touchdown, the other one good. So it seems like the gods are on their side. Bijan Robinson had headaches, okay, yeah. mm -hmm. migraines, we think. Was able to quell them by the time the after the game is what we are assuming, although that has not been necessarily laid out for us by any doctors. That's just a conversation with Schefter. Do we believe that Desmond Ritter is a problem down there, or are we going to ride the wave with him for the rest of the season to gain some experience? I think that's probably what they're trying to do this year. Yeah, I think listen to Artie Smith talk about him. Like, he feels like, yeah, absolutely, they're going to ride him and feel like this. Because he does, like, he definitely shows flashes of, of being a great quarterback at times. Like, you can see it out there. It's just not consistently for four quarters. And you're right, we got to have a little, we got to do something about some ball security when we get close to the pylon as well. Yeah. We figure that out. Yeah, and on defensive side, I like the boys looking for, mm -hmm. that's yeah. a game yeah. swinger. You got on that inside arm. You know, you go into that yeah. sideline. Everybody knows this from, like, Little League. Put it on that outside shoulder. I mean, or just have some sense of urgency to just, yes. especially at this point. That's what it is. Put exactly. it over, that's what it is. Like, yeah. uh, A.J. Brown had one last night that was kind of scary, but anytime you get near that goal line, it's, you you got to be on your P's and Q's they, with that ball. So close, every one of them, too, by the way. Yeah. Happy, happy, like the Drake London one, from the side, it was like, I really don't know. Like, does he have possession of the ball as he's spiking it mm -hmm. on the ground? And then also his right hand was out of bounds. It's Bingo. like there was so much that kind of went into it all. And it's like once they start showing the replays, I actually thought to myself, man, I'm happy I don't have to make this call. <laughs> I'm happy I don't have to make this call. When's but his it? right middle finger was out of bounds, which is yeah. good. But when does he lose possession of the ball? You know, like it's – that was a crazy replay. Shit show with the Falcons. <laughs> it is. It, it really is. Every, every single time. Like, that shouldn't have been a three-point game. Like The Falcons no. should have won that game by 10 points. And you mentioned the Drake London, the football gods being on their side. Next play, uh, oh, yeah. Ritter fumbles the <laughs> oh, snap yeah. on the goal line. All for not. It was a 15-minute review. Yeah. yeah. All and for not. Fumbles. They are one of the hardest hey. teams to bet on in the uh, By far. Oh, always. The Falcons are always going to foul. But Young Way, like they said, is a dog. Come yeah. through. His hit from 51 yards, turn, walk off, uh, it is beautiful. Look at this. Boom. Plays it. I know it. See ya. Got turn, it. starts walking away before that ball gets through. From 51? From 51 yards? Hell yeah, Young Way. He's one of these kickers, too, where he lines up for this kick. We're expecting him to make it. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. the, oh, yeah. the expectation is him, for him to make it. Never gets talked about in that way, though. Hey, Young Way, keep crushing it, pal. Keep going. Keep crushing it. Beast. Can't wait to talk to Artie. Another win. Mm -hmm. Huge. But that's not what's being discussed, it appears. So, Young, I, I looked it up today, actually. Young Way is number two in field goal percentage all time behind Justin Tucker. Mm. Damn. Young Way. Let's go. Hey. Keep crushing it. 89%. Are, are we worried about the Bucks? Yeah. Uh, who yeah. lost since the bye? Yeah. Yeah. No, they stink, so you don't have to worry about them. Oh. Well, they don't stink, is what the conversation yeah. was before yeah. the bye. Well, what? Turns out they do. <laughs> hey, Jay, I'm not out on the Bucks just yet. Too good. Too many people. 
No, if you get maybe two more weeks of this, I might be a little bit worried. But no, I think they can bounce back. All right, let's go to some phone calls as we wrap up this overreaction. And thank you to everybody on the internet that sent in their overreaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ty, thanks for going through them. And thanks for also offering up your own overreaction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect that. that was a nice little treat in the middle of this. Yeah. Uh, and you know what, Deacon, I apologize. That was a little uh, bit of an overreaction, but... Okay. Do need you to play better, pal. Look what we did. Yeah, boom. Hey. Circle. All right. Was wonderful. Yeah. Just a little overreaction. Yeah. Let's go to Juan in Jacksonville. What's going on, Juan? What's up, man? What's up, dude? What's up, dude? All right, well, uh, Lions, they, they, they shit the bed on us on Sunday. But my question is, after watching the league, you know, the Lions showed up uh, against Kansas City and on uh, ring night and shut shit down. But besides that, any any AFC MSC matchup that we have seen besides last night's fluke with the damn Eagles not even <laughs> getting a fucking flag, AFC has been the stronger team every game. So Juan, I think that's a great point. And Lamar Jackson, I think is like fifteen and one against the NFC. Sixteen now after yesterday. Sixteen and one against yeah. the NFC. And I like the fact that Juan down there in Jacksonville was like, aside from the refs handing the Eagles one, it's been pretty AFC dominated, which we kind of projected going into the season how heavy the AFC is at the top. Funny this came up. I went through and I looked I went through the schedule this morning. I believe the AFC is twenty and thirteen against the NFC. Uh would be better, but the Patriots are 0 and three against the NFC. This Just slow down. Slow down. All right. You guys slow aren't only really letting down your time. And your franchise, yeah. you're letting down the entire conference. Yeah, that's crazy because the conference loves us, too. Entire NFL has always been like, God, we love the Patriots so much. <laughs> why can't they win more? Hey, why is the AFC so much better than the NFC, AJ? You guys just soft over there in the National Football Conference? Uh, I don't know. I don't play in the NFC right now, but I just wonder. Uh, I don't know. What is it? The quarterback? What do you think? Quarterback yes. play? Bingo. Obviously. You know, I would assume that's yeah. nice. It'll probably we'll – it'll all go like this, yeah. though. Huh? Yeah. That Dallas, yeah, Dallas had a win over Jets. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dak had a hell of a game. Dak, that was the beat Probably the, the best quarterback out. performance against that defense. I think Dak had, what, 32 or like 38 or something like that? Yeah. He had a hell of a night. Let's go to Solo in Georgia. What's going on, Solo? Han? Yo, Pat, boys. How we doing? Keep it moving, yeah. Solo. Hell yeah. Yes, sir. All right, this question is for everybody, obviously, but I really want that fucking New England Patriots Stoops to put his mind to this oh, because okay. if anybody can get to the bottom of it, it's definitely him. Okay. Is Patrick Kelsey? I mean, is Travis Kelsey a serious MVP candidate this season? And okay, so that's a good question. Uh, Boston Connor would like to get your mind at the bottom of this. No, it was not a good question either, Solo. <laughs> no, the reason why he was asking you is because of conspiracies about Taylor Swift, oh. and then obviously podcast, and then documentary. Mm -hmm. He's on every commercial. Mm -hmm. Is he going to go on to win the MVP as well? I'll tell you what, he keeps going for 180 or whatever. There's a chance he gets into the Offensive Player of the Year conversation quickly. MVP's quarterback quarterback award, though. Yeah, and there are other guys who are doing better. Like Tyree Hill and Christian McCaffrey are probably up for MVP before Kelsey. How about Christian playing tonight? They said uh, they said he hasn't taken any physical contact since the last game, but he feels good to go this evening. As Trent Williams is out and Debo is out, AJ. Yeah, that's a little bit scary. I mean, I still like what the Niners have. And Christian... I'm sure it's like a pain tolerance thing, and that guy is tough as nails, so I expect him to stay in the game. He's tough as nails. Yeah, Shanahan didn't shut him down like Stefanski. Well, it's so yeah, fascinating what's going on here. Honestly, I don't fully understand it. At all. There's a couple other places, too. Where, yeah, He uh, rode that bus to play football that one time. He tore his ACL as well. Yeah. He's a tough guy. Yeah. With the fire in his gut, too. Let's go to Emily. Well, that's... Duh. Pew, pew. Yeah, but when he takes the bus, just assumed. Kyler Murray, huh? Seen him? Yeah, absolutely. He's back soon. Can't wait for that. Seattle Seahawks get a big win over the Cardinals. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that was a close battle. That's what the Cardinals team is going to do to people. Yeah. It's going to be like that. Gino, though, and the boys escape with a dub. Congrats to Seahawks continue to do their thing. Go win. Last phone call here. Let's go to Emily in Connecticut. Emily, what's going on? Hey, boys. How you doing? Keep it moving. Okay, nailed it. Nice. Shout out you. <laughs> hey, Pat, uh, love the fire surrounding the conversation with the refs and the shady calls. Um, really appreciate you speaking out and just your voice on this. Please what do you think it's going to take to see real change? Like, mm. there's going to need to be a player strike, owner involvement, like legal action with the sports books. Oh. What do you think? Emily, that's a great question. She's saying, oh. like, what actually will have to happen for this to end up changing? You know, for the when the referees were on strike and it was the backup refs, and I don't remember if it was a lockout or if it was a strike. Do we remember? Did the ref strike or lockout? I thought it was a strike. Was a strike. They, so, they were on strike. Yeah. So whenever they struck, um, obviously the backup refs fucked up so much, especially uh, Packers, Seattle Seahawks on primetime, that a deal was able to get done. 
I would assume that it would be the sports books that would end up having to say, hey, is there any way that we could potentially get this a little bit more monitored, a little bit more regulated? It, I don't know if that's true or not, but I do believe that that'll be the case because how much money sports books are going to be pumping into the NFL with advertisements and everything like that, it's already grotesque. It's only going to continue to grotesque as more, uh, to grow as more states get legalized. If multiple things happen where some of these partners end up getting screwed, as opposed to the public getting screwed, uh, the books getting screwed from bad calls, I think then maybe you'll see. It's always in the pocket, though. Always, it feels like it's yeah. always always in the pocket is somehow you make things change. And to be transparent, I don't love that, but it feels like that's probably what it's going to have to be, AJ. Yeah, they just, I mean, the NFL can't let it get crazy out of control and out of hand to where it's truly like affecting things and people, like there's a big chunks of people that are pissed and think like yeah hey things are set up this is all it's all a scam it's a fraud like that's what they don't they can't have that i'm being told it was a lockout not a strike the refs oh. were locked out the nfl said take a hike 2012 oh. nfl referee lockout was a labor dispute between the nfl and the nfl referees association that resulted in the use of replacement officials all right fail mary yeah. is the name of the thing that ended so the nfl told the refs nah we ain't paying you what you want unless, and when all we're saying is make them full time yeah. what are we even talking about i don't think it changes unless people stop watching which it seems like We'll never do. Yep. But unless people stop watching, like we just had a whole, like last year, remember everybody, oh, it's scripted, it's scripted. And the NFL just came out with a fucking commercial, yeah, a lot of it's scripted. I, and they just kind of ran with that. So they don't has, give a fuck. Has like, anyone ever asked Raj watching. why they're not full time? Well, see, that's the thing. As she was saying that, I was thinking to myself, yeah, it's got to get Raj on a program. I was thinking that. I'll be able to, uh, mm -hmm. if. If we get a chance to ask them, we will certainly ask why it hasn't happened. A lot of people talking about grass. Let's keep that discussion going, obviously. Grass, mm -hmm. grass, grass. We want grass. We want How much money will that be? Okay. How much money will it be for full-time refs? And is it worth it PR-wise? So you don't have to question the integrity of every single official out there every single time a fuck-up happens, which is inevitable. Because we're watching these highlights about touchback, touchdown thing. It's going to be tough. Like, there's going to be fuck-ups. But, like, egregious ones, your immediate thought is, that person screwed them. That person attempting to not do it. If they work for the NFL, at least you would think that would take that away because the NFL wants to preserve the integrity of the game. You know, it's kind of their mission, but I don't know. Emily, that's a great question. I do not know. I do not love it. Though. Need it, though. Need it. Yeah. Need it. All right, let's make our picks and get the fuck out of here. Darius, we'll start with you. Niners are favored by seven this evening, taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Now, before we get to that, let's give the graphic of how myself and AJ did this past weekend. Okay, not great, AJ. Yeah. Mm. Not oh, no, I knew going in, yeah, week. this was not a good one. I'm due next week, though. I can't wait. Hell, yeah. And then also, can we add the AQ Shipley one? I believe there's one because AQ made yeah. a pick. He went 2-9. Oh, and nine. oh, oh <laughs> so confident. He was real confident. Yeah. Really? AQ knew. <laughs> AQ knew. He knew all of them. You know, he was very matter-of-fact with everything. And, I just uh, have to add AQ a bit. <laughs> well, just because. I was curious, to be honest. That's you know, it's not, not an easy game. Not an easy game. So, uh, oh, tough. I go 5-7, and seven, AJ 3-9. <laughs> AQ two and nine. I mean, this give it is just... the Niners. Okay, AJ likes the Niners this evening minus seven. Darius, does that sway you at all? Do you want to get AQ's opinion, or yeah. are you good with your? <laughs> I'll go uh, against the trend as well. Give me the Niners. Great, great corners out there. Great defense and uh, no Justin Jefferson. Give me the Niners. Clean sweep with me as well. I will take the Niners this evening as we all watch along on Monday Night Football on ESPN and on ABC. I do believe Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, and I think there is a Manning cast. Correct. Yep. So let's enjoy the hell out of this Monday night as NFL Week Seven wraps. We can't thank you enough. How about Kelsey Plum coming on a program today? Awesome. Awesome. It's great, man. And I, I look to see uh, the highlights from the parade later today. Oh, yeah. Let's keep our eyes out for anything going, any shenanigans mm -hmm. at that Las Vegas Aces parade, which we've been told there's a chance of Four Loco being a part of that party. Uh-oh. And anytime you hear that, you know there's a chance some shit might go down. That's Look right. out. Let's keep our eye out for Kirsten Bell. Yeah. dominating this evening. Hell yeah. Okay? Dominating. And also Kelsey Plum. Shout out to Schefter and shout out to all of you. We'll be back tomorrow with Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. And we'll be overreacting a lot to what happens tonight. Mm -hmm. There's a lot on the line. A lot of a ton. Are the Niners back or what? Are Ooh. they going to be able to play while they're still injured? No Trent Williams? Holy oh, hell. Uh -oh. We didn't expect that to be as big of an impact as it was. Could be the conversation tomorrow. Kirk Cousins' last game as a Viking? Whoa. Oh, uh -oh. whoa. Trade deadline looming. Was that Kirk Cousins' best game as an audition for somebody else? Ooh. So much to break down and talk about. We'll do it all tomorrow. You all are the best. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Goodbye.